Got action coming up next right here on ESPN Plus. Jesse Stern is back. We saw him. He was impressive the first time he came out in the showcase bout. He's looking to bolster his chances for an invitation. And Blyden, not he's from not too far away from here. Will the local favorite pull it off? Find out next. There's a nice shot. Big left hand there from OAM on the counter. Right now catches the kick. Tries to get himself onto the back of OAM. And for now is there. Let's see if they can hit the, a takedown from here. This is Stevie's best position. If he's able to hit it. Wow. Oh, big there trouble. it is. Well done. Right uh -oh. away. And Stevie Ray gets onto the back of OAM. Trying to soften him up with some left hand. Yeah, Stevie doing a great job with some ground and pound here. Both of these men, very, very powerful lightweights. Oh, look at this. Excellent escape. All the way up and out. Nice work there by Olivia Albert Messier. Oh! Right hand lands and Olivia Albert Messier wow. with the check hook. Knocks out Stevie Ray for a lightweight. What a right hook. Stevie just didn't see it coming. Olivier. Olivier. It's the biggest night in mixed martial arts, and it starts right now. Coming up later, our pay-per-view card. If you want to see five world title fights, the return of Kayla Harrison, the return of Ray Cooper, the debut of Derek Brunson, you got to scan that QR code in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Don't wait. Do it now. Scan to purchase BFL World Championship pay-per-view. We'll whet your appetite with these four fights. Showcase bout between Jesse Stern and Josh Blyden. We'll start the action. You'll see the grandson of Muhammad Ali, Biagio Ali Walsh. You'll see Mark Zuckerberg's MMA trainer, Kai Wu. You'll also see a featherweight world title, Gabriel Braga and Jesus Pinedo, just to give you a sense of what you're buying on the pay-per-view later tonight. Time now for our first bout of the evening. This will take place at a catch weight of 147 pounds. Jesse Stern and Josh Blyden, three five minute rounds, brought to you by Just For Men. Way to the BFL smart cage. Fighting out to the blue corner, Josh Blyden. Josh Blyden making his PFL debut. He's on a win streak. Fought on regional promotions. Was the NFC champion. I'm not talking about the NFL's NFC. Don't get confused there. The NFC, a local fight promotion down in Georgia. Josh Blyden calls Harlem, New York home. In the red corner, Jesse Stur. We saw Jesse Stern in our 2021 PFL playoffs. He's earned the right to get back here with four straight victories. Six submissions of his 15 career wins. Right around the corner from Baltimore, Maryland.
Now the tape for this catchway bout brought to you by Just for Men. Jesse Stern is 31 years of age. Josh Blyden is 36. Blyden is the taller fighter at 5'10". He weighed in at the catchweight limit of 147. Reach advantage favoring the taller fighter, as one might expect. It's three inches on the arms and one on the legs in favor of Josh Blyden. Let's check out the keys to victory for Jesse Stern. It's going to be about his takedown defense and his footwork in this fight for Blyden. Look out for those leg kicks and for his takedown. And the voice of our PFL Smart Cage, Andy Shepard, gets us started. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the anthem here in Washington, D.C. And welcome to the 2023 PFL World Championship. Tonight, we will crown six world champions, each receiving a million dollars. And we start with a special showcase bout. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He's a kickboxing specialist and stands five feet, 10 inches tall. He weighed in officially at 146 and three quarter pounds and holds a professional record of nine wins and two losses. Fighting out of Harlem, New York, Josh Blyder. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He is a striking specialist and stands five feet, nine inches tall. He went in officially at 145 and one half pounds. And across 21 fights, has earned a record of 15 victories and six defeats. Fighting out of Baltimore, Maryland. Relentless Jesse Your referee in charge, Jerry Vella. Unlike you, gentlemen. Three five minute rounds. That's Jesse Stern in the green. Josh Blyden in the gray trunks. Sean O'Connell, Randy Fighter. Couture, Kenny Florian Fighter. beside the PFL Fighter. Smart Cage. Dan Hardy in the building, as is Brett Okamoto. Our betting experts, Jonathan Coachman and Ian Parker, will also weigh in. An exchange of inside low kicks to start the action. I'll tell you what, Jesse Stern looks completely different physically. Definitely been spending some time in the gym since the last time we saw him. Looks in great shape. Absolutely smiling, looks comfortable, confident out there. But Blyden is the one pressing the action. On the back of Jesse Stern. Stern right back to his feet after that elevation and put down. Yeah, that was a nice entry there by Blyden. Almost hit the takedown. Now looking for it. Gets it. Got to watch out for those second hook. He's got it. Blyden in a great position now. Potentially finished his fight. Blyden anchored on top. He's got both hooks in. Stern trying to get to his feet. Trying to find a way to scrape Blyden off. Josh Blyden is a IBJJF medalist in the World Championship. So definitely knows his way around. The submission game here. Staying on the back of Stern, Blyden. Heavy with the pressure here, now offering some knees to the legs to try and wear out the base of Jesse Stern. Nice little trip attempt by Stern. Turn, trying to find any way to create a scramble. Looking for hand control, trying to re-pummel here and face Blyden. Blyden doing all he can do to hang on to those hips and keep Stern's back. Two minutes gone, roughly in our first bout of the evening. Six world title bikes will be contested. Now Jesse's starting to get some good leverage on those hands. He's, he's going for the hand control, Randy, but he's not quite leaning enough into Blyden, it seems. And Blyden's doing a great job of hand fighting with him and keeping grip. Whether he loses one arm or not, he keeps that grip on him. Now Josh can turn and face him here. Stern gets chest to chest finally. Nice job by Stern. We'll see if Stern can put in any offensive work. There's a nice knee right up the center to the midsection. Ooh. Yeah, those are nasty. Those will cer certainly slow you down. Good head position by Stern. 
Well, I'm trading places with him. I think this is where Sturton kind of needs to disengage and kind of reset, get to the center of the cage here. Nice head movement there by Stern. Stern continues to wail away at the body of Blyde. Stern has never been knocked out in 21 fights. But he has been submitted four times, and so far he's been successful in staying off the ground. Nice knee and a good entry after the right hand from Stern. Stern establishing top position for the first time in this fight. Blyde trying to find a way back to his feet. Scrambles up using the fence. Blyden trying to use that Kimura, create a sweep. There he gets the re pummel. Stern sweeps him out. Yeah, beautiful takedown there by Stern. Oh, got a little aggressive, and he has him in a crucifix. Blyden able to get on top. Nice work by Blyden turning out. Stern now has to abandon his offense here. Get that underhook and try and get himself up. Yeah, he's got that underhook. He can do it. He's up against the cage as well, which should aid his cause here. Blyden getting a good position, though, getting his head over the head of Jesse Stern. Butterfly guard kicks away by Stern. Stern did a good job there, creating a separation. He needed to get back to his feet. Oh, switches stances and right to the body. Blyden offers a head kick attempt back. Yeah, Blyden's still in this, but definitely not keeping the same pace than when he started this fight. It's been pretty chaotic in this round. Blyden's hands are starting to drop. He's got to be careful. Couple of right hooks there from Stern. Tries to go back to that body knee. Oh, good right hand to finish the round from Jesse Stern. This featherweight showcase is our first bout of the world championship here in 2023. That man right there will be fighting for a featherweight world championship three fights from now. Gabriel Braga started his season on our PFL Challenger Series, earning his spot in the season and still undefeated. He has fought his way all the way to a $1 million opportunity in Washington, D.C. That will be the only title bout on the card tonight available prior to our pay-per-view. Randy was... Really, a tale of two halves that oh round. God, it was Blyden being aggressive at the let's start, go, getting on the out, back of go. Stern, Gamera, but Stern turned the tide about halfway Gamera, through. Yeah, go. absolutely. Tough round to score. Both guys had their moments in the fight. Both guys controlled the dance oh, for, for half, of the, half of the round. So it'll be interesting to see who comes out and imposes their will in this round. Here we go. Fight! Jesse Stern in the green. Josh Blyden in the gray. Another inside leg kick to open it. Stern switching stances, giving different looks. If you're just tuning in, you might not have heard the big news. Professional Fighters League has purchased Bellator. Bellator's champions and PFL's champions will square off against one another in a 2024 mega event. A couple of Bellator champions already in the building here at the Anthem in Washington, D.C. Blyden in deep on a head outside single, trying to find a way to finish against Jesse Stern and put him on the deck. Stern doing a nice job of keeping his balance, using that fence to his credit. Stern has been staying very composed, much more technical on the feet as well since the last time we saw him. Seems like he's kind of trying to tire out Blyden. Well, Kenny, you mentioned early in the fight the, the difference in Stern's appearance. Oh, that's Good a big knee. That's a big knee on the head. Stern now on the combination. Blyden trying to grab a hold and hang on to consciousness and to his opponent. There's a look through ref cam as Stern turns up the pace. Oh. 
Wyatt, Wyatt showed a lot of toughness here. Uppercut snuck through there for Stern, and then he crowds himself in and goes chest to chest. Yeah, I think it, it's helping him. I mean, he is landing some great knees in tight, but I agree, Sean. I think he should try to break, create a little bit more space for him because he's helping Blyden achieve this clinch position. Now, signs of life here from Blyden, who offers the right hands in the clinch. A little dirty boxing, if you've ever seen that before, Randy. Never in my life. <laughs> Mouthpiece almost came out for Stern. Wyden appears to have recovered nicely here. Strong pace by Stern in this round. Man, is Wyden tough. Uh, Left some, hand right in the middle of the combination there from Wyden. You know, sometimes a loss wakes you up. When we had Stern here in yep. 2021, he suffered a loss to Dizzy. And he's now been on a four-fight win streak and looks fantastic in this fight. That loss was probably a wake-up call for him. Yeah, no question about it. Nice job by Sterner. Humbling that elbow, that underhook. And now to the back of Blyden with a quick duck under here. Oh. And Jesse Stern turned it into meaningful offense after that flurry. Blyden trying to put the Kamura on here to create a scramble. Yeah, he's got a nice grip on the Kimura. Doesn't quite have a great angle right now. And Stern's got a very nice, you know, gable grip there that it's going to be tough to apply that Kimura. Stern gets his arm back. Nice. Reach the leg out. Nice little sweep by Stern to establish top position. Butterfly by Blyden. Go for the leg lock. Trying to create a scramble. Stern steps right out of it, back to the center of the smart cage. And a southpaw stance for now. I actually think that was smart. Stern is winning this fight in the standing position with the knees and the close in fighting. Stern just needs to shorten up his hooks. Every time he goes too wide with the hook, he's missing. When he shortens up the hook, he's landing beautifully against Blyden and tight. Stern bouncing around, looking to be the fresher fighter, but Blyden still landing when he counted. Nice overhand right. There's another combination from Stern and the high kick attempt again. Fly knee misses just barely. Yeah, I mean, Blyden looks exhausted. He's been hurt a couple times in this round, but he is not trying to give up here against Stern. He is fighting hard. Incredible pace here by Jesse Stern, trying to overwhelm Josh Blyden. Nice little foot wheel attempts by Stern. Driving that knee up the middle, he's landed six or seven of those shots to the gut. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's been his best strike. Oh! He has that little level change and throws that right hook right on the money. Fingers out. Once again to the back of Blyden. This has been a very dominant round here for Jesse Stern. You can see the live odds reflecting that. Oh, oh big right hand after the flying knee missed again. Jesse Stern, he's hunting that leaping attack. Yeah, he's feeling it. End of round two. Look at me, fighter. Good control. Deep breath. Sit deep down. breath, deep breath, baby. Give me that eye. Leiden will take to the Listen, stool, get a little bit of coaching. You are not tired. Well, Sean, this was the strike that really changed the round significantly. That left knee upstairs from Jesse Stern really hurt Blyden. And for a couple minutes there, Blyden was just trying to get his wits back. Did an excellent job of getting to the clinch and surviving. Landed some good shots himself, but that inside work from Stern. Excellent Muay Thai, short knees, short hooks, some nice foot trips as well. Putting it all together, really feeling it at the end of that round. Seconds out, let's go. What a Seconds great round. Let's go, corners. How about the chin on Blyden, guys? Yeah, yeah, right? Took that chin right on the chin. Third and final round of this showcase bout. Jesse Stern in the green. Here we go. Josh Blyden in the gray. The house lights came down. Referee calls time. Are we okay on ring? 
Okay, here we go, fighters. Right here. Go! Fight! Got Fight the in. wrong lighting cue there. We're back in action. <laughs> a few extra seconds for Blind to try to catch his breath. We're about to give away some million dollar checks later. I think that was the lighting for that moment. <laughs> Six $1 million checks will be distributed tonight on PFL's 2023 World Championship. Six gold belts. Wide seems much sharper. Much more focus here to start this round. Wide coming out and establishing that jab, trying to find that range. Again, hunting down Stern. Big right hand by Stern. Patchy Mix, Bellator bantamweight champ, maybe the best bantamweight fighter on planet Earth, and now under the PFL umbrella because PFL purchased Bellator, finalized earlier this week. Wide well, right back into this fight, guys. And you know what? I thought Stern did phenomenal in round two, but I don't think it was enough for a 10-8 round. So. I agree. They very well come I, down to this round. I agree. I think he dominated that round, but I don't think it was a 10-8 round. Even though that knee landed sharply, I don't think he was in danger of, of being finished. The head movement by Stern is yes. really great. He has made Blyden miss several times. And it highlights... The improvements he has made in his own game it highlights the importance of this two sports format in the PFL. This is a guy who made appearances earlier in his career for this company. Goes back to the drawing board after losing, improves himself, and now has a chance to earn himself a spot in the future. Yeah, looks like a completely different fighter in every way, shape, or form. Moving extremely well. Nice leg kick there from Stern. There's the grandson of Muhammad Ali, Biagio Ali Walsh. We'll see him in a couple of fights right here on our ESPN Plus pre-card. He's an amateur still, but marching closer to that eventual PFL debut. This might be the last time we see him fighting three-minute round, Biagio Ali. Nice offensive output here from Blyden, who really, I think, caught his breath most of that second round somehow. Stern has been evasive, but hasn't been able to land nearly as much here in the third. Oh, good right hand there. Oh. Push kick went high for Stern, and there's a nice knee. Again, this is where Jesse Stern has had some success. So his knees right up the center line into the solar plexus, the stomach, even snuck a couple into the jaw line of Blyden, but Blyden doesn't want any of it. Turns himself away. Stern staying much busier now than Blyden. Volume starting to decrease here. Stern continues to attack the body. Dan Hardy, a member of our broadcast crew tonight. Dan Hardy, what do you need to see in the final minute for one of these fighters to earn a finish? You know, I think one of these guys needs to just put their foot on the gas and really own this round. I feel like I agree with you guys. It might be one round apiece. For me, Jesse Stern was quite relaxed in that first round, allowing Josh Blyden to work and, you know, use that wrestling offensive, but then started to turn it on in the second and had a really good second round. But this is a much closer round than I think Stern would have liked. Stern now on the back of Blyden. They're on their feet for now, and here's that Kimura grip that Blyden has gone back to several times, but has been unable to really create anything off of it. Final 30 seconds. I think Blyden really is starting to give up this round. He, his volume has waned here, and he's backing up. Stern turning it on at the right time. 
And the round will end, and the fight will end. The third on top after a last second takedown. Both fighters raising their hands, trying to convince the judges. The fans here for the early portion of the card appreciate the level of skill on display there. Excellent showcase to open our world championship card. Here's your Geico Cajunomics stats bundle. The numbers in favor of Jesse Stern. When we return, we'll find out if the judges are in favor of Stern or Blyden. A decision is next. I'm the baddest motherfucker on the planet. <laughs> Pounding away at Bruno Miranda. Dan Rigliano taking a close look. And he waves it off. All the way up to the championship. I think this year, I'm truly the best of the year I ever was. Oh, yeah, I'm really looking confident on the feet. I think I'm one of the best in the world right now. I'm not Mr. Perfect. I'm the guy with all the odds stacked against me. Stevie Ray hurts. It traveled down. Oh. I've been the underdog this whole season, last season and the season before that. I think I was good last year, but I think this year it's, a, it's something even better. Oh! Oh, yeah, he can train with GSP. He can have the big gym and big fancy coach and whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm more tactical than him, and I think he's going to be careful, or is he going to be like the crazy play like he was in his last fight. I don't know. Give me two more rounds of this. Only five minutes of Cassius Clay Collar, baby. Let's go. You saw that main event teaser. This is what will be contested tonight. Six gold belts, six $1 million prizes, six different divisions. Highlights from our first showcase bout of the evening. There's the knee that changed the tide early in the fight for Jesse Stern. Yeah, and for me, Sean, these were the best strikes. Those short right hooks. Uh, even the left hook was landing quite well, but I think the volume started to increase and the confidence started to increase for Jesse Stern after round one. He felt very comfortable staying right in the pocket, letting those hands go and not moving out of that range, yes. staying in it. PFL's proprietary AI score gives rounds one, two, and three to Jesse Stern. Round two, the most dominant, a near finish there from Stern. Our experts say Jesse Stern wins, agreeing with the AI score. So Randy and Kenny concur will the official commission judges. We send it to Andy Shepard to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. The judges scored this about 29, 28, 30, 27, and 30, 27. All for your winner by unanimous decision, Jesse Stern. A little pop from the boy from Baltimore. Not so far away from our Anthem Arena here in Washington, D.C. Fifth straight win for Jesse Stern.
scan the QR code at the bottom right hand corner of your screen take down the new apparel partner of the professional fighters league they'll be providing our gear our fighter kits and everything take down with the black Friday sale take advantage by scanning that QR code. Another showcase bout coming up. That's Phil Karakap putting the final touches on his warm up. The Hitman looking to grab the 10th victory of his pro mixed martial arts career. And he's squaring off against Kai Wu. Kai Wu, notable for his exploits training Mark Zuckerberg, the Facebook CEO in the sport of mixed martial arts. Our very own Brett Okamoto caught up with Kai Wu about just that. Thank you, guys. Well, Kai, we are very close to your PFL debut. Tell me, what is the impression that you want to have in your first appearance in this new promotion? Uh, I just want to keep it fun. You know, I want people to tune in and they see that I'm, I'm here. I bring something. Um, I don't want to say new because a lot of people bring different things to the, the game, but I want to breath of fresh air and I just keep saying at PFL Asia you know I'm working on something like that so hopefully my my uh, success hopefully can can uh, bring PFL Asia to life and in terms of your first matchup Phil calls himself the hitman what are you expecting out of him tonight well I expect that uh, with the target on my back you know because everyone wants to to fight someone in this position um, I'm not blind to it but I mean after I beat someone as good as him, as tough as him, there should be no questions. Yeah, I don't think there will be, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you in your first uh, your first PFL fight. Thank you, awesome. guys. Thank guys, you. back to you. Pounding away at Bruno Miranda, Dan Rigliano taking a close look, and he wins it all. I think this year I'm truly the best of the year I ever was. Oh yeah, I'm really looking confident on the feet. I think I'm one of the best in the world right now. I'm not Mr. Perfect. I'm the guy with all the odds stacked against me. Stevie Ray hurts in trouble down. Oh. I've been the underdog this whole season, last season and the season before that. I think I was good last year, but I think this year it's, a, it's something even better. Oh! Oh, yeah. You can train with GSP. You can have the big gym and big fancy coach and whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, I'm more tactical than him. And I think he's going to be careful. Or is he going to be like the crazy clay like he was in his last fight? I don't know. Give me two more rounds of it. 25 minutes of Cassius Clay Collar, baby. That's it. Still to come, the 2023 PFL World Championship main card only on ESPN Plus pay-per-view. If you have not purchased it already, scan that QR code on the bottom right, purchase the pay-per-view so you don't miss the biggest nights in MMA. PFL more than a fight, six world title fights. Do not miss it. Redcon One, the official supplement partner of the PFL, this Black Friday, you can get up to 80% off site-wide. Shop America's favorite pre-workout protein powder, creatine, and more, only at redcon1.com. This showcase band and weight bout, three five-minute rounds, brought to you by Redcon One, Kai Wu, Phil Karakapa. Introducing a first fighting out of the blue corner, Phil Karakapa. Making his PFL debut, Phil Karakapa, seeking the 10th pro win of his career. Ring of combat champion, trains out of Dante Rivera, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And in the red corner, Kai Wu.
Taiwu is most famous in the MMA world because he was the trainer that Mark Zuckerberg selected for his first foray into the sport. But Kai wants to be known for much more than that. Making his PFL debut, he's got a pro record of seven wins, four losses. They call him the Shadow. Tale of the Tape is brought to you by Redcon One. Phil Caracappa, 31 years of age, making him three years older than Kai Wu. Caracappa is also the taller fighter here. Reach advantage, four inches on the arms, favoring Phil Caracappa. Kai Wu and Phil both have 38-inch leg measurements here. All right, Keith, the victory for Kai Wu. He needs to stick and move. He also needs to stay off his back. And for Caracappa, it's all about forward pressure. Andy Shepard gets these bantam weights going. The following is a, a bantam weight showcase bout. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He's a striking specialist and stands five feet eight inches tall. He went in officially at 135 and one half pounds and holds a professional record of nine wins and three losses. Fighting out of Freehold, New Jersey, Phil the Hitman Kara Kappa. His opponent fighting out of the red corner. He is an MMA specialist and stands five feet seven inches tall. He weighed in officially at 135 and one half pounds. And in his mixed martial arts career, has earned a record of seven victories and four defeats. Fighting out of Tracy, California, the Shadow Kai Wu. Your referee in charge, Kevin Mulhall. Mr. Mulhall equipped with our ref cam. He can take us up close and personal inside the action. Phil Karakap is in the gray trunks. Kai Wu is in the blue. Okay, fighters, you ready? You ready? Let's fight! Touch of the gloves, this bantamweight showcase underway. Of course, bantamweight has not been part of the PFL's purview, perhaps until now after the purchase of Bellator. Earlier this week, PFL purchased Bellator, bringing some of the great bantamweights over from that organization under the PFL umbrella. Trying to establish the range, Kai Wu typically doing it with kicks. Karakapa looking for that jab. Nice little blitz there from Karakapa. now with his hands around his waist, running forward. Yeah, I mean, that's going to force Karakapa, or should force him to keep that chin down and those hands up. Oh, good left hook there. Big shot there. I think that hurt Karakapa. Now the body lock on Karakapa. Yeah. He sure did. He was trying to time his own offense. There's Maz Brunel, number four ranked Bellator featherweight. I imagine all the Bellator fighters in the building are starting to scout this uh, PFL town. Hey, will I be fighting that person in the future? The possibilities for the combined roster are virtually endless, but we have been promised in 2024 a PFL champ versus Bellator champs fight card. Karakapa tries to trip, and Wu does a great job of reversing it, getting back to his feet. 
Tell you what, I'm impressed with Wu's shot selection. He needs to stay defensively disciplined, as Kenny Florian says sometimes, while he's choosing those shots. Oh, and he lands. When, he's when he throws, he lands. Yeah, absolutely. He's landed some great counter shots against Karakapa. Karakapa needs to do a better job of feinting his way in. He's being a little bit too predictable. And Kai Wu, very sharp with those counter strikes. Start walking those feet, walking those legs. Keep it on the edge. Bill looking for that takedown though. Got a great chin, showing a lot of toughness out there. Good shoulder punch by Karakapa. The corner of Kai Wu talking a little trash through the smart cage there. That we could take those knees it's like a little baby. Interesting strategy from the coaching. Good take oh, down there with the body lock, Karakapa into the half guard of Kai Wu. Yeah, and, and gets good positioning as well, able to stabilize, keep Wu, keep those shoulders of Wu on the mat. Nice head position, chipping away with some ground and pound now. Bill Caracapa looking to his corner. Dante Rivera, former UFC fighter in the corner. Coaching him through these exchanges, trying to get him to post on the face, and there it is. That's what the coach is asking for as we look through ref camp. I'd like to see Wu dig for that left side under him. He's got a cross grip now. That could work as well. Got to get some elevation, get back up on that elbow, start to use that fence yep. to climb up and get off of his back. And he, he can pummel in that elbow, that left elbow for an underhook. See if he can do that. Up. Final 20 seconds of this first round. Bantamweight showcase between Kai Wu on the bottom currently. Phil Karakapa trying to finish this round on top. Kicks to the legs and we'll finish the round back after this. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Jake Paul. You do not want to miss the PFL World Championships Friday, November 24th on ESPN Pay-Per-View. Six world title fights, $6 million on the line. You don't want to miss it. Go to ESPN.com slash PPV and click Get Now. Be there. Little Bird tells me Jake Paul is going to join us and help us announce a couple of these world title fights tonight. Maybe here on the undercard, maybe a little bit later on our main pay-per-view card as well. Do what Jake says and buy the pay-per-view. Kai Wu in the blue trunks, Phil Karakapa in the gray. Second round of this bantamweight contest. How'd you score round one? Randy Couture. I thought Wu had landed the best shots. He gave up that takedown late in the round and... and it gave away part of the round, but I think at the end of the day, Wu still won the round. Let's go, let's go. Stop waiting, stop waiting. Let's go. A little conversation happening between the fighters. Wu has done a good job attacking that lead leg. Those thudding, solid low kicks. So far, Karakapa not having to respond too much. But if he keeps piling them up, the most fashionable weapon in mixed martial arts. Might pay dividends for Kai Wu. Yeah, well, it's such a hard technique to see and block and deal with. Maybe for you, Kenny. Yeah, exactly. Now he's starting to block, though. Karakapa doing a good job of just lifting up that ankle. There's another low kick from Kai Wu. Yeah, Karakapa feeling it. Trying to blitz in, and here's the double leg. Big elevation and a slam. Stay in half guard. Hey, 
Hey, how about that? Newly minted welterweight champion over in Bellator, Jason Jackson. He's got his belt with him, too. Let's get that belt on camera, Jason Jackson. Knocked off the previously undefeated Amasov to take the welterweight strap. Potentially a future opponent for him later on the card. Sada Busia Magomed Magomed Karamov. There it is. Bell. Thank you, Jason Jackson. Look at that shiny thing. <laughs> it's a big smile to go with it, too. <laughs> He's a busy man. I, I tell you, like every guy from the Kill Cliff gym has him in his corner. So obviously they respect his the information that he has. He's He's not fighting, he's in somebody's corner, it seems. Karen Kappa doing a good job of walking Wu over to the fence, trying to find a way to clear his head and hands and posture up. Wu doing a nice job with the closed guard and keeping Kara Kappa's levels down so he can't get that space to land any significant shots. And Dan Hardy, defense is its own reward when you're on the bottom here, so what does Wu need to do to get up and create some offense again. I feel like he needs to open his guard and instigate a scramble. He's got the fence on his shoulders so he can open up his guard and get back to his feet. Well, that's, that makes it a little bit easier if the referee gets involved. He's, he's waiting on his counter punches right now, and Karakapa got caught a couple of times in the first round, and he's been a little more wise to it, but I'd like to see a more, more offense uh, from Wu just to try and solidify some more points on the scorecards. Two minutes left in this round. Advantage on the feet, his favorite blue in this one. Obviously, Karakapa got the takedown, stayed on top. He's going to try to go backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Control the, the center line, control the center line. Head movement there from Kai Wu. Just to take a listen inside the red corner. Yeah, 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 to those, Kai Wu. Right hand stuck. More than one, Kai, more than one. Back at it, bro. We're just watching on that overhand. 130, 130, 130. Oh, hey. Let's go. Let's go. switching leads now. You can see the swelling starting to grow on that lead calf. Yeah, definitely five stepping way more gingerly than he did before. Yeah, five or six of those calf kicks just in this round alone. Switches stances there for a second. And Kai, Kai's got to be careful to be leaning too far oh, over. And a couple of those shots. Change. Yeah. I mean, both of those guys were just eating punches in that brief flurry. But both. Kara Kappa gets himself out of trouble. Yeah, both these guys have some good chins on them. No question about that. Ray Cooper, the third, warming up backstage. The first bout on our pay-per-view card, Ray Cooper, two-time welterweight champion, will welcome Derek Brunson, newly signed PFL light heavyweight, I think is the plan for Brunson. Go guys, busy! Be a catchweight bout between those two. Final 10 seconds, and just like in round one, Phil Caracappa will try to finish round two on top. Successful in that effort, and round three when we return on ESPN+. Plus. Welcome back to ESPN Plus Showcase Bantamweight Bout. That's Phil Caracappa taking a few deep breaths, receiving coaching from Dante Rivera, where he trains Dante Rivera BJJ. Kai Wu is behind his coach there. There he is in the blue trunks. Holly says we're headed for round number three. That'll be the final round here. On a night full of title bouts, this showcase is three five-minute rounds. Dan Hardy, how have you scored round one and round two? Dan Hardy previously engaged here. Randy, same question for you. I haven't won round a piece at this stage. I think Wu had a 
more effective striking, even though he got taken down late in that first round. I don't think it was enough to swing the round for Karakapa. I think Karakapa had two takedowns in the second round, and I think that definitely swung that round for him. I have it one round, in a one round apiece. Scan that QR code at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen to catch the pay-per-view portion of our World Championship card. Five title bouts, Kayla time, Harrison's return, time. Derek Brunson's debut, Ray Cooper III's return, only on ESPN pay-per-view. Brief pause for an eye poke here in this showcase Be affair. Be careful, watch both of you guys, fingers, watch your fingers, Fight. Live odds have swung in the favor of Phil Caracappa, now minus 660. Karakapa switching leads, taking that lead, that left lead leg that's been kicked as many times out of the out of the fray. Oh, big shots there from Karakapa. But once again, behind those flurries comes in this. That's what he uses as his entry. A little blood from the hairline, it looks like, of Kai Wu, or maybe right there in the middle of the forehead. Yeah, hard to tell if it was a collision with the heads or for those nasty hooks that Karakapa was throwing, but Wu trying to pummel in. A lot of blood coming down the leg of Kai Wu here. I thought the oh. ball was from Kai Wu's own forehead. It looks like it's from the Karakapa. left eyebrow yeah. Phil Karakapa. Could have been a head collision. Karakapa licks the blood, tastes it a little bit. Making sure it's his own. Yeah. <laughs> that's mine. Yep, that's my flavor. Hey, there's Patchy Mix, Bellator Bantamweight champion. Belt over the shoulder there. selection very accurate with his strikes it's not there hasn't been a ton of volume really at any point in this fight obviously in a situation like this he's got to create opportunities for himself to strike Karakapa now starting to climb through the guard of Kai Wu Kai does have an underhook there he just needs to blade his body a little bit more and turn towards Karakapa Meanwhile, Karakapa's eyebrow leaking, decorating the canvas here on World guys, Championship night. Karakapa's trying to pass here. There it is, right in, almost in the mount. Three-quarter mount here. Karakapa trying to get his right foot out from between the legs of Kai Wu, but fully in control on top here in round number three. Big right hand as he tries to posture up some. And a left hook. Dante Rivera in the blue corner of Phil Karakapa with some hammer There you go, there you go, keep it, keep it. Hey, Phil, under a minute. Push very busy here, landing a lot of shots on Kai Wu. Kai Wu just kind of holding on to him. He's got to get that under and try to get back to his feet here. He was able to earn a stand-up from that lockdown position earlier in the fight, but with this amount of time and with the more active approach from Phil Karakapa on top, I think the onus is on Wu to get himself up. Referee's not going to bail him out here. I agree. Karakapa's doing a great job of staying busy enough to keep the referee off. Stay busy, stay busy. Hey, stand 20 seconds, Phil. Stand and fight him. Let's go. Yeah, big hematoma now on the right side of the forehead of Kai Wu. Starting to form. Easy, guys. Final 10 seconds. Bill Karakapa finished round one on top, round two on top, and he will do the same in round number three. To the judges' scorecards, we go. 
Well, despite that nasty cut, Bill Caracappa, big time control in round three, Kenny. Yeah, absolutely. Did a much better job, a safer job of getting to that clinch position, landing those takedowns, and landed much better shots on the ground with his ground and pound as the fight wore on. There's your Geico Cajunomic stats bundle. Phil Caracappa with the four takedowns, and you can see, especially in that third round, really piling on the activity on the ground strikes. 87 of 95 from that top position did land. We'll hear from the judges and their official scorecards when we return on ESPN+. Quero tanto esse cinturão como eu quis ano passado. Eu posso ser campeã de duas categorias agora. A multiple time world champion in sports sambo, long combat history. Nice double leg, beautiful takedown, round and pound by Marina now. Marisa Pacheco unloading big time power shot. That was savage, just savage. Very aggressive with the striking, and she continues to hammer away with the right. Unrelenting pressure from the fist of Larissa Pacheco. That's why she's one of the best fighters in the world. de 2022 para 2023, com certeza mais experiente, né? С первого сезона в PFL, но к сожалению в первом сезоне по большому счету я считаю себя частью ветераном. В какой-то веке надо все-таки побеждать и доказывать, что наша школа лучше. Ser protagonista desse show aí vai ser uma realização, vai ser maravilhoso. Uma expectativa muito boa. Выше рост, длиннее руки и по мышцам, конечно же, он сильнее будет. Все имеют свои минусы, надо просто ими воспользоваться. de novembro, vou ser o novo campeão peso pesado da PFL. Still to come, 2023 PFL World Championship main card only on ESPN Plus pay-per-view. So if you haven't purchased already, scan the QR code on the bottom right-hand corner of your screen right now. Purchase the pay-per-view. Otherwise, you're going to miss out. And you do not want to miss out on five world title fights, the return of Kayla Harrison, the return of Ray Cooper III, the debut of Derek Brunson in the PFL. PFL is more than a fight. Here's our AI score, round by round, proprietary here to the PFL. Score one to 100 based on the results of the action inside. Impact the action and technique has on your opponent, not just what you see on the judges' scorecards. Kai Wu got round one, two, and three belong to Phil Caracappa, according to AI. Our experts, Randy Couture and Kenny Florian, agree with AI score. The judges' official scorecards are with Andy Shepard. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. The judges scored this bout 30, 27, 29, 28, and 29, 28. All for your winner via unanimous decision, Phil Karakapa! Phil Caracappa out of New Jersey. Tenth professional victory, this one by decision. Successful in his PFL debut. And he'll go get a second paycheck and some stitches for his efforts tonight. Joel Lopez, undefeated so far as an amateur in the sport of mixed martial arts. Faces the grandson of Muhammad Ali, Biagio Ali Walsh. That showcase coming up shortly. Brett Okamoto caught up with Biagio Ali Walsh earlier today.
Thank you, guys. Well, Biagio, they call these things showcase fights, and I feel like you've been living up to that. You've been exceeding expectations every time out. Can you just talk about, this is your fourth fight this year, just the level of comfort that you have each and every time that you step out there again? Absolutely. You know, uh, each time I get more and more comfortable. Uh, kind of stage, you know, it's not normal. But, um, yeah, you know, it's all about getting the experience. You know, there's all these pro fighters in this room, you know, I look up to. I want to be like them someday. So it's just getting the experience. That I'm getting the experience early. So it's just about uh, that and, and just getting better each fight. And Joel Lopez, you got to square off with him yesterday. He's a tall guy. Looks like he's got a little bit of a long reach. And he's got three finishes so far in three fights. What have you seen out of him and what are you expecting out of him? I expect to put on a great fight for the fans. You know, that, that's always my main goal is just to put on a fight for the fans, make the fans go, ooh, ah, you know, stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, he's a good, good fighter. Uh, we're both going to get the, you know, great experience uh, doing this. So, yeah, good luck to him. And, and yeah, I'm excited. Fans have been doing a whole lot of oohing and on when yeah. you've been fighting. There's no doubt about it, man. Thank you so much for the time and Thank good you. luck tonight. Thank you. Guys. There is no doubt that Marina Moknakina has her work cut out for her when she takes on Larissa Pacheco. But if we focus on the things that Moknakina does well, she could use them against Pacheco, especially over 25 minutes. Uh-oh. Oh, In the clinch, she has great hip tosses and throws and trips and reaps all things that can destabilize Pacheco, force her to scramble, to balance, and to use energy that she doesn't want to use. If Moknakina can get this fight to the floor, then of course Pacheco is dangerous down there as well. But getting past her guard and pinning her shoulders to the canvas will make her life a lot easier. We know Moknakina has got good arm attacks, but in order to get to those positions, she's gonna have to try a few times. She's gonna have to be patient, and she's gonna have to make sure that she doesn't get discouraged. If she locks up with Pacheco in the first round and feels she's very strong and she loses confidence, then Pacheco will walk her down and find that knockout punch. If she's understanding that this is going to be an uphill battle in the first few rounds, wearing Pacheco down and getting this fight into the championship rounds is where her technical abilities will shine. Working from side control, pinning arms and attacking arm locks as well, of course, with ground and pound, they're the ways that Mock Natkin can potentially win this title. Look at those championship belts. We'll give out six of them coming up tonight, including after this next showcase bout, then our first world title fight. So right here on ESPN Plus, before we even get to the pay-per-view, you'll have a featherweight title bout treat. Hey, Johnny Eblen on our PFL fan cam. Eblen, Bellator middleweight champ. The PFL has purchased Bellator, which means Johnny Eblen is now a PFL fighter looking for some work. <laughs> There's Gabriel Braga getting taped up in our Air Force Reserve prep point, ready for more. Gabriel Braga and Jesus Pinedo will square off against one another for a PFL 2023 featherweight champion. And then coming up later on your ESPN Plus pay-per-view card, Kayla Harrison is back after a year away. Ray Cooper III is back, taking on the PFL debuting Derek Brunson. Light heavyweight contest, Josh Silvera in Pukasanganai. Sada Busi finds himself an underdog against Magomed Magomed Karabov, who's the season one welterweight champion. Larissa Pacheco looking to make history tonight and become the first person to take home two PFL belts in two different weight classes. Goldsov is a favorite in our heavyweight co-main event and the Canadian gangster looking to go back to back is a favorite against Cassius Clay Collins.
There's Biagio Ali Walsh, grandson of Muhammad Ali. Always draws eyes and interest. And actually, you know, Jake Paul, who's a, a great partner of the PFL, he's going to join us to help uh, call this fight. Tonight, the championships are the culmination of the only true sports format in the sport of mixed martial arts. It is a regular season first, and then playoffs, playoff semifinals, and if you can win there, you earn your spot in these PFL championships and the opportunity for $1 million. 10 fighters in each weight class, six different weight classes. That means six belts and six $1 million checks, making this the richest night in mixed martial arts. Two regular season fights for each fighter lead to those playoffs. You get three points for wins, bonus points for a finish in any round. Top four fighters on points made our playoffs. And those semifinals led to tonight, where $1 million and the belt will go to each champion. Sean O'Connell and Randy Couture and Kenny Florian here beside the PFL Smart Cage. Six world title fights including one to come in the featherweight division kenny former world featherweight championship contender um you got gabriel braga and jesus Pinedo coming up but first we get biagio ali walsh the grandson of muhammad ali this guy is still an amateur is it time for him to turn pro if he gets the win tonight? I mean, that's a lot of pressure on his shoulders, but he has been looking phenomenal, been handling that pressure extremely well. Definitely a student of the sport. And every time we see him, he gets better and better. Yes. And he trains at your gym, Randy. So you've seen him since the beginning. Yep. We keep talking and raving about his development and how much better he gets so quickly. Each time out, he's getting better, but you've seen it since the beginning. That's right. He's got a strong wrestling pedigree from high school. He was a football player in college and was a little lost after he left football. And MMA saved his life. He showed up at the gym, started training, wants to fight, wants to carry on the legacy of his grandfather. And man, is he doing that with humility and class every time we see him. So a showcase amateur bout and then a featherweight world title and coming up later on our ESPN pay-per-view, five more title bouts, including one where we might see history made. Larissa Pacheco pulled off one of the upsets of the, of the year in the sport of mixed martial arts when last season she took down Kayla Harrison for her first championship. That was at lightweight. Now she'll take on Marina Moknakina at featherweight and try and grab a second world title belt. Eu quero tanto esse cinturão como eu quis ano passado. Eu posso ser campeã de duas categorias agora. A multiple time world champion in sports sambo, long combat history. Nice double leg, beautiful takedown, round and pound by Marina now. Pacheco unloading big time power shots. That was savage, just savage. Marina Mokhnakina very aggressive with the striking and she continues to hammer away with the right. Unrelenting pressure from the fist of Larissa Pacheco. That's why she's one of the best fighters in the world. Hard hitting, incredible grappler. Now Totally in shape at 145 pounds. What stands in Larissa's way of becoming not just a champion again here, but the best female mixed martial artist on the planet? I don't think the anything stands in Larissa's way except for Larissa. Sometimes we're our own worst enemy, but she showed us humility in, in the interviews. When we were trying to say, so you're better than these gals? She said, no, 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 no. I'm at their level. Give me a year, I think I will be better. So I was very impressed with her. Amazing transformation, the striking, the physicality, the technique that she's brought to this sport. There's someone who lost to Kayla Harrison the first time she met her. Went the distance with her, but still lost the second and in the last season, the victory, the hugest upset in our sport. She's on track to be the best female in mixed martial arts. And by the way, has more first round finishes first round knockouts than any other PFL fighter, man or woman. Her opponent is relishing the underdog role. Marina Magnakina knows that she's a big underdog, but last year, Larissa was a big underdog against Kayla Harrison. That's right. Do we see the same thing happen again where 
the underdog prevails. Well, I think she's coming in here very confident. You know, she comes from Russia. She has that very stoic mindset. She's been training extremely hard. I also think she has a very interesting style to maybe, you know, po pose some problems to Larissa Pacheco. She is a ground specialist. She has very good takedowns. She attacks your legs. She attacks your arms. She's very dangerous with those submissions, and I think that is in her plans against Pacheco. It's a stellar matchup, and for more, Dan Hardy. Thank you, guys. Now, of course, you know, Larissa Pacheco's got a very strong ground game. That gives her a lot of confidence going into these fights. But with that ferocious power that she has, it's all about the delivery. She knows if she can connect, she's going to do a lot of damage. Take a look at this breakdown and see if I make a little bit of sense about how she's landing these power shots. Kaleshnik is a familiar opponent for Pacheco, and you can see that in the opening seconds of this fight. As Pacheco moves forward and throws her first power punch, it falls short, and she drifts away knowing full well to expect this counter punch coming in her direction. You can see her rock back onto her back foot, and she's gonna reset her feet, still moving forward at the same time, but making the punch fall short. Moves herself into range, and then he's gonna land the next power shot. Beautiful management of range here, drifts away, steps into range and lands the one punch that she needs to to finish this fight in impressive fashion. Here we go from another angle. Just out of range and then a punch clean down the center line breaks her opponent's nose. She knows that she has that power that finishes fights and wins world titles. But of course her ground game is something to behold as well and she might need that tonight against Marina Moknakina. Back to you guys. Thank you, Dan. Just so you know, Larissa Pacheco predicted that Elena Kolesnik finish. She said, it won't take me more than 90 seconds. It took her less than 20 seconds. So. Unbelievable. That's only available, by the way, on pay-per-view, which means you need to scan the QR code on your screen right now. Purchase the pay-per-view. Do not miss out on five championship fights and the return of Kayla Harrison and the return of two-time champion Ray Cooper III as he takes on Derek Brunson. More fights and the grandson of Muhammad Ali when we return. All right, let's talk to you. Welterweight Championship. Maga Magomed Karamov has already been a champion in this division. Magomed! Magomed Karamov! So he has the experience, but more than anything else, it's his speed and his takedowns that he's used throughout his career to hurt and harass his opponents. And that's not going to be any different here against Sadu Busi, who's a phenomenal striker at a very long range. So for Maga, he's got to get into those, uh, into that boxing range, land those shots on the feet, and also utilize them to set up his very fast takedown. If he can hit those takedowns against Sadu Busi, we're going to see how good of a ground game Sadu Busi has because I know it's something he's been working on, but that is the area where Maga has been able to defeat so many of his opponents, whether it's with his ground and pound, his control, winning rounds, or with his very dangerous submission attack from that top position. Welcome back, fight fans. We got a lot to look forward to tonight. And we also have, because of the great leadership we have here in the PFL, this mega event coming in 2024. PFL champions and Bellator champions squaring off after PFL earlier this week finalized the purchase of Bellator. Every Bellator fighter is now a PFL fighter. Every PFL fighter potentially matching up with the Bellator fighter, champion versus champion, just like MMA fans have been asking for since the inception of this great sport. Our next bout, an amateur showcase at lightweight. Three three-minute rounds under amateur rules. Biagio Ali Walsh and Joel Lopez. 
Making their way to the PFL Smart Cage, fighting out of the blue corner, Joel Lopez. Joel Lopez from Richmond, Virginia, not so far away from here. Undefeated as an amateur so far. Three finishes in three fights. Having a good time as he takes his place inside the smart gate. And in the red corner, Biagio Ali Walsh. And perhaps no amateur athlete on the planet handles the pressure of the family name with more aplomb than this young man. Grandson of Muhammad Ali. Gets better and better every time we see him. Five straight knockouts. Four of those have come inside the first round. Training in the shark tank that is extreme couture mixed martial arts. 25 years old with an incredible future. And a tough test in front of him tonight. This is mom Rashida Ali and his father. Tell the tape for this one brought to you by Geico. Yajua Ali Walsh, 25 years of age. Joel Lopez making his PFL debut is three years older. He is also three inches taller. Has a three inch advantage in the arm reach. Both men with a 41 inch measurement on the leg. All right, keys to victory here for Biagio Ali Walsh. He's very dangerous when he's pressing and he's backing up his opponents. Also got to watch out for his ground game and counter striking. And for Joel Lopez, it's got to be all about his takedown defense and he's got to utilize the, those long range weapons. He's six foot one and he's a featherweight, a lightweight, sorry. Very impressive. Andy Shepard gets them started. Ladies and gentlemen, this following is a special amateur lightweight showcase bout. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He is a striking specialist and stands six feet one inches tall. He weighed in officially at 154 and one quarter pounds and holds an undefeated amateur record of three wins and no losses. Fighting out of Richmond, Virginia, and represented Puerto Rico, Joel Lopez. God bless Piazzo. God bless that man. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He is a striking specialist and stands five feet ten inches tall. He weighed in officially at 155 and three quarter pounds. And in six amateur MMA fights, has earned a record of five victories and one defeat. All five wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, Biagio Ali Walsh. Your referee in charge, Michael Walter. Biagio Ali Walsh in the red trunks. Joel Lopez in the gray. Red corner, are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Fight! I love you so much. Touch of the gloves and an I love you so much from Joel Lopez <laughs> to start the fight. He's certainly Tough. comfortable in the cage. <laughs> Came out like it was karaoke night. <laughs> Why are you hitting me if you love me, if you love me so much? <laughs> Weird relationship. Heavy leg kicks here to open the action for Biagio Ali Walsh. Ooh, that left hook. I felt the wind on that one. Lopez. Body kick there from Lopez. Yeah, continues to attack the body. Oh! Left hook and the right hand both snuck through the guard there for Biagio Ali Walsh. Front kick just misses. Oh! Almost dropped him there. These flurries are. Always so intense from Biagio Ali Walsh, but he keeps his feet where they belong. And Biagio is so fast on the inside. 8 1 there on the counter punch. Like that front kick, he's missed with that twice at close range. I couldn't get my foot up there. Right? 
I'll tell you what, Lopez has got a chin, though. Sure does. Very tough. Just over one minute gone here. Three three minute rounds, because this is an amateur fight. Another Ooh. body kick there from Lopez. And nice right hand that landed against Biagio Ali Walsh. Lopez landed some shots here, too. There you go. In the gym. Boom. Nice long nice right shots. hand there from Joel Lopez. See, Biagio's just staying in front of him. He's got to be able to move laterally a lot more and feint his way in. Can't rely on his speed and power for every combination. Switch of the stances there from Lopez. He tries to grab a hold of Biagio. Biagio doing a nice job of re-pummeling. Oh, a little stunting there from Ali Walsh through the okey doke right hand and then again loaded up and through the straight right. Now goes to the body. I'm pretty sure we can find his grandfather doing a very similar tactic. Yes. Sharp jabs here from both stances, really, for Joel Lopez. Yeah, ooh, wow. nice one, too, there from Lopez. Drilling the straight right hand into the face of Biagio Ali Walsh. Got to be careful about dipping his head down straight. He will dip right into a knee there. He's got to be very careful in that range. Heat on them. Yeah, he is so fast. Left hook landed for Ali Walsh, and the left hook landed for Joel Lopez on the counter in the final seconds of round one. A diferença do Renan de 2022 para 2023, com certeza mais experiente, né? первого сезона в PFL, но, к сожалению, в первом сезоне, по большому счету, я считаю себя частью ветераном. В какой-то веке надо все-таки побеждать и доказывать, что наша школа лучше. Ser protagonista desse show aí vai ser uma realização, vai ser maravilhoso. Uma expectativa muito boa. Выше рост, длиннее руки и по мышцам, конечно же, он посильнее будет. Все имеют свои минусы, надо просто ими воспользоваться. Joel Lopez in the gray trunks. Biagio Ali Walsh in the red. Or a brief conversation at the beginning from Joel Lopez. Good long punches from Joel out of Richmond, Virginia. Beautiful. Oh, left hook landed. Lopez in big trouble here. Biagio Ali Walsh with another flurry. Lopez is still in this fight. He got knocked down, but he's definitely not out. Showing unreal toughness right now to Joel Lopez. Oh, he landed a nice short left hook that backed Ali Walsh up. Making him rethink the wild flurry to try and get the finish here. Biagio Ali Walsh now settling back into a rhythm. Thinking this one through after huge punches. Put Lopez down, but not out. Yeah, unreal action here. Biagio Ali Walsh typically so good once he gets you hurt. But Lopez so tough. Well, that's one thing about getting closer and closer to a pro debut is your opponents are always going to get tougher. Yeah. Biagio Ali Walsh finding that out now as he eats another right hand. Oh, oh right hand landed. Oh, and oh he's wow. out. He's out. And Joel Lopez. Wow. Face plants unconscious. Wow. Oh, Biagio he's still Ali Walsh. He is still face down. My goodness, what a knockout. And that was the accumulation of several power shots that mounted up for that. Wow. Whoa. What a finish by Biagio Ali Walsh. Just a nasty combination.
Good sportsmanship as always. We'll make it official when we come back. Welcome back to the Anthem in Washington, D.C. Here's your Cajunomics stats bundle brought to you by GEICO. This one did not see any groundwork. Biagio Ali Walsh, the grandson of Muhammad Ali, landed 59 strikes. Looks like a dozen of those were power punches and a second round highlight reel knockout as he face plants Joel Lopez for his sixth straight knockout. Good to see Joel Lopez up and about and smiling again. Randy, give me the replays here. Yeah, there's some great exchanges. Big left hand right on the chin. And down goes Lopez. Walsh tries to finish, finds a way in. Lopez is still in this fight. He's in trouble here, but he's still firing back. He's still there. Nice big right hand. Stays in the pocket. Here's the big shot, big right hand, right on the button, left hook on the chin, and that is the finisher right there. Yeah, good job, good, good job by the referee to jump in there. Yeah, Mike. right? Yeah. There's that right hand, misses with the left. As Lopez comes back up, there's the little left right on the chin, and that puts him out. But that big overhand right, is what starts this whole process. Left misses. Lopez goes down. As Lopez recovers, he comes right back up into another left hand. Andy Shepard makes this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Michael Walter calls a halt to the action at one minute and 24 seconds of round number two. Declaring your winner. Via knockout, Biagio Ali Walsh. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with your winner, Biagio Ali Walsh, for the Celsius post fight interview. My friend, every time we see you in this smart cage, you look more composed. You look more measured, and I know for sure that Coach Jimmy Gifford will be happy with that knockout. Yes, sir. You know, first off, God is the greatest. I wouldn't be here without God. And also, I fought for all my brothers and sisters who are suffering every single day in Palestine. I fought for all the children, all the innocent children that have been taken from their parents, and all the parents that have been taken from their children. God bless all those who are suffering and depressed. And remember, guys, the truth will always prevail. Powerful sentiment, my friend. Talk to me about what's next for you. We, we, we've heard you may be thinking about turning pro. Do you feel ready? Do you feel like you want to spend a bit more time as an amateur? What's next for you? What's in your mind right now? 
Dude, uh, there's so much going on in my mind right now. Like, I always get, like, I'm still an amateur, so I'm getting used to just everything, man. Like, to get this kind of experience as an amateur is insane. I'm super blessed and grateful. Um, I don't know. I'll sit down with my coach and see what happens, but I'll definitely announce soon so everybody will know. Well, everyone's going to be watching out for you, my friend. Absolutely. Congratulations. Fantastic performance. Ladies and gentlemen, Biagio Ali Walsh. Big power in both hands. Biagio Ali Walsh with six knockouts in a row. Our first championship fight of the night takes place next. Gabriel Braga, still undefeated in his mixed martial arts career, looking to make it 13-0 as the stakes increase exponentially. Jesus Pinedo looking to become the first Peruvian major mixed martial arts champion. At 27 years of age, he's already creeping on 30 fights. Featherweight title bout next on ESPN Plus. Cara, eu já tô enxergando esse esse milhão de dólares há muito tempo. Big white hand there from Braga. Nasty combination from Braga. Oh! Cada vez mientras cada pelea que pasa la preparación mental va creciendo mucho, ¿no? Para esta pelea voy a llegar creo en mi 100%. Oh, então, na primeira luta eu não fiz um camp direcionado para ele. Agora eu tô fazendo um camp 100% direcionado para ele. Nice combination by Pinedo, really bringing the heat here. La primera pelea siento que la gané, todo el mundo dice que la gané. Si hubiera una revancha y más que todo en la final estaría totalmente contento. ¿no? Oh, boy. Vou arrancar a cabeça dele fora. Vou acabar com essa luta no primeiro round. No, el objetivo es el do final, de todas maneras, y agarrar el cinturón. Y... Racing the rugged outdoors is not just a hobby, it's a way of life. Nature's challenges require energy, endurance, and resilience. The Redcon 1 Mossy Oak Collection will help you elevate your performance, conquer new frontiers, and reach your highest state of readiness. Patriotism, commitment, and hard work, that's what we stand for. Be Redcon 1 ready. Transformation is real, but temporary. Now any guy can temporarily cover grays, fill in thin patchy areas, and create a fuller defined look for beard and brows. New Just For Men, One Day Beard and Brow. Breakthrough color that stays put for the day till you wash it out. Transform your look. New Just For Men, One Day Beard and Brow color. One more fight, baby. Let's go. Racing the rugged outdoors is not just a hobby, it's a way of life. Nature's challenges require energy, endurance, and resilience. The Redcon 1 Mossy Oak Collection will help you elevate your performance, conquer new frontiers, and reach your highest state of readiness. Patriotism, commitment, and hard work. 
that's what we stand for. Be Red Tongue when ready. The PFL World Championship is here in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, playing host to six world title bouts. The only way you can see the final five of those is to purchase our pay-per-view card. That QR code, just scan it and hit purchase. That'll get you to five title fights later tonight and the return of Kayla Harrison, the return of Ray Cooper III, the debut of Derek Brunson, Sean O'Connell, Kenny Florian, Randy Couture forging towards those title fights. We've got a title fight coming up here on ESPN Plus, but I want to talk about the main event. I want to talk about what happens when you get a returning champion, a Canadian gangster, squaring off against the most exciting fighter in all of mixed martial arts. That's what we have for our main event tonight. Cassius Clay Collard, the number one seed. A stellar season for him so far against Olivia Alban Messier, who is still undefeated in his career inside the PFL Smart Cage. And of course, won a championship and a million dollars last year. He's looking to go back to back and perhaps exit the sport on a high note. He's talked about that all week long. Pounding away at Bruno Miranda. Dan Bergliano taking a close look. And he waves it off. Away after the championship. I think this year I'm truly the best Olivia I ever was. Oh, yeah, I'm really looking confident on the feet. I think I'm one of the best in the world right now. I'm not Mr. Perfect. I'm the guy with all the odds stacked against me. Stevie Ray hurts. It traveled down. Oh. I've been the underdog this whole season, last season and the season before that. I think I was good last year, but I think this year it's, a, it's something even better. Oh! Oh, yeah, he can train with GSP. He can have the big gym and big fancy coach and whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm more tactical than him. And I think he's going to be careful, or is he going to be like the crazy clay like he was in this last fight. I don't know. Give me two more rounds of this. Only five minutes of Cassius Clay Collard, baby. Let's go. I love the matchup, but let me ask you, Kenny Florian. Olivia Alban Messier, as I mentioned, undefeated inside the smart cage. He's one of the most technical and strategic fighters we've seen in the world, really, at lightweight. Does he have to do anything differently to take home a second championship against someone like Clay Collins? He's been extremely consistent, and he is so good everywhere. You know, no matter what style he's gone against, he has always had an answer. And, you know, what's even more interesting this year is that he's become even more of a finisher. We saw it against Stevie Ray last year when he won the belt, and he has continued on that trend, whether it's on the feet or on the ground. He knows how to finish you. I think becoming a champion last year has only added to his confidence. He's coming in with a lot of momentum. He is firing on all cylinders right now. Randy, let's talk about Clay Collard because as I always talk about how exciting he is. Sometimes exciting also means sloppy. Sometimes exciting also means you take unnecessary risks. We've seen that from Clay Collard in the past, but not so much this season. Is he in the right space? mentally and strategically to beat OAM. Yeah, I think this change of camp has made a big difference in his mindset. And we've seen him get squirrely in fights. He has fun out there. He likes to perform. He likes to be in front of the crowd and make it exciting. But that's gotten him off track in some fights and cost him on occasion. Now we're seeing a very, very focused Clay Collard. He's got a well-rounded game. He's got a great wrestling pedigree. His boxing is the best in the business. You better strap it on, because this guy's going to get in the pocket and let the ribs to the body go, the hooks to the head, that low kick. He's got great wrestling defense. He's a very, very well-rounded fighter. He's going to be tough to beat this year. Collard has been to the semifinals twice, but this is his first championship appearance. OAM, he's already been here and been through this, so he's got the experience advantage in the five-round title fight here in the PFL. For more on this bout, I want to go to Dan Hardy with a breakdown. Thank you, Sean. Now, we've been talking about this fight since we walked out of Madison Square Garden after the playoffs. It's so fascinating because they're so different. Clay Collard is blunt force pressure. He is going to walk you down with heavy hands and boxing and really try and put as much pressure on you as he can all the way through this fight. On the other side, though, you've got OAM, who is one of the more technical, cerebral fighters that we've ever seen in the smart cage. 
but that technical ability, he needs space to make that work. Watch this, how he breaks down Stevie Ray and see if, see if you think that this is going to work against Clay Collard. Obo Mercier's performance against Stevie Ray really shows how technical he is and how smart his game planning is. Now you can see this shin bar right across the calf. That's going to really do a lot of damage to that lead leg of Stevie Ray. And you can see the bruising straight away. Each time he kicks him, he takes him off his legs and he encourages him to come crashing forward into range to try and put pressure on. Look at that bruising on that lower leg of Stevie Ray. And as the kick lands, his lead leg is taken away and straight away he wants to get his own back so he closes back down into range. And this beautiful right hook that OAM sets up right on the chin of Stevie Ray You've got to think that the pressure and the damage to the lead leg is one of the reasons why he was forcing his way into range and why he wasn't able to get out of range quick enough by pushing off that damaged lead leg. With the high fight IQ and the technical ability of Aubin Mercier, he's always going to be a very difficult person to beat. If OAM has the time and the space to be able to take nibbles and chunks out of his opponent, it's going to be a very, very long night for Clay Collard. But if he's under pressure, if he's taking those big shots to the body, we might see a new champion here. Back to you, Sean. Incredible breakdown. It's so purposeful. It's so calculated with OAM. Can Clay Collar take him out of that thinking man's game? And also, how are we betting a fight like this one? Because it's such an interesting matchup. There's so many variables here. Let's go to our betting experts, Jonathan Coachman and Ian Parker, for advice on the main event. Yeah, Sean, the biggest variable is this is a five-round fight tonight for the main event. So, Ian Parker, as we look at this going into tonight, knowing it's five rounds, how do you handicap it? Coach, I look towards the over here. You know, when you have these type of styles, OAM, he's very efficient. And Clay Collard, he's just a master of chaos, the pressure. For me, this is over three and a half rounds at minus 160. I think this fight goes all five. Both guys are durable, hard to put away. Six of eight for Clay Collard, six of nine for OAM by decision in the PFL. Over three and a half rounds, that's our play for the main event. And I love it. And Sean, coming up in our next fight, we have Braga as part of our Parker's Parlay if people were watching earlier. So we're rooting for that next. Sean, back to you. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Ian. All right, that's how you're supposed to bet the main event, according to our experts. We're all driving towards OAM at Cassius Clay Collard in a main event tonight. But the title fights, the first title fight of six tonight, that's coming up next. To become champion in the PFL, you must master moment after moment. Center of the smart cage they go. Four fights in eight months. The toughest test in MMA. Now, the journey is almost complete. I want to win it for him so bad. So there to the championship! The work nearly done for the biggest night in MMA. A one million dollar opportunity. Six title fights for six million dollars. We've seen this event change lives. Larissa Pacheco, one of the biggest upsets in our sport. Again, 12 fighters are on the brink of history. After moments of precision, strength, creative genius, and unwavering fortitude, who will find that final flash of brilliance? The Canadian who learned from the best before carving his own name into the record books. Or the small town kid from Utah, whose ferocity in the cage is only rivaled by his toughness out of it. The six foot eight Brazilian with uncommon power and agility. Or the combat sambo champ with clinical finishing talent. And that's just two of six world title fights on this massive night. Who will make this their moment with everything on the line? This is what they've worked for. This is what they've fought for. This is the 2023 PFL World Championship. Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, is our host for the 2023 PFL World Championship. The richest night in mixed martial arts, the biggest night with six world title bouts, six $1 million checks to be handed out. 
the first of which happens right now. Featherweight Championship. Five five-minute rounds brought to you by the United States Air Force Reserve, Gabriel Braga and Jesus Pinedo. Making their way to the PFL Smart Cage, fighting out to the blue corner, Jesus Pinedo. Jesus Pinedo, I mean this as a compliment, came out of nowhere to surprise people in the 2023 season. His first regular season bout was against Gabriel Braga. A razor thin margin. He lost that by split decision. And after he needed a finish to make the playoffs, he needed a big time finish and a huge upset because he was squaring off against last year's champion, Brendan Lachnane. And what did Jesus Pinedo do but earn himself a round one knockout? Big knee, follow up punches, burst into the playoffs. Everyone was surprised. And then he scores a TKO over Bubba Badman Jenkins to earn his spot in this championship. So it's not just that he's here, it's who he beat to get here for an opportunity to be the first major mixed martial arts champion from Peru. And there's the Peruvian watch party in Lima. And everything he does, Sean, I mean, he, he walks out angry, he talks angry, he <laughs> fights angry. This kid means business. He's angry at all of us for not giving him the credit that he deserved right. when he arrived in the PFL. Is he angry at Gabriel Braga for standing in his way tonight? We're about to find out. And in the red corner, Gabriel Braga. Gabriel Braga, a proud son of a fighting father. Diego Braga raised his son in the gym. And that son has turned into an undefeated prospect. He's 25 years old. He has yet to taste defeat in his pro mixed martial arts career. He started his year on our Challenger Series. So the toughest test in mixed martial arts, a season for Gabriel Braga, he tacked a fight onto the beginning of that. Yeah, and we can't forget, he was an alternate coming in. Right, and then he actually got the opportunity against Pinedo in his first fight. That was last minute. Was able to pull it off, and it's just, we've just seen him get better and better, just like Pinedo. It's unbelievable what this young man has accomplished. 25 years of age and a limitless bright future for him, especially if he could get a world title tonight. Tail the tape for this featherweight championship brought to you by the United States Air Force Reserve. Gabriel Braga, only 25 years old. Jesus Pinedo, still just 27. Pinedo is two inches taller. Both men weighed in at the limit of 145 pounds. The reach advantage on the arm favors the Peruvian. 40 inch measurement on both men's legs. All right, my keys to victory for Braga, the Brazilian. It's all about his counter striking and how composed he could be throughout this fight. For Pinedo, he's at his best when he's bringing that forward pressure, when he's bringing that high pace. It's also going to get very interesting once we get into the championship rounds because we have not seen Pinedo get tired. Andy Shepard gets us going. Ladies and gentlemen, the following is a seven-figure fight. Five rounds of action for the PFL Featherweight World Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He is a striking specialist and stands 5 feet 11 inches tall. He weighed in officially at 145 pounds. And in 29 professional fights, has earned a record of 22 wins and six losses and a single draw. Fighting out of Lima, Peru, El Mundo, Jesus Pinedo. And 
his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He is a striking specialist and stands five feet nine inches tall. He weighed it officially at 144 and one half pounds and holds a perfect professional record of 12 victories and not a single defeat. Fighting out of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Your referee and judge, Fernando Yamazaki. Five five minute rounds. The first fight was a treat. Are you ready? Are you ready? Come on! We are underway with Gabriel Braga in the green, Jesus Pinedo in the black and gray. Braga starts out the fight with the leg kick. That was crucial early in their first fight this year. See if he goes right back to that calf. He's looking for it. You wonder, Randy, how much it changes the calculus for both of these guys because they fought hard in the first fight to a near draw, quite frankly. It was a razor-thin split decision, and that was three rounds. So you know you've got to fight. You've got to put in the work as Patricio Pitbull looks on. Bellator featherweight champion, maybe his future opponent for a... PFL champ versus Bellator champ card is right here. Yeah, this is one of those instances where the guy who won the first fight doesn't necessarily get, you know, have the onus of figuring out what the changes were because the fight was that close. It was that tough. Tornado trying to dial in that long left hand. High kick is blocked there by Gabriel Braga. Pinedo picking up that lead leg, trying not to suffer any of those calf kicks. Stalking flat-footed approach here for Gabriel Braga. This is with the front kick to the face. And this is how Braga was able to control the first round in their first fight. He was backing up Pinedo. Pinedo now trying to do less of backing up, trying to blitz here. That's when he's at his best, when he's bringing that forward pressure. Braga looking for those jabbing, that stabbing style kick down the middle. Nice right hand counter from Braga. Through that one moving backwards, which is something that you'll see him do. One, two, sharp one there from Jesus Pinedo. Yeah, his hooks are extremely dangerous. And that's also crucial for Pinedo. He doesn't just throw one strike. When he's throwing combinations, that's when he hurts you. Drives a left hand to the body. Oh, right hand there from Gabriel Braga. Pinedo put his toughness on display many times already in his fight career. 27 years of age as he grabs the dirty boxing for the briefest of seconds and already 30 pro fights. And Braga is just constantly switching his stances. It's what makes him so tough to compete against early in fights. He always gets off to a great start because it's tough to get a handle on what he's doing and how he's doing. It keeps you confused every time yeah. he switches leads. You don't know what's coming, which side is coming from. There, Jesus Pinedo countered the leg kick with another left hand. Still hasn't found a clean landing spot for it. And there's another blitz. Right hook landed over the left ear of Gabriel Braga. And Pinedo starting to find his range now, guys. Back to the low calf kick goes Gabriel Braga. And Braga bleeding out of his nose a little bit. Yeah, he took a couple of those hooks. Yep. He came right through the cover. But Braga, Pinedo just wades in and lets him fly. High kick glances off the right arm. And Braga just stays in there, just keeps his hands up, stays very composed in that pocket. And that is a dangerous place to be against someone like Jesus Pinedo. Braga so composed, even in these firefights, lying the level of experience. Obviously, he's been in the gym his whole life. Only this is 13th pro fight. Doesn't fight like anyone who's near being a beginner. 
That Chiana Pinedo is unbelievable. <laughs> it's crazy. He takes the cleanest shots and just unfazed. He sure does. Well, one of the things that makes him so dangerous is just his disregard for what his opponents are capable of. We saw him take what Brendan Lochmain had to offer and just wade through it, land the big knee because of it. Pinedo's got to be careful after he lands that combination. He drops his hands and keeps that chin up a little high, and Braga is very sharp with his counter striking. See if Braga takes advantage of it. And about the time everybody thought Pinedo was a fluke, he wades to the castle of Bubba Jenkins. And Bubba just had no answer for it. Couldn't stick with it. Final few seconds. Braga tries to roll out of the control. Pinedo oh, offers two yeah. from the top. We got a pit bull sitting cage side, brought his Bellator belt with him. Patricio is the Bellator featherweight champion. Long been one of the best 145 pounders oh. Oh. in the world. Oh. Coming in 2024, Bellator champs versus PFL Back champs. In Back in the corner. Back in the corner. Will the old dog Back. be welcoming a young pup in a contest there? Are you 25 ready? versus Are you 27. Ready? Come on. That's the ages of Gabriel Braga in the green and Jesus Pinedo in the black and gray. Well, this is why I was so excited to watch these guys go at it for a second time. Pick it up right where they left off. What a round one for both men. Dan Hardy, how did you see round one? I thought that was a really strong round for Pinedo. Of course, Braga is controlling the center with a nice calm guard, but there are shots getting through and you can see Pinedo's staying mobile and not allowing his legs to be eaten up in the same way that he did. And you've got to think, a busted nose for 25 minutes is going to affect Braga's breathing. That's the third time that we've seen Jesus Pinedo attempt that high kick, and each time Braga blocks it with a single arm, that can also do a bunch of damage. We've seen broken forearms, broken wrists. Yeah, that nice stick fracture is no joke. I've been on the wrong end of one of those. There it is again from Pinedo. This time offers a right hand and a straight left behind it. Well, Pinedo staying much busier here, showing much better lateral movement as well. Red Okamoto is cage side with Patricio Pitbull. Yeah, thank you, Sean. And this is a lot of fun tonight, right? We have the Bellator champions, some of them in the house watching these fights. And uh, Patricio, welcome into the PFL. What have you uh, What have you thought about the event and then also this uh, this fight right now? Thank you very much. I am very excited. Just here seeing who is going to be the champ. And I'm going to face it. You are going to face the winner of this fight, yeah? I believe so. How do you feel about it if it's Braga, though? You two have a, uh, a history together, do you not? Oh, uh, yeah. His father is my friend. He's also my friend, but we are professional. We are gonna make a, a, a great fight for everyone. Is this, Patricio, how, how much do you welcome this? This this new challenge of PFL versus Bellator, a little bit of a storyline here coming in. How much do you really enjoy that development? All my life I was a uh, dream uh, as a cross promotion, and now it's happened. I fought against the rising champion, I beat him. Now I'm gonna beat the PFL champion. I'll let you enjoy the uh, the rest of the fight. Thank you, Patricio. Thanks, Brett. Thank you, Pitbull. Flurries here in the second round, halfway through. Two of a possible five. Featherweight championship, $1 million on the line as Gabriel Braga and Jesus Pinedo try and figure out which of these rising South American stars is the future of the PFL's featherweight division. Much more footwork for Pinedo this time yes. around. The circling, picking his times to enter, and when he enters, he lets four or five punches go, and then gets back out and starts circling again. He's not getting his legs chewed up with those low leg kicks, and you see the blood coming out of the nose and mouth of Gabriel Braga. 
I'm so impressed with Braga's composure. Even as he's watching combinations come toward him, yep. it's just a subtle movement, and he's making Pinedo miss a lot. And, of course, Pinedo is the more active striker here. If you miss a bunch of punches for five rounds, it can wear on the gas tank. No indication that that's going to be a problem for either man so far, though. There he is doing that again and just blocking a lot of those punches. And that can be very annoying. Punching elbows, punching the top of the head. But even with that defensive success of Gabriel Braga on several combinations, look at the damage that's already shown. I mean, Jesus Pinedo is throwing so much and he's still landing. Braga bleeding from both nostrils, a little mouse developing around his left eye. And Jesus Pinedo now moving around the outside of the smart cage. Trying to lead this dance with his footwork. It's hard to stop a nosebleed once it starts. Nice flurry here from Pinedo. Yeah, those, are, those are kind of skimming off the forearms and elbows, I feel, though. He's staying busy. He's landing little shots, but certainly would be landing a lot harder if those elbows weren't up. The left hand landed there at the finish for Pinedo, and Braga says, I'll take your leg out from under you. Now switching the stances, Jesus Pinedo's got to protect those calves. Yeah, he's attacking the other leg now, is Braga. Pinedo, though, still staying busy, and like Randy said, he's moving much better. Now going for a knee, which is smart to do against the shell. Yeah, come up the middle, split yep. that shell, and, and land that big knee. And he's long enough to do that. Yes. Ooh, big body nice kick body there. kick, yeah. Incredibly technical striking battle so far. I haven't seen a takedown attempt yet. Good scooping uppercut from Pinedo. Final few seconds of round number two. Round three to come on ESPN+. Plus. There's the corner of Gabriel Braga. The drinks, the ice. Potentially 15 more minutes to decide who the PFL featherweight champion will be. Well, here's a nice combination. There's a knee upstairs, just kind of misses. Nice left hook that lands right on the nose again of Braga. Gabriel Braga in the green, Are you ready? Jesus Pinedo Are you ready? in the gray. Come Round on. three begins. <laughs> Dan Hardy, how have you scored rounds one and two? I think this has been a fascinating match, and even though uh, Pinedo is he's able to move and stay off that lead leg, uh, you know, stay the damage off the lead leg. We're still starting to see some bruising now, and I do feel like Braga is going to have to start picking his pace up. I, I have Pinedo winning uh, on both on all the scorecards right now. I feel like he's done great work. I feel like he's done damage that's mattered, even though he's not controlling the center. I feel like he's walking Braga onto stuff. For me, Braga's got to win these next three rounds. Braga oh, man! He's in Pinedo flurrying and it's waved off! What? Wow. Pinedo started landing a flurry. He certainly had hurt Braga at least once. I think that when you have a championship fight, you gotta let it go a little bit longer, in my opinion. Kenny. I thought it was a tad early. I agree with that, Kenny. You wanna make sure, put an exclamation point on that when there's so much at stake. He was defending himself. He, he had his arms up. He wasn't just kind of dropping and kind of flailing. He was still trying to defend himself. I think you gotta give the fight the benefit of the doubt there. But uh, man, what a fight while it lasted. Jesus Pinedo was just on fire tonight. 
made the proper adjustments coming on, coming into the rematch. And wow, the power really was the difference, guys. Yeah. Braga was landing some great combinations, just didn't have that same sting that, that his work, that had. circling and make him chase a little bit, yeah. try to cut you off, and then step in and let those flurries go. That paid off dividends for yeah. him, and a much different way to approach him than he did in the first fight. Yeah. Jesus Pinedo hands Gabriel Braga his first career loss. Pinedo will be the first Peruvian champion in the major world of mixed martial arts. There's the left that started it. Yeah, just a beautiful shovel hook. Got on the inside of Braga's right hook. It was just a shorter shot to the face, and that's why it landed first. Pinedo, just a massive featherweight. There's that flying knee we were talking about, Randy. Yep. Split that guard, split that shell of Braga, and that flurry kind of dipping down the knees of Braga. Boom, there's that knee that started it. There's that flurry. Fernando Yamasaki jumps into the middle. Braga not happy about it. He was certainly in trouble. But again, you don't want to take away from what Pinedo did here tonight. What a performance. One million dollars and a gold belt now belong to Jesus Pinedo, your 2023 PFL featherweight champion. There's your Cajunomic Stats Bundle presented by GEICO. The AI score gives you a score of 1 to 100 in every round based on the effectiveness of techniques against an opponent. Gabriel Braga with the slight edge in round one. Jesus Pinedo with a growing edge in round number two. And the only way to score perfect on the 1 to 100 scale is to get a finish inside the round. Jesus Pinedo did just that for the biggest win of his mixed martial arts career. Andy Shepard makes it official. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Fernando Yamazaki calls a halt to the action at 58 seconds of round number three, declaring your winner via TKO. And 2023 PFL featherweight one champion, Jesus Pinedo! It's a shame that the performance of Jesus Pinedo and what he did tonight, the work he put in to get here, people are going to distract, be distracted from that because of the questionable early stoppage. But what he did was what he needed to do to win. And he's done that every match this season. Yep. He lost a very close split against Braga in the opener for the season and then came back very, very strong. Nobody gave him a chance against Brendan Lochning or Bubba Jenkins, and he shined in those moments. And look at that. Deal. A million dollars. The check presented from the CEO, Pete Murray, a visionary leader in mixed martial arts who has now purchased Bellator created a massive roster of world-class fighters as we look at this one more time the end of the fight that switch flying knee i mean pinedo is just a nasty customer just relentless there makes you wonder how brendan and, and bubba jenkins feel about this right now probably a little better about yeah, it i would think yeah better about it i mean making history there you know a million dollars is million American dollars is going to go a long way in Peru. What an accomplishment. What an achievement. Dan Hardy. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with your winner. Our 2023 PFL featherweight champion, my friend. What an incredible year you have had. So many wins, so many impressive performances. Just tell me what you're feeling right now. Eso, ¿cómo te sientes? Después de todo este año, de toda esta temporada de PFL, ¿qué está en tu mente en este momento? Eh, primero, mucha euforia, ¿no? mucha alegría. Y yo estaba preparado para este momento mentalmente. Yo sabía que este momento iba a llegar cuando empecé el torneo al principio de año. Estaba 100% seguro que iba a ser el campeón del mundo. Yo siempre lo dije. Esto es lo que quería, esto es lo que buscaba. Buscábamos la gloria, el cinturón y la historia para mi país. 
this is what I've been looking for. I knew I could get to this moment with all the training with uh, my head coach. And uh, yeah, this is what I've been looking for, the glory for my country. Now, this was a rematch. How much did you study the last fight? How much did you and your coach work on game plan to make sure this was a different performance? ¿Qué tanto trabajaste con tu coach y con tu escuela porque sabías que esta era una revancha? ¿Qué tanto se prepararon para ese momento, para este momento en específico? Eh, eh, más que un coach, para empezar, es como un segundo padre para mí. Eh, venimos trabajando no solamente este campamento, sino muchos años atrás, eh, esperando este momento. No nos importaba, en verdad, quién está al frente. Sea revancha o no sea revancha, esta pelea íbamos a venir a destruir y a llevarnos el cinturón a casa. A second, my coach is like a second father to me. Uh, we didn't care who was standing in front, in front of us uh, tonight. We were going to take that win. And you've had incredible support in the arena tonight, back home in Peru. What's the message to your fans? Tienes, un, tienes mucho, mucha gente que te apoya en casa. Tienes un gran equipo. ¿Cuál es, cuál es tu mensaje para la gente que te está viendo en casa hoy? Eh, el mensaje que le puedo decir es que siempre se esfuercen, ¿no? Más que todo que siempre se esfuercen, nunca dejen de soñar y al final algún día tarde o temprano va a llegar, ¿no? Como ahora yo espero volver a casa, ver la sonrisa de mi padre, de mi familia, de todo mi equipo y demostrarle a todo un país que los sueños están para cumplirse. With with effort everything is possible. I'm eager to go home and see my father smile, my family smile, everybody back home. They know it's possible now. I prove it tonight. Now, you are the 2023 champion. PFL have just purchased Bellator, you can see over there, standing in the doorway. Pitbull, will you come and join us, my friend? Potentially your first fight of the next year is against the Bellator champion, Patricio Pitbull. Fixing his hair. How about that? <laughs> What and you're that's witnessing what here, folks, is a out. global MMA powerhouse coming together, champion versus oh, champion. Oh. You will see these fights in 2024. What a battle that is going to be. Pippo looks there. like he's about to bite, man. This is, uh, <laughs> uh, this is what we're looking for. There's a little intensity there. 2024, champion versus champion. Jesus Pinedo takes home the first belt of six to be handed out this evening in Washington, D.C. at the Anthem. The first $1 million check. And there it is, as promised. PFL champs and Bellator champs. Jesus Pinedo's life is changed forever. When Impa Kasanga Nai takes on Josh Silvera, he has to use his speed and his footwork to keep this fight in the ranges that suit him best. On the outside, Josh Silvera's got an excellent kicking game, and if Kasanga Nai plays this at range, he's gonna be dealing with that all night. But then if he closes range too fast, we know what Josh Silvera is wrestling and jiu-jitsu is like. And oh, yeah. tight, there's attack. Wow. Quick points for Josh Silvera. For Kasanga Nai, he has to find that sweet spot, that Goldilocks zone, where he's right inside the kicking range, using his hand speed and his punching power, as well as his footwork, to stay out of the clinch, but stay in that pressure zone. Well, something else I need, but... Oh! oh! His hand speed and his power will make the difference in this fight. But if he gets caught on the outside or tied up on the inside or on the floor, that's going to make for a very long night. Clay Collard stylistically is very, very different to his opponent, Olivier Albon Mercier. The more pressure, the more aggression, and the more dirty boxing that we get from Collard, the more difficult it's going to be for OAM to try and pace this fight out and slow it down into his game plan. Speed advantage. Oh, oh right hand drop. Stevie Ray. We know that Olivier Albon Mercier is a very calculated fighter. He's going to want to break his fighter down slowly and not take too many risks. He's very strong and physical. So if he's able to grab Clay Collard and put him on the floor, that's going to slow the fight down in ways that Clay Collard can't allow to happen. 
He has to maintain pressure. He has to fight at a high work rate. And certain things that Collard does really well are going to help. Work into the body, sap in the gas tank of OAM, and then maybe starting to bring his arms down so he can open up those head targets. Pressure and pace and dirty boxing are the keys for Clay Collard. He doesn't want to play a technical game and he doesn't really want to be grappling with someone like OAM. Wear him out with fast boxing combinations and pressure up against the fence. Head position, make this untidy and force OAM to fight at a pace that makes him uncomfortable. And still to come tonight, this, our pay-per-view championship special. Five more title fights and two showcase bouts featuring the return of not one, but two champions who have not two belts, but four belts between them. Ray Cooper the third, welcoming Derek Brunson to the PFL. Kayla Harrison taking on Aspen Ladd, a light heavyweight world championship with $1 million on the line. A welterweight world championship between two guys who are previous champions. Larissa Pacheco chasing history, trying to get a women's featherweight belt to go along with her women's lightweight belt against Marina Moknakina. Dennis Goldsov and Hayna Fajera in the largest PFL fight we have ever had. This one for the strap at a million dollars. And of course, the main event, Olivia Alban Messier and Cassius Clay Collard. This is a reminder of how we got to our lightweight final. Clay Collard, the one seed, Shane Burgos, the four, an incredible fight of the year candidate, yielded the result of Collard moving on to the final. OAM remains undefeated inside the PFL Smart Cage against Bruno Miranda, finishing that one by TKO. That's up your one versus two. Olivia Albert Messier looking to go back to back. Pounding away at Bruno Miranda. Dan Rigliano taking a close look, and he wins it all. I think this year I'm truly the best Olivia I ever was. Oh yeah, I'm really looking confident on the feet. I think I'm one of the best in the world right now. I'm not Mr. Perfect. I'm the guy with all the odds stacked against me. Stevie Ray hurts. It traveled down. Oh. I've been the underdog this whole season, last season and the season before that. I think I was good last year, but I think this year it's, uh, it's something even better. Oh! Oh, yeah, he can train with GSP. He can have the big gym and big fancy coach and whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, I'm more tactical than him. And, uh, I think he's going to be careful. Or is he going to be like the crazy clay like he was in his last fight? I don't know. Give me two more rounds of this. Only five minutes of Cassius Clay Collar, baby. Let's go. An absolutely incredible main event. OAM chasing a second straight championship. Clay Collard hoping that the third time is the charm for him here in his third PFL season. Let's start with the Canadian gangster. Kenny, I'm curious. He said in the piece, this is the best Olivier there ever has been. Do you think that's true? I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, wins, and he's been undefeated here in the PFL, lead to confidence. When you're a champion, that leads to validation. And with both, those, both, both of those things happening with OAM, we're just seeing him better and better. He was always smart. He's always been very strategic. He was good everywhere. But now we're seeing this killer instinct. And he can finish you on the feet. He can finish you on the ground before he would kind of get position on you. Um, and that was kind of the knock on OAM. That is not the case now. He is a very exciting fighter, very intelligent fighter. He can finish you anyways. Well, he's absolutely incredible when it comes to the game plan and implementing the game plan. And opposite him in this world title fight will be a guy who shoots from the hip. Clay Collard has every bit of skill that Olivier Alban Mercier does. He just likes to come in with a lot more reckless abandon, I think. The most exciting fighter in the sport right now, for my money, 
does he have what it takes to knock off the Canadian gangster? I just love interviewing this guy. I mean, he comes <laughs> out, he says, well, I just hope he doesn't try to be a Canadian backpack. <laughs> and we've, we've, we've seen Olivier Aubin Mercier do this against Shane Burgos. He took his back position. He did exactly what he needed to do to win that fight. Obviously, Clay Collar's task is to get him outside of that comfort zone. Use that striking, that world-class boxing. While everybody else was locked up and locked down in 2020, this guy was having professional boxing matches and stirring up the boxing world. His striking is the best we've seen in the sport. And he's a well-rounded fighter. He's moved to Utah now. He's sharpened up his wrestling. He's got a well-rounded game. There he is against Show Bur Shane Burgos. 193 punches thrown in that fight. Unbelievable. Strap him on tight with Clay Collard. Yeah, Collard is always exciting when we've got 15 minutes of Clay Collard. What's it going to look like with <laughs> 25, potentially, against the Canadian gangster, who, again, looking to go back-to-back. -back. That is the main event for a reason. And how about the co-main event? Heavyweight World Championship. Dennis Goldsoff has been dominant and clinical and quite frankly, very scary all year. He earned the one seed on back to back to back finishes. He's here in the championship final. A lot of people expected that to be the case when this season began. He'll be facing off for once in his career against someone who's taller than him, larger than him, heavier than him in Hena Fajera, who is maybe the best heavyweight athlete in the sport of mixed martial arts right now. A diferença do Renan de 2022 para 2023, com certeza mais experiente, né? С первого сезона в PFL, но, к сожалению, в первом сезоне, по большому счету, я считаю себя частью ветераном. В какой-то веке надо все-таки побеждать и доказывать, что наша школа лучше. Ser protagonista desse show aí vai ser uma realização, vai ser maravilhoso. Uma expectativa muito boa. Выше рост, длиннее руки и по мышцам, конечно же, он сильнее будет. Все имеют свои минусы, надо просто ими воспользоваться. A huge matchup, literally and figuratively. Let's start with the one seed, Dennis Goldsoff. He's got all the skills necessary. Great grappler, great striker, incredible physical specimen. Is this a year for Dennis? Well, I think, frankly, most of us expected to see him in the championship final long before this. He's got that kind of skill set. Probably the best jab in our sport across the board. The footwork, the shot selection, the ground skills, the ground and pound, the submission, it's all there. Between visa problems and minor issues, he just hasn't been there, and he's put himself in this position with first round finishes all year long to take the number one seat. This guy is on point, and I think this year he's going to be a champ final. Dennis Koltsov is a combat sambo world champion. He's got more than 40 professional mixed martial arts bouts. And here's Hainan Fajera. About a quarter of that experience just yeah. in the sport of MMA, not even to mention the sambo that Goldsov has. So how do you overcome something like that if you're Hainan Fajera? Well, I think he's doing all the right things. First of all, making that move over to American top team. We've seen uh, more substance to his striking. He's more fundamentally sound. He's not throwing himself out of position. He's setting things up. We're seeing more subtlety with how he's trapping you into the kind of knockouts that he's throwing out there. So he definitely seems like a more mature version, no question about it. I think the only question remains is, can he stop the takedowns? And that's going to be a big question here against Goldsoft. But you look at that athleticism, and he's got the body of an NBA power forward. He's got the athleticism of, of an NFL quarterback. He's an absolute first. He's an <laughs> unbelievable monster yeah. of a human being. Does he now have, with that new training camp, the skills he needs to negate what Dennis Goldsoff is going to try and do? We find out tonight with $1 million on the line. And leading into that heavyweight co-main event will be a potentially history-making fight. Larissa Pacheco, last year pulled off a huge upset beat Kayla Harrison for 155 pound belt. Now she's trying to do it again at 145 against Marina Moknakina. Pacheco's looked dominant. Moknakina's looked incredible as well. Let's talk about Larissa Pacheco first. The speed, the power, the grappling that we don't see all that often. 
Does she do it? We Does she become a two division champ? We haven't really seen anybody forced to the grapple except for Kayla Harrison, honestly. But the striking is unbelievable. The transformation, both physically, tactically, technically, under the last six years that she's undertaken has been remarkable. More first round knockouts than anybody in the PFL roster, males and females included. She's just been on a tear. Nobody's been able to stand in the first round with her for two seasons now. It's been pretty remarkable to see that she's on track to make history in the PFL and be the first two-way class champion. And I think important to note, she won a million bucks last year in the upset over Kayla. She reinvested it in herself and dropped down 145 pounds the right way. Let's talk about Marina Moknakina. She says, Larissa did it last year. I can do it this year. Pull off a huge upset. Can't she do it? Yeah, listen, I, I think I, I like her mindset. She's very stoic in her approach. She's been training extremely hard, been training with Rob Wallace, really one of the best male bantamweights in the world. She has an excellent grappling game. I think that's going to be the key to victory here is to get that takedown. She's very good with her submissions, whether she's attacking your arm or your legs. She's not giving Pacheco too much respect. And I think that is critical when you're facing a dominant champion like Pacheco. Could be a legacy defining moment for Larissa Pacheco if it goes her way. Could be a career defining moment for Marina Malknakina if she can pull off a victory over a world ranked competitor like Larissa Pacheco. The stakes are incredibly high for both of these women as they are for all of our champions or I should say hopeful champions. ESPN Plus pay-per-view exclusively. That's the only way you can watch these fights. The return of Ray Cooper III, the return of Kayla Harrison, and five world championship $1 million title bouts. Impaka Sunganai, Magomed Magomed Karamov, and Derek Brunson are all blue corner favorites. You do not want to miss out on the incredible action still to come on ESPN pay-per-view. Randy, he's the, he hasn't missed any PFL championship. <laughs> I haven't missed the one yet. <laughs> Kenny Florian, last year, these title fights, card of the year, incredible. Back and forth action. I'm expecting the same tonight. Absolutely, you gotta buy the pay-per-view. Don't be that guy. Last year's card was amazing. This one's gonna be even better. A global MMA powerhouse, Bellator and PFL, it's championship night. To become champion in the PFL, you must master moment after moment. Center of the smart cage they go. Four fights in eight months. The toughest test in MMA. Now, the journey is almost complete. I want to win it for him so bad. So they're into the championship! The work nearly done for the biggest night in MMA. One million dollar opportunity. Six title fights for six million dollars. We've seen this event change lives. Larissa Pacheco, one of the biggest upsets in our sport. Again, 12 fighters are on the brink of history. After moments of precision, strength, creative genius, and unwavering fortitude, who will find that final flash of brilliance? The Canadian who learned from the best before carving his own name into the record books. Or the small town kid from Utah, whose ferocity in the cage is only rivaled by his toughness out of it. The six foot eight Brazilian with uncommon power and agility. Or the combat Sambo champ with clinical finishing talent. And that's just two of six world title fights on this massive night. Who will make this their moment with everything on the line? This is what they've worked for. This is what they've fought for. This is the 2023 PFL World Championship. The biggest night in mixed martial arts. The PFL World Championship in 2023, brought to you by Celsius. Our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., hosting us 
for an incredible pay-per-view card. Honest Abe would honestly tell you to buy the pay-per-view. <laughs> We're here at the Anthem with five more title bouts to be decided. An incredible showcase bouts, the return of Ray Cooper, the return of Kayla Harrison, Derek Brunson's debut. Fighters are here in the building, getting ready for a million dollar opportunity. There's Sada Boussi, last year's welterweight champion. He's been around the PFL since the first season. Started as a middleweight, moved down to welterweight, and last year finally took home gold. His opponent, Magomed Magomed Karimov, has also been around since the very beginning of the PFL. He was the season one champion back in 2018. He was the runner up in 2021. And now he's got his eyes on a second belt and a second $1 million check. Impica Sunganai juggling it all. The man started his year on our Challenger Series. This is his fifth fight of 2023. His first championship appearance, he'll square off in a 205 pound contest against Josh Silvera. And a two time women's champion here in the PFL, Kayla Harrison makes her return after a year away from the smart cage. Refocused, reinvented, and hungry. We already handed out one title bout, one title belt. Gabriel Braga, Jesus Pinedo in a rematch from the regular season earlier this year. Pinedo with the pressure, started landing that left hand, wore the damage on his lead leg, and then unleashed a left hand, a right hand, a switch flying knee. That scooping hook, beginning of the end as Pinedo flurries his way to a $1 million championship victory and becomes the first Peruvian mixed martial arts champion on the world stage. $1 million for the young man out of Lima. There's the anthem and the smart cage in our gorgeous set. Five more world title bouts. Still to come on our pay-per-view card. Sean O'Connell, Kenny Florian, Randy Couture. Before we get to the title bouts, let's talk about some previous title holders coming back after some time away. Kayla Harrison. At one point, she looked absolutely unbeatable. Yep. She feels like she had to take some time away after the loss to Larissa Pacheco and find that version of Kayla again. She said, actually, I'm better now. What Kayla did was impress me with championship spirit. The championship spirit is someone that deals with the adversity of a loss. She picks herself back up. She seemed more calm, more focused, more comfortable with who she is. That 10 months she took off was something she needed desperately. She's been doing two a day since she was 10 years old. She said, I needed to find myself. I needed to figure out who I am. Big thing for her was hearing from her kids after that loss. Oh, mom, this was really cool. They were fine. And she knew that her family was okay. They weren't going anywhere. They loved her for just who she was. And that's put her in the right mindset. I think we're going to see a new Kayla Harrison, even more formidable. Make no mistake, Kayla Harrison, the same killer competitor. She's just happier now, which is quite <laughs> frankly terrifying. <laughs> now let's talk about Ray Cooper the third. I can never tell if this guy's happy, but I know he's not happy with the situation he's in tonight. Coming back after a year away, taking on a very tough Derek Brunson. He's going up in weight. He wants to be a middleweight now, but he missed the weight. A cantankerous Ray Cooper the third. <laughs> yeah, I think I only think Ray Cooper's happy when he's out there knocking guys out. And he's back and he has an opportunity to do that as a very tough opponent in Derek Brunson. But he also reminds me of another great Hawaiian fighter, BJ Penn. Just though the way that he comes out, the energy that he brings, it's that break your face kind of energy. He's he's out there to hurt you, and I love watching him fight. One of the most exciting fighters on the planet. Yeah. When he's at his best, Ray Cooper III is looking to separate you from your consciousness. He will open the card against the debuting, for many years now, world-ranked middleweight Derek Brunson, who's making his PFL debut. And all of the title bouts, all of these great showcase opportunities are against the backdrop of some of the biggest news to break in the sport of mixed martial arts that I can remember. This week, PFL finalized the purchase of Bellator. 
PFL plus Bellator merging to create an MMA powerhouse on the global scene. And the first order of business is to promise this, PFL champions versus Bellator champions in 2024. Enough talking, let's get to the fighting. This showcase bout is now at a catch weight of 187 pounds because of the missed weight. Ray Cooper III makes his return to the smart cage against the debuting Derek Brunson. And this is brought to you by our new apparel partner, Takedown. Making their way to the PFL smart cage, fighting out of the blue corner, Derek Brunson. Not just Derek Brunson, but blonde Brunson walking out to the smart cage for the first time. <laughs> Kenny Florin, I think you said that might be his highest form. It is. I think it's his most dangerous form for sure. He looks real happy walking out to the cage. I think that is crucial for a fighter. He's leaner and meaner than we saw him in his most recent UFC bout. Yep. In incredible shape coming into this one. He addressed the gas tank issue, and he came to the PFL with a message about what the fans can expect from him as a newcomer. What the fans should expect to see when I'm in a smart cage is going out there being dominant, you know, controlling the fight, um, being good wherever the fight takes place, and looking to get the finish. You know, I'm a really good grappler, got pretty good striking. Uh, the cardio has improved really good. I'm putting a lot of road work in, so I think you see a guy that looks to come out there and bring it and finish the fight. And in the red corner, Ray Cooper the third. Ray Cooper the third, his brothers in his corner. They are his primary training partners. Most PFL finishes all time. Proud representative of Pearl City, Hawaii, and a two-time welterweight champion inside of the Smart Cage. He's been away from the Smart Cage all year long, and in that time, failed to find anything that provides the same rush that he gets from fighting. Every day, that's the only thing that I love to do, and there's nothing else that can that can match that. I try to do a lot of things that can match fighting, but there's nothing, there's nothing that can scratch that itch. I'm just really excited to just get back there and fight. There's the watch party back in Pearl City. The extended Cooper family and friend clan. Tale of the tape for this one brought to you by Takedown. Ray Cooper the third, 30 years of age. Derek Brunson is nine years older. He is also four, much taller, a lot taller. He is a pound lighter for this one, Ray Cooper at 187. And you can see the reach advantage on the arms for Derek Brunson, seven inches. On the legs, it's three. All right, let's go to the keys to victory here for Ray Cooper the third. He needs to get on the inside, set up those hooks, and he needs to back Brunson up in this fight for Brunson. He needs to keep Cooper on the outside, use those long-range weapons, push the pace, and be sharp with his takedown game. Andy Shepard to start us off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the anthem here in Washington, D.C. And welcome to the PFL World Championship. The following contest is a special showcase bout. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He is a wrestling specialist and stands six feet one in inches tall. He weighed in officially at 185 and three quarter pounds. In his 32 fight career, he has built a record of 23 wins and nine losses. 11 wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Wilmington, North Carolina, Derek Blood Brunson! And his opponent fighting.
fighting out of the red corner. He is a boxing specialist and stands five feet seven inches tall. He weighed in officially at 186 and three quarter pounds in his 34 fight career. He has built a record of 25 victories, eight defeats and one draw. 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting at a Pearl City, Hawaii. He is a two-time PFL welterweight champion, brother Ray Cooper the third. Your referee in charge, Kevin Mulholz. Black trunks for Ray Cooper the third, gray trunks for Blonde Brunson. Fight, are you ready? You ready? Back it up, back it up, back it up. Are you ready? Fight! Spinning kick attempt there from Brunson, and immediately Cooper tries to land the hook. The clinch from Brunson, body lock as he presses Cooper back against the smart cage. Johnny Eblen, the Bellator middleweight champion, looking on. You can Boy, see that Brunson's big, big. Yeah, he's huge. Well, Cooper was not even a tall welterweight, so at middleweight, he's fully accepted the fact that he will always be the shorter fighter. Well, the beauty, beautiful things about fighting, you can make your stature work for you, whether it's big or short. That, this is true, and I don't think he's going to be short on power. This guy can knock out anybody, I believe, even at 185 pounds. Coming off the cage. Now back to the center. High kick attempt there from Brunson. Oh, nice. nice jab there from Brunson after the kick. Yeah, Brunson doing a good job of using those long range weapons, that big left kick. Brunson's obviously done his homework. He knows he doesn't want this guy inside. Oh. Almost went for that knee, too. Someone with the power, Ray Cooper, the third. You got to be all the way in or all the way out if you don't want to get clipped. Yeah, Brunson just has to be careful to not overcommit on that jab because he will get countered by Cooper there. Cooper trying to feint his way in, trying to measure the distance for that right hand. Guess this fight will tell how comfortable Ray Cooper's going to be at this weight class. Oh, there it is. With the right hand, he's looking on court. Brunson avoids the damage and grabs a hold of Cooper once again. Trying again for this body lock takedown. Yep, Brunson trying to go to the back. I think this is a much better position for him to take, take Cooper down here. Ray Cooper actually has more submission victories in his career than Derek Brunson does, right there. former right Hawaiian there. state wrestling Close champion, and his brothers Blake and Makoa in his corner. Hand fight, yep. Take the time, take the time, take the time. Use that fence. I mean, you have to create power off the floor. He had one leg there, and he still does it. And he did it from about three inches away. Oh. There's another left. Short. Oh, he's in trouble. He's got in trouble. trouble. Does Cooper have the gap? Oh, oh. Stepped and took him down. Nice take what a right from Brunson, and here come the strikes from oh. the top. What a recovery by Derek Brunson. You gotta be careful enough, no elbows there. No elbows allowed in the PFL rule set. And oh, full mount. God, man, here's a full mount. Can Ray Cooper the third extricate himself from this bottom? Wow! Now it's Brunson's turn. A long time to work from the top. Left hand's coming down. Lots of time here, minute 30 left in the round. Flurries from the top here from Brunson. Ray's got to get an elbow escape and get one of those legs back. Get his legs back in this fight. That high mount is not going to last long. Yeah, I mean, he's just trying to trap the arms here at this point, try to slow Brunson down. Both men are kind of kind of winded here, but Ray Cooper certainly a more tired man in that cage right now. Referee. Brunson now really wailing away. 
Referee's looking on closely, asking for more defense from Ray Cooper the third. He's very much in danger of being stopped here by Derek Brunson. Brunson still with a full minute to work as the hammer fist come down. Now Ray's not even working to get those arms inside the legs. He's got to, yeah, he's got to go to the source. The problem, he's got to push the knee down, get his legs back in this fight. Now he's trying to scoot away, trying to strip away here now. And Brunson maybe trying to give himself a little bit of rest, changing his posture here. He's now in kind of that quarter mount, but still not really going to stop the punches from Derek Brunson at this stage of the game. He's got to control above the knee to affect the base and the, and the hips of Derek Brunson. Can Ray Cooper the third survive to the end of the round? Ten seconds left, and he's got the body lock now. He'll try and ride this one out for five more seconds. They head to the corner at the end of round one. Wow, what a round. Well, you can almost always guarantee that when Ray Cooper the third steps in there, you're going to see something you didn't expect. I need to see the knockdown punch again because he had one foot on Derek Brunson's shoulder <laughs> and the other foot. Who's six foot this. one? Look at this. How are you able to <laughs> what that kind of power? Ridiculous. But then Derek Brunson in desperation. There are those left hooks. Wow. There's just not a whole lot of people on planet Earth that can do it from a single Second leg down. like that. The standing split. Crazy. I think I saw that tiny little uppercut from Shane Carwin at one yeah. point that created enough right. power, but who else? Yeah, he's on one leg though. I mean, just nuts. Gas tanks. Potentially in question here. Ray Cooper the third spent a lot of time on the bottom. He's in the black. Derek Brunson in the gray. Trying to avoid another left hand from Cooper. Time, time, time. Good, good. Uh, little, little cup fight. check. Yeah, Ray's really trying to set up that right hand. He's trying to get Derek Brunson to overextend on that jab so he can come up over the top. Single leg attempt here from Brunson. Oh. He's able to get it onto the back of Ray Cooper the third. Now one hook in. Derek Sting, very aggressive here. Has great position. Derek looks to have recovered. He spent a, over a minute and a half in the in the mount, just pounding away. I wonder how much gas is left in Ray Cooper's tank. Yeah, I mean, getting him to carry his weight like this. This is a smart approach, smart tactic here from Derek Brunson. Brunson hanging the right arm over the neck of Ray Cooper the third, draping his weight across the back. Nothing saps the gas tank of a fighter like this wrestling. Dan Hardy, what does Cooper need to do to get off this mat? He's got to wrestle up. He's got to get back to his feet. We know where he wins this fight, right? He's, he wins it on the feet. He wins it at close range with that scary power that he's got. But in this position, he's, he's just going to get drained. And this is Derek Brunson's world here. He can stay in this position, especially when there's not enough resistance coming back. Cooper's not doing enough to escape, so Brunson can just maintain this position and wear him out. Corner of Brunson go, asking for him busy. to put his weight forward, so Cooper has to carry his weight. Now Ray should be able to get his hands in this fight and get to his feet. He's got to keep that anchor from getting in. Yeah, he had that moment. That window was there, Randy. He got in that W sit where he could protect the kitchen, keep those hooks from coming in. And he let Brunson get another hook in there. Now the cradle by Brunson. Yeah, Brunson just trying to drain the energy of Ray Cooper, trying to zap. Zap Ray Cooper here, just chipping away with shots. Johnny Evelyn looking on as Cooper gets flattened out all the way, able to build the base one more time. Brunson 
Left hand coming around the guard, landing on the ear, both sides. Ray's got to go to college wrestling mode here. That's a sing simple single leg ride. He's got to sit him on that hip, get that leg free, not give him the other hook. Hand fight and find a way to get back to his feet and get back in this fight. Right now he's committed both hooks. Took one back out. And you got to wonder about, you know, this weight class for Ray Cooper. He's taking a big challenge here, going against a big middleweight. A guy who's going to be competing, it seems like, at 205 pounds for us here in the PFL. And you know, that is just a lot of weight to overcome. Definitely more of a natural welterweight for sure. And even then, he's not the largest welterweight. Big shots now for Brunson. I don't think I've seen Ray Cooper dominated on the ground like this and out wrestled like this since he since he lost to Megamid Megamid Kirmoff in that first season. It's a serious size difference, but it's also I think a question of the the gas tank and you know when you miss weight in a weight class that's above your natural weight. It's probably an indication of inadequate conditioning coming into a fight like this. Yeah, it's certainly not a great sign. Looked like Derek Brunson was trying to set up a twister at some point. But Ray Cooper isn't really showing me that he's really trying to get out of this position. It seems like he's just kind of resting and hoping that Derek Brunson makes a big mistake. Now Brunson turning up the heat a little. Final 10 seconds. Purple will once again try and control the head, hug it tight, right out the round. We head to round three. Dominant second frame for Derek Brunson. Cooper goes back to the stool to get a big deep breath. Straight punches. Where are these straight punches? Read. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, and hold it, and throw let, let go. You can catch him now. You it's gotta catch hold. him now. Box him. It's still on the outside. Box him. Box with it. And shake. Okay? That's, that's hey, for the commission. Hey, hey, hey. Now, the the commission, one, okay? uh, hands up. Do the same thing, okay? That's what we want, baby. Take your time. We're not rushing anything. Keep that hey, chin hey, tucked. Hey. He is trying to catch you. That's all he's gonna try to do is catch. That's it. Grind on top. Relentless pressure. Make him not want to wrestle again. Great advice there from the corner of Brunson. A few more deep breaths from Ray Cooper. The third puts the mouthpiece back in. Third and final frame of this showcase bout to open our pay-per-view card. Ray Cooper the third and Derek Brunson. Five more minutes. Yeah, I think Derek's doing a great job on the wrestling front here, but I like the other piece of advice about sticking that chin up. He wants him to tuck that chin. That's going to be very important against a guy like Ray Cooper because Ray is a little bit tired, Watch but he fingers. still has fight-ending power. Cooper searching for that knockout shot there. Goes to the body. Now Brunson tries to change levels. Oh, look at this. Cooper who ends up on top. Nice little knee block by Ray Cooper to get the takedown. Sitting cage side, Johnny Eblen, the Bellator middleweight champion, is with Brett Okamoto. Yeah, thank you, Sean. And Johnny, it looks like we might have a little bit of late drama here in this fight. What have you thought so far? Uh, so far, you know, Brunson's been dominating with the wrestling, but Ray, Ray's not out of this fight, man. Uh, Ray can knock anybody out, and uh, right now Brunson's on his back trying to do fucking jujitsu, or jujitsu, and he's a wrestler, so let's see what happens. Uh, you know, Ray just made this really interesting, you know, coming out strong right now. You know, I couldn't help but notice in the second round, you kind of put your arms up a little bit. I get the sense that you would be confident against either one of these guys, but also confident against just about anybody guys. that you would walk in there with, yeah? Very confident against any opponent, man. Uh, I would love to fight Brunson. If they... If, if he wins this fight, I'd love to fight him next or Cooper. Uh, they just need to make a middleweight division for me, and uh, you know I'll be the reigning reigning champ um, for years, bro. I'm telling you. 
I'm the next big thing. Obviously, big, big news in the MMA world, PFL acquiring Bellator. What do you think of the merger? What do you think it does for your career, Johnny? I'm not sure yet. That's why I'm here. I'm here to oh. figure out the details and figure, uh, figure out the, uh, the specifics. Um, but yeah, I'm here more to, to, to cheer on my, uh, my ATT teammates and uh, to get a vibe of uh, PFL. Thank you, Johnny. Enjoy the night, guys. Derek Brunson was able to wrestle his way to a top position here after avoiding the shoulder choke attempts from Ray Cooper III. And now the gas tank really becomes a factor. Does Ray have one or two more big explosive attempts to try and get off his back? Go, give me some more. Cooper just trying to close the guard, keep himself safe. Potentially earn a stand up here. Derek Brunson is a master of this position though. He's made a career of staying busy, smothering people on top. Yeah, I mean, you can just see the preparation of Derek Brunson. He just isn't tiring. He's coming into this fight in shape. Ray Cooper making a lot of mistakes here, and you can see the volume. The difference in volume is significant. It just sticks out to me that Ray Cooper's father is not here and not in this corner, and that makes me question what's really going on there with, with Ray Cooper, honestly. I mean, how many seasons did we watch Ray Cooper come storming out of that tunnel on fire and could not wait to get in it and and he just isn't showing me that same warrior spirit that we're used to seeing him have and his dad's not in his corner that again raises some questions for me well I, I knew coming into this fight that his dad was not going to be in his corner i think that might be the first time in ray's entire career that his dad is not there had some very pressing orders of business to attend to dad obviously wants to be there had some more important matters and that really saying something when you're talking about the Cooper family. They're watching in Pearl City, and those are all knowledgeable fight fans. They know exactly what they're seeing right here. If Ray had that window there to try to scramble back to his feet just not taking it i think he's just way too tired here guys and brunson of course being that bigger guy it's a lot of weight to handle brunson's very experienced final minute of this showcase bout opening our pay-per-view card Derek brunson smothering ray cooper the third Like Ray was trying to set up an arm lock here. He's looking for an angle, unable to get it. Good job by Brunson to posture up there. Brunson will ride out this third round. Final few seconds on top for Blonde Brunson, who, barring any major surprises, will be successful in his PFL debut. So weight lifted off the shoulders of Derek Brunson there. Obviously a lot of pressure with a name like him being signed by the PFL. You can see he put in the work, the gas tank held up, and look at the volume. The ground strikes for Derek Brunson. The takedowns, even after Ray Cooper took him down to the third, able to reverse the position, get on top, finish on top. Shutout pitch for Derek Brunson in the AI score. And it does beg the question, I believe the intention with Derek Brunson to come over was to move up in weight and to fight at 205 pounds. That was before the Bellator acquisition. Sitting cage side, you've got 
for my money, the best belt, the best middleweight in the world in Johnny Eblen. I think he could beat anybody in the UFC in what anywhere in the world. Now, does that mean a star like that you build a division around? Does Derek Brunson have an opportunity now to remain at middleweight? I mean, I'd love to see it. Uh, I, I think there's a lot, still a lot of interesting matchups you can make for sure. So Brunson snatched that balancing leg out from under Ray Cooper. That was, I think, in the second round. Moved to the full mount, was in this full mount, unable to gain a, a finish in that full mount for three minutes of the second round. Cooper able to survive, get the takedown in the third, but then more of the same once Derek Brunson got on top. Andy Shepard has the official judge's decision inside of the smart cage. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judge's scorecard. The judges scored this bout 30-27, 30-25, and 30-25, all for your winner via unanimous decision, Derek Brunson! Derek Brunson. A dominant performance, Woo! two 10-8 rounds on judges' scorecards. Success. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with your winner for the Celsius post-fight interview, Blond Brunson. Welcome to the PFL, my friend. Hey, it feels good to be in the PFL. Uh, great opportunity, a lot of fighters, a lot of millionaires tonight. Feels good. And those gloves suit you. Was that the kind of fight you expected from Ray Cooper? You know he's got that scary power, but you were A lot of top guys, former... Uh, UFC chap Roy McDonald. So you can't take this guy lightly. He come out here and bring it. I wanted to finish him, but hey, we got job done. So tell me what the thought process is coming and joining the PFL. Or do we see you in the regular season next year? Are you thinking about maybe a Bellator fighter in your future? What, what are you thinking? I came here to ball. Where the hell is Jake Paul? <laughs> hey, I came for the big fights. I want to uh, put PFL on the map. Uh, they showed faith in me, brought me over here, signed me, and I want to put a hell of a show for the fans. And uh, next time, we're going to look to come out here and get a finish. And do you find this change of scenery gives you a new lease of motivation? Because you've already achieved so much in your career. Like, how do you stay motivated to keep getting in here and putting these performances in? Yeah, uh, you look at the top guys in the world fighting for belts. I was dominating these guys in the first round, so I got tired of beating myself. And I actually feel good going three rounds and having cardio at the end. I invested a lot in my road work, and it paid off. Always great to see you in the smart cage, my friend. Welcome to the PFL. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, Blonde Brunson. Professional Fighters League completes the purchase of Bellator, creating a global MMA powerhouse and setting up in 2024 PFL champs versus Bellator champs. There's Josh Silvera on the Just For Men beard cam. Take down Stray Grays and beef up patchy areas with Just For Men's one day beard and brown color. Scan to learn more about the temporary gray fighter that stays put until you wash it out. Just for Men, the official beard color brand of the BFL. There's Kayla Harrison, two-time BFL women's lightweight champion. Coming off the only loss in her pro mixed martial arts career. Refocus. We'll go to the final bell. For your winner by unanimous decision, the 2022 PFL Women's Lightweight Champion, Larissa Pacheco! I just had my first loss, so I was like crying. I wouldn't say that it, I expected to lose, but obviously, you know, there are no guarantees in life. I didn't expect to go in there and demolish her. I, I already had fought her twice, so I knew how tough of an opponent she was. Um, 
I knew that I was gonna have my work cut out for me. I'm disappointed, um, sad, heartbroken, but these things happen for a reason and, and failure has always been my fuel. Kayla Anderson remains undefeated and secures back-to-back -back PFL championship. It was really hard for me to go from really being the bell of the ball and being the center of attention and being everybody's favorite and having four fights a year. And it sucked. <laughs> Once we knew I was probably gonna get to fight in November, I was like, let's go. Kayla Smash, I don't care who it is. Oh! As wow. Lad with the Fab Five finish! Good for her. She's young, she's hungry, she's um, up and coming. I'm gonna go out there and expect the best version of Aspen Lad, but there's gonna be the best version of Kayla Harrison. November 24th is like pure violence. It's gonna be unleashed <laughs> in a beast. I still have that fire. I'm grateful for this next chapter. I do feel like I shine brightest under the lights. I wanna be the greatest. That didn't change. Like, I hit a roadblock. The goal hasn't changed. Like, Kayla Harrison, the greatest there ever was. Like, I wanna be undeniable. Right now, something special from Bose as they salute women in sports. They've actually created a custom piece of walkout music for Kayla Harrison. Produced by Grammy-nominated Sue Cirillo and Emmy Award-winning composer Scott Schreer, here's the making of the takedown. This is my day. This is my purpose. I'm a huge fan of music. I'm a huge fan of empowering women. To be able to collaborate and have something like this is amazing. Oh, do it. My goodness. Look, Kayla Harrison is a force of nature. There was no doubt the walkout music had to reflect that. Hi, Kayla. I'm honored to be producing this walkout song for you. Yeah, no, I'm super excited. Who doesn't want their own personal walkout song? Like, what an honor. Thank you so much. The walkout sets the tone. Some people like to come in dancing. I usually like to run in because I'm nervous and to get the jitters out because I'm ready. Watch Kayla Harris. Beautiful performance. I'm not here to be average. I'm not here to be mediocre. I came here to be a legend. I'm a legend. That's the truth. Wow. I have chills. Kayla Harrison. Absolutely dominant there for Kayla Harris. Can we get you to sing something on it? <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah. You guys would really regret it, but yeah. <laughs> Do you want to win? Go get it. Texas, Vegas, Atlanta, New York. If you're down to fight, I'm ready to go. It feels good just to be doing what I love. One more. That's all I have to think about when I get tired. I don't want to train today. No, I do one more session. I don't want to cut weight today. No, I have one more weight cut. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with this game, and I'm obsessed with getting better. I love to fight. I'll fight anybody. I believe I'm the next face of PFL, and that's really where my heart is. My mind is. Big-time players make big-time plays in big-time games. PFL is empowering women in mixed martial arts with the creation of PFLW, focusing on the accomplishments of females in combat sports. Big names represented there, Savannah Marshall, Marissa Shields, Kayla Harrison, Amanda Serrano, Marisa Pacheco, adding her name to the list of great female combat sports athletes. There she is, her arrival here at the Anthem. 155 pound women's champ a year ago. Looking to make it two belts in two separate divisions tonight against Marina Moknatina. But first, her rival, Kayla Harrison, taking on Aspen Ladd. Catchweight bout 
three five-minute rounds presented by Bo. Making their way to the PFL Smart Cage, fighting out of the blue corner, Aspen Lat. Aspen Ladd, this has been her first PFL season. Big finisher, eight of 11 wins have come via finish. Six of those have been knockouts. And Aspen Ladd, she's set on avoiding the same mistakes she's seen Kayla's opponents, past opponents make. One of the big things about watching her previous fights and all of her previous opponents, they take it to the mat and then they're they're just there. There's no further movement. There's nothing from that point. She's like, oh no, this has happened. I'm gonna let it happen. That is not a threat for Kayla whatsoever. And that's where she excels. She gets to the ground, she takes a, a sigh of relief and it's not gonna be the case here. And fighting out of the red corner, Kayla Harrison. Kayla Harrison, 15 and one as a pro. Two-time champion here in the PFL. Two-time Olympic judo gold medalist. She's been away from the smart cage for a whole year. Making her return tonight with an all-new approach to the fight game and to life. You want to talk about type A, goal-oriented, hyper-focused, obsessive personality. Since I was 12 years old, I've been chasing a dream. So to go 12 months without, really 10 months, without a goal kind of forced me to sit down and get still and get to know myself and figure out who the hell I am besides what I do. So that created a lot of peace and self-worth and gratitude and as a result of that I think I became a better fighter. Sale tape for this showcase bout brought to you by Bones. Kayla Harrison is 33 years of age making her five years older than Aspen Ladd. She's also two inches taller. Both women turned in a 66 inch measurement on the arm reach. The longer legs belong to Kayla Harrison in this one. All right, the keys to victory here for Kayla Harrison got to be about controlled aggression. Her takedowns are always going to be crucial to her success inside the smart cage and also her ground control. For Aspen Ladd, it's got to be about her footwork, her counter striking, and she needs to have some answers if she is on her back. And if she is, she can't stay there for too long. And here's Andy Shepard. The following a fight is a special showcase bout. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. She is a grappling specialist and stands five feet, six inches tall. She weighed in officially at 150 pounds and holds a record of 11 wins and four losses. Eight wins coming by way of stoppage. Fighting out of El Dorado Hills, California. And her opponent fighting out of the red corner. She is a judo specialist and stands five feet eight inches tall. She went in officially at 150 and one half pounds and holds a professional MMA record of 15 victories and one defeat. 12 wins coming by way of stoppage. Fighting out of Middletown, Ohio. She is a two-time Olympic gold medalist and two-time PFL Women's Lightweight Champion, Kayla Harrison! Your referee in charge, Joan Vallev. On my cue, ladies. Kayla Harrison in the purple trunks, Aspen Ladd in the gray, Randy Couture, Sean O'Connell, Kenny Floyd Fire. here beside Fire. the PFL Fire. Smart Cage. Dan Hardy, Brett Okamoto, also in the building. 
Our betting experts are Jonathan Coachman and Ian Parker. Harrison in a southpaw stance. Ladd in the orthodox. Overhand left here from Kayla. Already Kayla looks much lighter on her feet. Nice ability to get in and out. There's much better footwork already. Getting comfortable with that left hand, looping and straight. Got to watch out for the hooks of Aspen Ladd. Little slip on that high kick attempt here from Kayla. And now up and oh, down. Wow. Beautiful duck under. Beautiful finish with the flare. Yeah, the little slip almost allowed her to get that level change. Yeah, just get right under that arm peg, that, got in that duck position great and finished. Yeah, she's looking for that crucifix now. As Aspen starts to frame on that hip, she'll push down that near side arm, step over it, trap it, and wail away at the, wail, wail away at the head with her right hand. There we she take goes. The ref cam, there is that, temporarily at least, the crucifix position now on the opposite side, four side control. And all the way around the North Pole there. And Aspen said that a lot of fighters that face Kayla Harrison kind of accept the takedowns and just stay down there. But a lot of that has to do with the control of Kayla Harrison. You know, yeah. Aspen is not moving at all. Why? Because of the control of Kayla Harrison right now. This control position is very, very big in judo, the pin. Yeah. And I know the, ju the judo rules change all the time, but this is why she's so good from this top position. It's so hard to get out from underneath. Very difficult to move from this position. There she tucks Aspen Ladd's right arm underneath her own leg, but Aspen Ladd grabs the underhook and then gets mounted. Now Kayla Harris. Oh, nice job by Aspen. Good chain wrestling here from Aspen Ladd. Up. Oh, look at this. Under the hips. Nice. Oh, and a beautiful reversal with the toss. Kayla Harrison used the momentum on that driving double leg attempt. Yeah, and it was Watch a good attempt by Aspen Ladd, but just Kayla was able to get her hips underneath the hips of Aspen Lab and Ladd and counter that takedown. Beautiful. Nice little whip over by Kayla to establish that top position. Kayla sitting her hips out to the head of Aspen Lad. Aspen doing a good job of trying to find a way to get her legs back in this fight. Yeah, and Harrison using her left arm, just trying to block the hips a little bit. Now posturing up for some nice ground and pound. But Aspen's staying busy now. When she's in her guard, she is trying to move Kayla. She is trying to threaten to get up. Nice right hand snuck through there from Kayla Harrison. Throws the legs aside and just misses with the driving left hand from the top. Tell you what, Kayla looks as fit as I've ever seen her at this weight. Holy cow. Yeah, she looks so lean. Very busted now. Trying to take the back of Aspen Ladd. 90 seconds remain here in the first round. Good hand, but control by Aspen Ladd. Trying to tie Kayla up and frustrate her. Yeah, and this is where Aspen could get to her feet here. Pummeling right hands from Kayla Harrison. Grounded. Trying to kick and trip this lead leg away from Aspen Ladd as she builds a base on it. Kayla doing a good job of staying busy. She's always either disrupting your base or staying busy with her ground and pound. She's gonna take your foot away again. Great coaching from Aspen Ladd's corner. Turn, turn, elbow in the Giving hole. her some anticipation of the, the techniques right that are about to come from Kayla Harrison. Take a look through ref cam here. Smothering pressure. Ladd Aspen trying to get Ladd. some hand control, trying to get inside Kayla's lock. And look, building back your base and getting two feet on the ground against Kayla Harrison when she's in that near crucifix position. This is a small victory for Aspen Ladd to even get back to this relative safety. I'm not sure we've seen anybody else be able to do it, frankly. Aspen staying very calm, just A to knee there, though. Just needs to try to pummel that elbow in and turn and face Kayla. End of round one.
Kayla Harrison pressuring Aspen Ladd up against the Smart Cage barrier. Back to the corners they go. There's that straight left hand right down the middle, right on the button by Kayla Harrison, and the swing and a miss by Aspen Ladd. There's the slip from the high kick, the left high kick, right into the duck under, and a beautiful flaring finish from that duck under position. Here's Ladd getting her feet under her. Nice reversal. Kayla scrambling to try and get some purchase. And here comes the whip over. She uses that wizard and whips Ladd over to stay on top. Here's the knee from the outside. Let's go, seconds out. Ladd's seconds hands out, tied up, go. flush on the face. Look at me. When you're posture on the face, watch where your fingers go. You're good. Right? Here we go. Fight! Kayla Harrison in the purple, Aspen Ladd in the gray. Showcase bout here at 150 pounds. <laughs> Ian Parker, a betting expert. Remind me how we played this fight. Sean, we played Kayla Harrison to win this fight inside the distance, and you saw in that first round, she was dominant, had top position. I think we're gonna see something similar. I think she gets it done between the end of this round and beginning of the third round, but she's gonna make a statement. Thank you, Ian. We'll be checking in with the Duck all night long. Kayla, ooh, behind a big right hand, snatches that leg, dumps Aspen Ladd to her back. Yeah, definitely seeing some improvements with the striking of Kayla. No question about that. She's hitting with more ferocity, more accuracy. Kayla said in the, in the fighter interviews that this was an opportunity for her to show some of those skills yeah. that she's been developing You're over the last year. You're going to have to start year. opening the guard and try to create a scramble, okay? Hey, you can go 100% if you think you can get it. It's going to be the other side, though. Yep, now go underneath her arm and then... Then take your gable. Go underneath her left arm. Yeah, her coach wants Aspen Ladd to try to get scoop underneath the left arm of Kayla Harrison, try to work a reversal. Puts a lot of pressure on the neck. It could be a submission there. Dan Hardy, what's the key for Aspen Ladd to get herself off of the mat? She's doing it now. She's opening her guard and she's letting Harrison go. Now, of course, she's got to defend her back in these situations. But she's up against the fence now. It's going to be very difficult for her to get back to her feet without giving her back. But that has to be the key. Create scrambles. The more time she gets back to her feet, the more, the more, uh, you know, the, the more it's going to challenge go, 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 Kayla Harrison. Go, 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 go. Nice job pushing go, go, go. Kayla Harrison off. Aspen Ladd creates a scramble, gets to her feet. Yeah, did a great job from that butterfly guard to elevate the hips of Kayla Harrison. Double underhooks for Kayla Harrison. Lat's got a nice whizzer on the far side. There's Impa Kasunganai. One half of our 205 pound world title bout. Go ahead, drive the sweep. Go, go, see him go, 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 go. after the conclusion of this fight. The Kimura grip to try and get the reversal. Aspen Lad back to her feet. Oh, nice headlock. Beautiful. Stepped across, took the hips right out from under Aspen Lad. That's got to be a little demoralizing to do that good work and get all the way to your feet yeah. and then get dumped right back to your back. Yeah, Kayla Harrison, beautiful Osotogari. Gets right into side control as well to make matters worse. Left hand goes to work for Kayla. Harrison, control the targets. Got 90, Aspen. You got 90. Let's start scrambling. Get your elbows to the hole. That's the arm bar. Like Kayla might be isolating that near side arm for a second, but she, Aspen felt it coming. Dig it, dig it, dig it. Elbows to the mat, elbows to the mat, keep turning. Come to your knees. Mount position. Now find your 
Nice job by Aspen Ladd to react right away and not give up full mount. Final minute of the second round. Kayla Harrison once again pounding away with the left hand. Aspen trying to elevate again, trying to scramble to her feet. Got close there. She's going to do it. Back to her feet, potentially for the second time in this round. See if she can gain any separation. Unleash a power punch or two. Her forte. Kayla Harrison having none of it, smothering this pressure. But you can certainly tell Aspen Ladd did her homework. She's prepared for this position. She's been the most active we've seen of anybody that's faced Kayla Harrison to date, with the exception of maybe a way to No question about it. Pacheco. Here's uh -oh. the shoulder. Oh, oh, triangle. Ladd's got, got the phone position. She's talking on that phone, trying to prevent that carotid from being squeezed by her own shoulder. Final few seconds, and Harrison will not be able to get her leg out of the guard. Let's go. We go to round three. All right, here's that nice overhand right by Kayla Harrison, right into that takedown. Beautiful high single there, trips out the leg of Aspen Ladd. There's some nice short shots up against the cage. Aspen has done a good, a good job, though, from her back of creating space and scrambling to her feet, but Kayla just staying busy. Here's that beautiful Osoto Gari, just right into side control. It's about as good as it gets when it comes to judo and mixed martial arts right there. Nasty throw. Let's go, seconds out. Seconds out, please, let's go. Third and final round, Kayla Harrison in the purple trunks, Aspen Ladd is in the gray. Strong rounds in one and two from Kayla Harrison, Aspen Ladd does have knockout power. A little switching of the stances in the right hand there from Harrison. Kayla's definitely getting a lot more comfortable with her striking, starting to mix things in. Eight a right hand there. Nice little low kick by Kayla. Spinning attempt misses there for Aspen Lag. Kayla Harrison just backs out of it. There's the overhand left. Lad's got to be careful about letting herself get backed up against the cage against Kayla Harrison. Kayla's just way more loose on her feet than we've seen before. Before she was a little tight. She's able to move in and out. Her footwork is better. She's landing her shots. She's setting things up. Switching leads, yeah. picking combinations. She's not forcing the takedown either. It's just much, much better improvement on her on her feet. No doubt about it. Hey, you're, you're hesitating too much. Be first, be your outside foot, throw the two down the middle. Pumping out the jab and then the left hand behind it. Kayla Harrison stringing together some nice combinations here in the third round. Oh. Nice hand again there. Beautiful straight left by Kayla. And the check right hook as she moves to her right. And you'll notice after she lands the shot, not only is she getting out of range for a return or a counter shot from Aspen Live, but her hands are up. She's not watching her work. I think that's where she was getting caught in that last fight against Larissa Pacheco. Larissa Pacheco chasing history later tonight. She'll try to become the first fighter on PFL history to win belts in two different weight classes. Last year was 155 against Kayla. Nice Good. double leg. Aspen Ladd not capitulating. Like she said, she just is always going to keep moving. Yeah, As she is. Aspen has done a great job there. Look at this. Tate trying to take the back. Kayla, though, she's on with her escape so far. Not waiting around to solidify the position. Kayla immediately reacts. And Aspen did pretty good shape here. She's got a leg caught. Now she's getting the other hook. 
Kayla's gonna end up on top. Tried to go for the arm, but oh, nasty nice ground escape. and pound. Immediately gets to work. Bring Big right shot. Hand down. And this is where arm Kayla triangle again. Kayla's starting to turn up the heat now. She didn't like the fact that Aspen took her back. She's trying to set up this arm triangle. Kayla really trying to drive that shoulder across the jaw of Aspen Ladd, trying to pin those shoulders to the mat. Another opportunity for an arm triangle, maybe a back take here. Aspen doing a great job with her frames, especially her lower leg frames, to create that space and scramble back to her feet repeatedly. She has really spent a lot of time in this position in train camp to prepare. She did her homework. For sure. Oh, nice knee. But that one hurt Aspen. Yep. Look at the volume that Kayla Harrison has been able to produce here, both on her feet and on the ground. Oh, another one. That was a heavy one. Try to get your right Everywhere, the striking for Kayla Harrison oh. has improved very drastically. Man, Aspen is tough. This might be the end, though. These are heavy, heavy shots she's been eating late in round three. Three big knees there. Now some ground and pound. Back to quarter and got hand control though with Aspen Ladd. Fighting her way back to her feet. There's certainly no quitting her. Taylor tries another knee. Aspen's got to be careful about hanging that head forward. Oh, it is. big one right there. Nice oh. foot sweep. Again, the demoralization to fight all the way to your feet and then have them swept out from under you like that. Final five seconds of this fight. Another knee from Kayla Harrison. Final bell. Kayla Harrison. Barring any surprises, 16th pro victory coming. No quit in Aspen Lad. Like you said, Randy, she knew how to respond to pretty much every situation that Kayla put her in, but Kayla was still able to put her in those situations because, Absolutely. quite frankly, she's Kayla Harris. <laughs> exactly. Eight takedowns, 162 total strikes landed. That nice straight left hand right on the button by Kayla Harrison. There's the jab. Big cross. There's a knee. Aspen trying to stay on her feet, hanging her head a little bit. Kayla mixing in the knees there. Another big knee. Man, what a chin. Here's the proprietary PFL AI score, round by round, scores one to 100, and you can see one-way traffic for Kayla Harrison. 95, 95, 96. The only way you can score much higher than that is by getting a finish, which of course Aspen Ladd was able to avoid. Andy Shepard has the official judges scorecards. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges score this bout 30-27 for your winner via unanimous decision, Kayla Harrison! No surprises from the judges, Kayla Harrison back to her winning ways. Display of sportsmanship there as we have come to expect from Kayla. The loss, the monkey shaking off her back for now. Absolutely. Kayla Harrison with Dan Hart.
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with your winner for the Celsius post-fight interview, Kayla Harrison. How are you feeling? I mean, you've been out for a long time. You're not used to having this long between competition. How did it feel to get back in here? What, Sean didn't want to interview me? He was afraid I'd make fun of his outfit? Where are you at, Sean? <laughs> now, listen, uh, first of all, thank you all for being here. It's been a year. I want to say God is good. And he's not just good because I won tonight. He's good because we're all here. We're breathing air. We're on this earth. Thank God we are alive. Any surprises in here tonight from Aspen Lad? She was able to create some scrambles and yeah. kind of cause you some problems that we've not really seen you deal with before. Any surprises? Yeah, she was, uh, she was Gumby in there. You know, she was definitely durable and I think ring rust is a real thing. I was like nervous as hell. So, um, but I'm just so grateful to be here. You know, I started fighting because I wanted to, to provide a better life for me, for my family, and to be the best in the world. And thank God for PFL. Thank you, PFL. I'm able to provide for my family. They're never gonna want again. I'm blessed for that. But now it's time for me to provide for me. I'm excited, PFL just, acquired Bellator. I heard there's a girl in Bellator who thinks she's a bad bitch. Well, why don't we find out? That'll be a really exciting matchup. I mean, what is there left to achieve in your career? You, you, you're a champion, you're an Olympic gold medalist. Is, is that the goal now? You need those big marquee fights to kind of solidify your legacy? Yeah, I mean, I think that my legacy is there. It's not, it's not just about who I fight. It's what I fight for, you know? I have the Fearless Foundation, which is for survivors of sexual abuse, child sexual abuse. If you go to fearlessfoundation.org, you can find out more and donate. Help change people's lives. One in four girls and one in six boys are sexually abused. So it's not just me in this room that's been affected by this, which means you can make a difference. Please go check out the website. Please talk to someone. If you're going through that, say something. I promise there is help and there is hope, but I don't fight for whoever. I don't want to fight anybody in particular. I fight because I love it. It brings me joy. This is my happy place. And thank you all for letting me share that with you tonight. Thank you. It's been amazing to see you back in the smart cage. Ladies and gentlemen, Kayla Harrison. After a year away, Kayla Harrison gets back in the win column, and she did so putting on a better striking display than I think we've ever seen from her. Now for five straight title fights. Ipoca Sunganai making his first championship appearance, looking for the culmination of an incredible story. How you doing? Good to see you. He's fulfilling part of our dreams because he's a Bantu, so you have to pass on the baton so Impa really pick it up well. And he's passing to his siblings too, so I'm very proud of him. In this life, you have to work hard and smart and uh, with integrity uh, going after your dreams, and we can see that in him. Here's an off trying to look at this guy's good position on this side. There it is. A quick tag, a second round finish. Oh, no! Oh, 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 Just a devastating combination. Wow. You know, anybody out there, you feel like you want to end your life, you don't know what's going on, man. Like, I'll admit it here, a year ago, I was sleeping in my car. Life kind of hit like a, a weird point where not much was coming in, and I just needed a place to stay, so I decided to stay in my car. I said, there's no way I'm moving back to North Carolina. I'm gonna get everything figured out. Through that time, it was, it was peaceful, but it was challenging. I just told myself, man, like one day I'm gonna be champion, and there's nothing that's gonna stop me. I'm not gonna make an excuse. I'm not gonna make it comfortable. Never complained about it, never cried about it. Just looked at it like one day it's gonna change. We did not know our son was sleeping in a car. I spoke to one of his siblings, I said, Impa need to come back. They said to me, Dad, what about you when you were going overseas? If your parents called you to go back, were you going to go back? I said, no. My wife cried again. I said, please don't cry. This is how the champions are made. 
For me, it's the challenge is begun. Like, there's no turning back. I've always known that I'm destined to be a champion. When I get that title and, you know, the million dollars, I get to be a part of history in a great way. But really, for me, it's the beginning of a new challenge and a new, new chapter in my life that I'm here to take over. His opponent, the son of a legendary coach, Josh Silvera, in the family business, trying to add to his own legacy. I'm Josh Severa, PFL light heavyweight, uh, ready to win this f***ing finals. <laughs> In the 2023 season, I had all three first round finishes. Nice, both hooks in. And oh, tight, wow. there's a the tag. Wow. Win points for Josh Severa. Sharp kick to the body there from Silvera. Nasty oh. knee. Oh, oh, another one. one. Josh Silvera to the championship. What are the odds that your dad's one of the top guys in the world? I'm so excited for the future and for him to be by my side and call him my coach and my dad. He deserves that belt and that million dollars just as much as I do. We win together, we lose together, we cry together, we're happy together, but at the end of the day, we're always together. I'm Conor Silvera, his dad and his coach. Still, go, go, go for it, go for it. I was from Rio. I was born here. Um, we start everything here in Rio. Carson Grace um, was the one teaching, you know, coaching everybody, you know, the first and the only Carson Grace Academy, the beginning of everything, you know, where a lot of the fighters and coaches and amazing black belts came from. I trained with Carson Gracie um, since I was 16 years old to the day he passed. Being part of uh, the Carson Grace, the official list, you know, the, the, the official black bells from him, it is um, more than special. Yeah, but the son and I started early because of his Challenger Series bout. Five fights in one year. Impa and I, we both have foreign parents, and what our parents did was not just come and give us opportunity, they gave us a chance to create our own destiny. A gold bell and a million dollars could never repay what they did for us. I want the fight that's gonna make people go, holy five rounds, 25 minutes. This is the type of I love. Josh Silvera, a product of last year's Challenger Series, made it to the semifinals, saw his season end there. Tonight, he chases a PFL championship against that man, Impa Kasunganai, looking to create one of the best turnaround stories in mixed martial arts. Light heavyweight championship next. Redcon One is the official supplement partner of the PFL, and this Black Friday, you can get up to 80% off site-wide. Shop America's favorite pre-workout, protein powder, creatine, and more, only at redcon1.com. Make sure you follow at PFL MMA on Instagram for a chance to win cage-side seats to Francis Ngannou's Super Fight PFL pay-per-view debut. This is your last chance to enter the contest ends at 11.59 Eastern Time. <laughs> 205 pound championship, near and dear to my own heart. 
five five-minute rounds between Josh Silvera and Impica Sunganai, brought to you by Celsius. Making their way to the PFL Smart Cage, fighting out of the blue corner, Impa Kasunganai. Impa Kasunganai making the long walk. Proud representative of his family, the country of his ancestry. His parents are both immigrants from the Congo. Fourteen pro victories in his career. He's found a new gear for finishes here in the PFL. College football player Impica Sunganai has rare athleticism, a little undersized for the weight class, but incredibly quick, very fast. And the progress he's made at Kill Cliff MMA. Well, the, the proof is in the pudding. He is. Stepping into the PFL Smart Cage for the fifth time in 2023. He began his season on the Challenger Series, earned this opportunity through that avenue. He's 25 minutes away from $1 million. A fascinating guy to talk to. Ipika Sunganai is a, a man of many interests. He's Attended PFL events and held a camera and taken pictures cage side trying to learn that crap. He's somebody who's always trying to learn. He visualizes things very cerebral. And he has a clear picture of how he expects his first PFL championship to go. For me, I see me dominating everywhere, being sharp, being disciplined, being focused throughout the entire fight and just communicating with my coaches, whether it's I could use my speed, stand on top of the grappling, my eyes and my vision, I can really see a lot of shots coming and I see me sharp shooting from the get-go. Now shutting down his offense, nullifying what he does well and imposing my will from the get-go. And in the red corner, Joshua Silvera. Ipika Sunganai represents Kill Cliff MMA, a rising powerhouse amongst MMA gyms in South Florida. And Josh Silvera wants to be the next big thing out of an absolute fight factory. American top team. Dozens of belts in the trophy case at American top team. And Josh Silvera grew up on those mats with his dad, Conan Silvera, as his coach. He grew up on the mats watching champion after champion roll through the daily training sessions. He cut his teeth against some of the best fighters in the world. On the regional scene, he was not a one division champion. He took home belts at 185 and 205. Coming off three first round finishes this season, Looking to make good on his first PFL championship opportunity. And you saw the piece, what his dad means to the sport. We spoke to Josh Silvera about the meaning of having his father by his side as he chases a million dollars. Man, you know, winning a title with, with him there, it's, it's going to mean the world to me. You know, um, just looking, just waiting to see how he looks. Just that, that, that priceless moment in his face, you know, where, where you can't really control what you feel, right? What you feel is how you feel in that moment. Um, looking at my family and everyone just being there, you could go change your life. 
change your family's life. But we've made it here together. You know, we made it here together, and it's, that's what matters the most. Tale and tape for this championship fight brought to you by Celsius. Josh Silvera, 30 years of age, making him one year older than Infica Sunganai. Silvera is also one inch taller. You can see both of these men weighed in under the 205 pound title limit. Reach advantage on the arms, favoring Josh Silvera. They each have 42 inch measurements on the legs. All right, keys to victory for Joshua Silvera. He needs to mix up his strikes try to look for body shots and hit those takedowns for Kasanganai. It's about his forward pressure, his boxing, and his patience. Andy Shepard, take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, the following is a seven-figure fight. Five rounds of action for the PFL Light Heavyweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He is a striking specialist and stands six feet tall. He went in officially at 203 and one half pounds and holds a record of 14 victories and three defeats. Fighting out of Deerfield Beach, Florida, he is the 2023 Challenger Series winner, Chi Lobo Impa! opponent fighting out of the red corner he is a grappling specialist and stands six feet one inches tall he weighed in officially at 202 and one half pounds and holds an mma record of 12 wins and one loss 11 wins coming by way of stoppage fighting out of coconut creek florida joshua Silva. Your referee in charge, Mario Yamazaki. Mario Yamazaki equipped with the referee cam. Josh Silvera in the gold trunks. Infoka Sunganai in the gray. Potentially five five-minute rounds to decide the $1 million, 205-pound championship winner. There you go, first round, you ready? Are you ready? Let's go, come on! Southpaw stands for Silvera. High kick attempt to open the action from Kasunganai. Impa immediately trying to back up Josh Silvera. Stabbing kick there from Silvera. Talked to him in the fighter meetings and he said that was going to be a valuable weapon against the forward pressure. Silvera trying to attack that body of Impa with those body kicks right down the middle. Has double unders, three plate. Be able to pummel in. Outside trip attempt here from Severa, but the sunken eye was able to reverse position. Oh, gets on top in the mouth briefly. Severa coming out the back door, does a nice job of scrambling out of trouble. Josh Silvera. Division I college wrestler at Arizona State University. Joining us to uh, have some fun during this fight, Wiz Khalifa. Wiz, 205 pound world title. We just got started, what do you think so far? I'm thinking uh, it's looking good. These boys look excited to be here, both of them. Working real hard, it's a million dollars on the line. We got five rounds. Hopefully they make the best of that. You know, I'm excited to be here. Uh, PFL just acquired Bellator, so it's going to be a great fight, man. Impica Sunganai was able to land a right hand behind the ear, and there's a left hook as he backs up Josh Silvera. Josh has got to be careful backing straight up with that chin up in the air. He's got to keep those hands high. Impa starting to land with more volume here. Impa still closed mouth. Breathing through his nose. 
despite the high volume. Yeah, he's staying very, very relaxed here. Nice jab by Silvera. Got to see him uncork oh. that straight left. But Impa beats him to the punch. No pun intended. Yeah, and landed a nice short left hook there. Silvera doesn't want to be in the pocket trading with boxing technique with the Sanganai for too long. Beautiful Super, takedown there. The Super breathing. nice head movement. Head outside single by Josh Silvera. He's trying to capture the other leg, the free Put leg now. Sanganai attacking the head, making him think about it. Nice oh. job. Silvera's on her back. He, he missed it. Oh, he he missed it. Got a little rust, a little too high, Couldn't and lost the position. Yeah, he didn't line up his shoulders with the shoulders of Kasang, and I allowed him to rotate. Now it's Impa who's on top. No anchors. Oh, oh now look no at this. And now Interesting. Impa. Bulldog. Oh. Bulldog attempt by Kasang and I here. But you see, Impa's not lined up either. Nope. And Silvera did a nice job of getting out of that leg ride, taking that anchor away. Wow. Fast and furious start here. Great counter movement from both of these guys. Short uppercut landed as we take a listen inside the corner of Josh Silvera. This is gonna be a grueling fight. We can see that right from the start. Back to the center of the smart cage. High pace so far in his 205 pound championship. Josh said he, in preparation for this fight, his dad put him through a lot of different challenges, a lot of different tests. Said he doesn't want to be surprised by anything here tonight. Oh, scooping uppercut there from the rear hand, Impica Sanganai <laughs> mixing the strikes. Sanganai's striking is very, very accurate tonight. Nice little footwheel attempt by Kasanganai. Silvera steps out of it. I think what I'm most impressed by at this moment is that Impa hasn't even opened his mouth to yeah. breathe yet. Yep. It's all through the nose right now. Yeah, and it's been a very fast-paced fight. Now landing even more shots. With a great... Oh. Great job of mixing the straight strikes and the looping punches. Impa Kasangani giving Silvera different looks. Little, little drip of blood coming down the left side of Josh Silvera's face in these final few seconds of round number one. I'd like to see Josh Silvera give some head fakes. At least make him think yeah. he's going to shoot a double. Keep that wrestling on the playing field. Absolutely. And look at Impa Kasangani striding back. Mouth closed, breathing through his nose. Take a listen to Conan Silver. And I need you to give him a greeting. He's ready higher. You trying to go against him. I need you to put your time together. Okay? I need you to counter. That's what I need you to do. It. He's ready throwing punches. He's afraid to go to the floor. Okay? Put your mind together. Yes. Calm yourself down. You pegou um bom jab ali, entendeu? Direto pode vir na sequência. Uma coisa que está girando muito. Excuse me. Thank you. Josh Silvera and Impa Kasanganais. Set for round number Second two. Second round, you ready? You ready? Let's go, come on. Dan Hardy, how'd you see round one? A fascinating first round. You know, this is 25 minutes, and we knew both of these guys were going to be smart enough to feel one another out. But we got all of the ranges in that first one. Now for Sanganai starting to rev the engine a bit, but amazingly, still breathing through his nose, which is so difficult to do in a high-pressure situation. He landed a short right there. Got Silvera off balance a little bit. Wiz Khalifa, do you like the work you're seeing from Impa Kasanganai? Oh, man, it's going down. Uh, really good use of his stamina, good takedown defense. Um, setting up those punches and kicks really well. He's just using all his weapons. And, um, yeah, he's showing off in this play. But now he's got double underhooks. Silvera able to pummel out of it. Little slip there 
on the plant foot from Impica Sunganai. It's an okay level change by Josh Silvera, but he reached for the legs. He didn't keep his feet moving. That allowed Kasunganai to pull him up chest to chest to take the position away from him. Yeah, and, and, and that's where Josh is going to get caught. He's getting caught repeatedly. He's backing straight up, hands down, chin up in the air, and he's running to a lot of the punches of Kasanganai. So Vera now starting to put together one-twos right down the middle. Impa's going to have to keep his head off that center line. Look at this stoic approach from Impa. Between those explosions, And Randy, I agree. I think Josh is being there. a little bit too predictable. There's a nice level change, you know, but he's not fainting his way in. Exactly, and, and now he's on his knees. Tough to finish once you hit your knees in the double position. One thing I think we've learned watching Impa Kasungana, even fighting large light heavyweights, he's undersized for the weight class. He lacks nothing for strength. And you saw him there, even on the decent level change in pressure. Oh from Silvera, big slip here from Kasunganai. Kasunganai tried to throw the left kick and slipped and, and landed on his back. Yeah, absolutely, Sean, and I think we saw that against Martin Hamlin, an absolutely massive 205 pounder who also comes from a wrestling background, and he was able to get back to his feet. He's showing some good composure here against Silvera, not a great spot for him though. Now working for an underhook. He needs to get the far side underhook, that left arm. He's trying to dig for it now. Now he can blade his body and get back to his feet. There he goes. He oh, gets boy, back nice to the offense play. immediately. But look at the hips and thighs of Kasunganai. This guy's got the lower body of a big person. He may not be the biggest an upper body, but he's, he's got that core that's very, very strong and able to bear that weight. Watch the show. Wow, oh, that's a big right hand. Big right hand. Yeah. Sharp and quick, and he's mixing them up, and then he comes around the corner with the next one. Well, Josh's solution to kind of having that chin up in the air is ducking down, which is also not a good solution because now he can start running into knees and uppercuts. Yeah, and we've seen Kasunganai, he'll reach his left arm around on those hooks and then throw the dirty boxing, the uppercuts, the short punches. Nice lead jab here from... Josh Silvera, who's sucking wind here in the second. It's the speed of Kasungana that's been the difference. His shots have landed. He's just that split second faster. It's not that Silvera's not throwing things. It's just not quite as quick. I would love to know what's going through Josh Silvera's head at this moment. Even in a high-paced fight like this, he's staring at a guy who's just breathing through the nose, remaining calm. Good jab there from Silvera. We talked about the training camp for both of these fighters, and Josh said that he would start fresh rounds. He wants no reaction. New opponent would come in midway through a round. He would try not to react, just get back to the techniques. He's going to have to do that if it stays this oh. way against Impa. Another right hand. Josh doesn't want to get pinned up against the cage there. He's got to be careful. That's where Martin Hamlet got caught. Final 30 seconds of this second frame. 30 seconds. See if Impa starts to attack the body of Silvera. Just as you said it, he dug <laughs> that right hand in. Right to the body, left to the head. Good jousting jab from Silvera. He's had some success, but he wears a short hook to the side of his head for his effort. Yeah, Silvera definitely starting to get frustrated. Oh. There's the belt for round two. Impa back to the corner. Josh Silvera back to the stool as well. Silvera has been trying to make this a grappling fight, but really most of the action has been happening on the feet. There's a nice left hook that kind of grazed the chin of Silvera as he backed him up. There's a nice right hand that landed pretty clean on Silvera. Silvera's showing he's got a great chin. Just missed with the follow-up shot, did Impa Kasanganai. 
And he's still not breathing hey, heavy. Be a little more aggressive. I don't know if I've ever yeah. seen any fighter this calm in a championship bout. I mean, maybe Demetrius Johnson, right? A guy with a legendary gas tank. This is incredibly impressive. Certainly never yeah. in the upper weight. Yeah, his heart rate's got to be pretty dang low, I'll tell you that right now. Holly says round three coming, Josh Silvera and Impa Kasungani. Two on, five ready? pound championship, you ready? one million go, dollars on. on the line. The potential super fight matchup with the Bellator champion after PFL's acquisition of Bellator. And Impa oh splits forward. That one, two, three combination was on the money. It looked like that last three might have hurt Josh a little bit. You tell if it was him stumbling on the fence or if it actually hurt him. With some early blitzes here from Impa in round three, is this the one, is this the round where he can get a finish? Yeah, um, he can get a finish. He's seeing everything coming his way. Um, you know, he's he's like a few good shots from taking him out of there for sure. I see it, I see it happening close to the end of this round. Good level change here from Josh Silvera. Drives with the feet. Great work by Impica Sungani to force the head down. Beautiful spar, great hand control. Sprawl, I should say. Yeah, and Silvera didn't do himself any favors. His hips didn't really get underneath his head there. At but least now, stayed off his knees and kept his feet moving, but he didn't explode. Right. Finish it. Now double unders. Reverse load position here for Impica Sungani. You can see the live odds have swung significantly in Impa's favor. Minus 1,300 favorite at this point in the fight. Pay attention. Ligado na saída do Chris, Josh. Fica ligado na separação. Josh just kind of gave up the back there. Nice sweep. Come on. Impa uses his right leg to kick the supporting limbs out from under Josh Silvera. Silvera's in trouble. He's got to be careful here. Impa's got one hook in, cranking that face. And this is where Impa really should try to increase the pressure. Instead of going for the submission control and start landing some big grounded pound. He's basically, man, he, I mean, Josh turns over, he's in full mount. Josh gave the quarter position. He's gonna try and find his way back to his feet. Nice uppercut. I mean, Impa is just locked in. I mean, that's what laser light focus looks like. Body shot of him, the left hook came over the top from Impa Kasunganai. Starting to mix it up. Ran into a jab there, though. Josh Silvera very much in this fight. Yeah, he showed a lot of toughness here. Level changes there, but he went right to his knees. It's impossible to keep your feet moving and drive through that body weight to finish the takedown. Nice spin behind by Kasunganai. It's Sabaras is, is looking for He's looking very fatigued. Oh, he's, got he's got it in tight. Josh Silvera get out of it. turns out, but Impa rides to the top, goes to work with the right hand. Matt return here. Nice oh. job. Nice job by Impa, recognizing where he was at to let those hooks out and stay on top. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he would have lost position if he committed to, the, to those hooks. Yep, he'd have been on the bottom. Corner of Impa Kasunganai, and he is right in front of his own corner. Standing arm Standing triangle. Arm triangle. These are rare. He could hit it here. He's got it locked. Can't tell if he's got pressure on Josh's shoulder. Not anymore. 40 seconds in round number three. Impa Kasunganai pulling away 
staying offensive in this fight. Live odds continuing to swing very drastically now in his favor. Manhandling Josh Silvera against the smart cake. Fifteen seconds. I, I think what's most surprising is the fact that he's been largely out grappled here by Kasagana. Yeah, that is very surprising. Round three in the books. Guys, mouth breathing watch update. He still hasn't opened his mouth. <laughs> Man, I'm starting to think Impa Kasunganai's mouth might be taped shut. <laughs> Battery's a Terminator. <laughs> Here's a nice double attempt by Josh Silvera. Keeps his feet moving, runs out of steam. Nice sprawl by Impa Kasunganai using that wizard, pushing the head down. You go where your head goes. He pushed his head down and stopped the forward momentum of Josh Silvera. Here he is. He's trying to get the choke. As Josh reacts, he gets both hooks in. Well, he's got one hook in. As Josh rolls, Kasangadai recognizes where he's at. He's potentially going to get reversed and gets that hook out of there. Very, very smart. Yeah, that was great awareness there. Impa Kasunganai and Josh Silvera squaring off for $1 million in a light heavyweight world championship. This is the first time in Impa's career he's been into the championship round, but he does appear to be fresh. Josh Silvera has previously fought a five round fight. Oh, great combination again. Huge shots. Boy, I got sweat from that one. That was. Yes, getting showered with the splashing sweat of both fighters here. Oh, in front he's, of our broadcast position is for hunting here. Yeah, he definitely smells blood in the water here. Silvera able to stay on his feet, but those shots were massive. Oh, oh nasty man. left hook on the Wow. The chin on Josh Silvera is really something. But Josh's movements is, are struggling. He, he's, he looks like he's struggling to me. Yeah, he's, he's still hurt. Sure. I think he's still hurt, too. really has taken control here of this fight. Just dominating oh. range. Going now to the straight right hand. Impica Sungadai offers one to the belly of Josh Silvera. Dan Hardy, fourth round, and Impa's still fresh. I am so impressed with Impica Sungadai in this one. And I feel like he's I feel like his determination and, he, and, his, and his patience, his ability to compose himself in these moments is really kind of partly what is playing into the accepting of defeat on Josh Silvera's part. I don't even feel like he's that tired. I just feel like he's shut out of the fight. And Kasangana is staying laser focused on what his goal is in this fight. Very, very impressive performance. Far more one-sided than I expected, I'll be honest. Silvera now trying to grab hold of the hips of Impa Kasangana. Impa negates it once again, chest to chest. Kasangana felt the fence coming, circled his feet, and got off of that. Stayed off of the barrier. Wiz, it wasn't round three. Round four gonna be the end. <laughs> Man, even if he doesn't take him out, uh, it's Impa's fight. Um, uh, Severus hanging in there, his chin is strong. He's, he's eating a lot of these shots, but he can't really find his rhythm. Um, he's looking a little wonky in there, and, and Impa's just sticking to his guns and staying on his job, not getting taken down and, and firing off. So we're just going. He could ride it out just like this. Really, million dollars his. It's certainly a growing gap in this fight. Impica Sunganai, more than halfway through round number four, has been very impressive so far. Pace, shot selection, 
grappling defense, grappling offense for that matter. An incredible composure. The crowd here in D.C. chanting, let's go, Impo, let's go. Capturing some hearts and minds here. The son of Congolese immigrants, first generation American. Lands a nice jab. No follow up just yet. You know, Josh is not out of this fight. I think he's continued to stay strong mentally and physically, but it's got to be something when you are getting out wrestled, out struck out there, and your opponent isn't even breathing heavy at all. I mean, it, that could mentally defeat a guy, but Josh still staying, staying with it here. Another check hook and almost a slip there from Impa. Josh getting more aggressive. Offers a knee on the entry from Impa Kasunganai. Straight right back. Final 30 seconds of round four. Good combination there from Josh. Got him for backing oh. up. There's another hook. Yeah, Josh starting to string together a combination there. It's a good sign. Oh, ate a right hand as Man. he tried the knee. Josh throwing caution to the wind here at the end of round four. And found some success in doing so. Let's get a fool, Dad. Come on, come on. Listen. Comes the, the moment in your life that you gotta make a decision. <coughs> you wanna let him take this from you? Are you gonna let do that happen? Look at me and answer my question. No, sir. What you're gonna do right now in the five minutes you have, no, you're gonna finish the fight. Do you hear me? Porque ele tá jogando, ele tá lutando pelos golpes fortes. Nós temos que lutar pelo volume, Josh. Nós temos que trabalhar mais do que ele. É esse round de hoje da vitória. Let's go! Conan Silver and Josh Silver know exactly what they're up against there. If you watched and heard how his father was coaching him, he's got to go finish this fight in round number five. Did somebody tell Ibn Kasunganai that this was a 10-round fight? <laughs> and that's why he came in in this kind of shape. He looks ready for one. Yeah, I'm not sure I've seen anything like it. Left hook, right hand to the body from Impa. Oh. Right hand as they clashed. Randy, how do you coach Impa to fight this? I think Impa sticks with exactly what has got him in this position. He's dominated four rounds of this fight. Keep doing exactly what you trained to do. You don't need to change a thing. Yeah, I mean, even if he loses this round, he still wins this fight. But he's just in control. He's dominating the range. He's stopping the takedowns. He's frustrating Silvera. He's landing the cleaner shots. He's putting together combinations. And Silvera just cannot come up with an answer. Ronan Severa asked Josh, what are you going to do with the five minutes that you have? Josh Severa pressing the action, trying to find a solution to the problem that is Impa Kasunganai. Just excellent movement by Impa as well. Just excellent lateral movement, establishing that jab. I mean, he's just known where he was at in every second of this fight so far. Yeah. Wiz, you heard the question, what is Josh Severa going to do with now the three minutes that he has? Uh, 
I want him to just start swinging away, bro. He's, he's got three minutes. There's a million dollars on the line. Uh, he's hung in there as long as possible. And man, he's got to find some type of opening and go big. And if he can't go big, stay on his feet. And just brawl it out, baby. See what you can do. I like that game plan. Silvera's starting to land some bigger shots, though. Yeah, he straight just punches out. He's letting him go right down the middle. And he's walking Impa down. I oh. think lands off the top of the guard. Oh, nice hook landed yeah. there in the middle of that combination from Silvera. Yeah, this is the best his striking has looked the whole fight. He's throwing combinations and Impa's offering well. Oh, ones and twos back. Interrupted some of that momentum oh. there, perhaps. Yeah, Impa's not going to hand this round over easily. Oh, nasty right from Josh Silvera. Impa's got to bring those hands right back after that jab. He's leaving it out there a little bit. Silvera's returning on the counter. After 23 minutes, does Silvera have enough power? Good knee to the midsection. And another. Most successful round Oof. for Silvera. But on the exit, sharp right hand from Impa Kasunganai. Who now may be listening to the cornering of his coaches take the safer approach for this final minute and a half. Now Impa starting to counter with more frequency. Oh, another short right hand. Josh Silvera's chin on display. Jeez. I mean, Kasunganai's landed over 100 strikes, many of them significant. Yeah, no Great question. sprawl. This is just excellent preparation and execution by Impa Kasunganai and his team. And I will delay the point. All day long, this is this is a 205-pound fight. The gas tank on display, the composure, even with high volume and output. Impica Sungana is in phenomenal shape. Gotta watch the headlock here. Nice job by Kasungan to feel it. Duck under and come out the back. Impica Sunganai started his season on the PFL Challenger Series. He had to earn a spot in the season. He earned that spot, he earned his place into a championship, and he just earned himself $1 million and a 205 pound title in the Professional Fighters League. Celebratory dance from Impa. A dominant performance. And a trophy for the wall at Kill Cliff MMA. Here's your Geico Cajunomics stats bundle, and you can just see the volume. Every category, Implica Sunganai out threw, out landed, out wrestled Josh Silvera. Impa goes five for five on the artificial intelligence score. Conan Silvera, legendary coach. Lifting his son's chin and spirits, you would think, in a moment of dejection here. Impa with the nice sweep. 
He's maintained that top position. Looks like he's trying to get in position for an arm triangle to isolate the neck of Josh. There's the choke attempt. Just got to get those hooks in, those anchors. If he feels where he's at, realizes he's in risk of being reversed. He lets it go and stays on top. Very, very smart. Beautiful body, head. Nice two, three, two combination. Shot selection, presence of mind to know where he's at at all times in this fight. Very, very impressive. Ian Pukasung and I, challenger to champion, barring any surprises. Andy Shepard, tell us. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges scored this bout 50-45 for your winner via unanimous decision. And 2023 PFL Light Heavyweight Champion, Impa Kasunganai! What a moment for Impa Kasunganai, having that belt wrapped around his waist. Not long ago, hey, where you at? Mimkov. Kenny Florian, he was on the receiving end of a highlight reel knockout in the UFC. He had to watch that over and over and over again. He said, go ahead and play it, but make sure you play when I win a championship too. And here he is receiving a $1 million check for Pete Murray. Yeah, I mean, one of the most amazing turnarounds that I've seen in a mixed martial arts career. Reinvented himself, did some soul searching, what a story, and everything that he, he sacrificed to be here. It's just unreal, an amazing individual, and he needed five fights, just like you, Sean. So <laughs> five don't you show off too much, Sean. They didn't have to do two in one night, but still, <laughs> I'm impressed. He's such a one-upper. I, I, I knew you were going there. In all seriousness, though, I, I'm absolutely blown away by everything we've seen this year from Ibuka yeah. Sanganai. His approach to the game, his approach to life. You saw in the piece, he burned the boat. Mom and dad yep. said, hey, you're struggling financially. Come home. Let us take care of things until you get back on your feet. He said, no, I would rather live in my car and live out this dream. And look what he's done for himself, his family, his gym, his community. And and hear me out, hear me out. Impa Kasung and I weighed in at 202 pounds for this. How about Impa Kasung and I, Johnny Eblen? Are you okay with that idea? I'm okay with that, I'll see that all day. Oh yeah, every day, all day. Dan Hardy, talk to the man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with your winner, the 2023 light heavyweight champion for the Celsius post fight interview. That belt looks good around your waist. That check looks good in your hands, my friend. What an impressive performance that was. I expected this to be the most competitive fight on the card, and it was a complete shutout. Tell me how you're feeling right now. Uh, man, I'm feeling grateful. I want Nemkov. Uh, God is great. I don't know anybody know in here, man. Like, you could be in your car one day, you could be a world champion the next. That's in anything you do. A lot of people are here, man. You don't know the story or the situation that they're going through, but I want you to know you're unconditionally loved. You might feel like giving up right now, but don't, just one more day, promise yourself that. You'll be a champion in your own life. Now, I do want to know more about the performance, but you slipped that in right there. You just said, I want Nemkov. Tell me why. Man, I want Nemkov. He's one of the best in the world. Why would you be in this if you don't want to be the best, if you're not here to be the best? I came here to dominate. I want Nemkov and I want Francis Ngannou. I want all the best. I'm not playing around. I'm here to be the best to ever do it, past, present, and future. I thank God the UFC cut me. I'm here to be in PFL and dominate. Give me 12 to 15 years, give me a great contract, let me take care of my family. I want everybody next. I'll fight tomorrow, I'll fight Sunday, I don't care. And man, let's get after it. Shout out to everybody at Kill Cliff, DK Fitness. Hey man, T and Juan, bro. Keep working, man. I had 16-year-old kids helping me get ready for this fight. It doesn't matter who you are. Get out here, get after it. I'm here to be the best to ever do it, and I don't play about that. After everything you've achieved this year, you're standing here with the belt, with the check, and you're still calling people out. You're still chasing the top. What drives you, my friend? 
I'm on a war path. I want to honor God and do my job. I want people to see, like, when you represent God, it doesn't matter if you're perfect or not, because I'm not a perfect person, man. I fell short many times. But when you get an opportunity to be here and do great work, you can be a strong man and still dominate, and you can still be a loving man. And that's what I want to show. So I'm on a path. I don't care if I'm tired. I don't care if I'm sick. I don't care if I'm hurt, injured. I just know I'm going to show up and do honor God and do my job. I want to represent my family, the Kasung and I name, represent these guys back here. Coach Lenz told me, he said, be ashamed if you become a world champion. Coach Jones welcomed me to the gym. Henry Kabobi had a car. Coach Dieter and I, we work every single day. I got my dog Jason Jackson right here, head welterweight champion. He beats me up on Sundays. That's my dog. <laughs> we gotta get another round in. But I love this guy. And man, I'm like, I'm here to be the best, man. PFO just gave me an opportunity. And I got a lot of people here that love me. I really want to say something though, like shout out to Josh Silvera, shout out to Coden, shout out to his family. My dad's right here and it's an opportunity. I met Josh on a plane to Abu Dhabi. I got knocked up in front of the whole world and they were still super respectful. We talked the whole way there and way back. I got a lot of respect for him. So like, he and his dad right now, don't get your head down to do something special with your father. A lot of kids in here don't even have their dad in their life. So take that moment to love one another, all right? You're a special individual, my friend. You're inspiring and you're on an incredible journey. And I know that this journey is not over yet. Ladies and gentlemen, the light heavyweight champion, Ipika Saganai. <laughs> culmination, at least for 2023, of an incredible journey, but you can hear right there, he is far from finished. He just called out two of the most dangerous human beings on planet Earth. But Ip Nemkov is so scary, and it's talked about because he's cleaned things out in the Bellator 205-pound weight class, he says, I might be going to heavyweight. Shilobo says, let's go. Right. And then he said, I want Francis Ngannou. <laughs> it shows where his head is at. I mean, this guy, it, it's unbelievable. I'm not going to doubt him anymore. I mean, jeez. Look at that. Jason Jackson beat an undefeated fighter to grab the Bellator 170-pound strap for his gym and his teammates. And now Impica Sungani brings home 205-pound gold in the PFL. And guess what? Bellator and PFL are now under the same roof. Impa says, bring on Bellator. Let's bring on the champions versus champions. I love it. Magomed Magomed Karimov, season one. Welterweight champ. Season, what was that? Three. Runner-up. Completely well-rounded. Dangerous everywhere. MAGA million, can he become MAGA millions tonight? To do so, he'll have to get past that man. Sean Strickland says he's the best striker I've ever trained with. Sada Busi, last year's welterweight champion. And Brett Okamoto caught up with the Swedish Denzel. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Well, Sadabu, uh, this fight is for money. It is for back-to-back -back championships. But how much of it is about redemption that you just got to beat this guy who beat you previously? To be honest, it's more so about getting my hand raised, uh, keeping, uh, keeping my win streak on. Uh, I've been putting so much work, so uh, I'm confident. Do you think there will be a moment in this fight, though, where maybe we see it on his face? They're like, hey, this isn't the guy that I remember I fought previously. Uh, that's a that's a, that's a good question. To be honest, uh, that uh, I'm, I'm I think so, but I'm ready for everything. I'm ready for him to be there with me for five rounds. But I'm also ready for uh, you after a couple of minutes seeing. Oh, it's different. Yeah, I, I know you're always ready for five rounds. But what does your heart say? What does your gut say? You think this thing goes 25 minutes, or you think you can put him away? My gut says I'm getting my hand raised. All right. Well, we're looking very much forward to seeing it. Thank you, Sadabu. Good luck. Sadabu C. He's got gold from last year. He wants another belt, another $1 million check. He wants a legacy-defining performance, and he wants a Bellator champion in the future. Magomed Magomed Karimov also wants a second gold, a second million dollars, and wants to establish himself as the best welterweight on planet Earth. Sadamu C, Magomed Magomed Karimov, for the strap next. Monuments on monuments on monuments in Washington, D.C. 
A gorgeous city, a beautiful night, and a life-changing opportunity here inside the PFL Smart Cage. We've seen it twice tonight. Jesus Pinedo with his first championship. Impa Kasunganai with his first championship. There won't be a first-timer in this fight because both of these welterweights already have BFL gold. Magomed Magomed Karamov from 2018, Sadabusi from 2022. The one seed and the three seed squaring off for a championship fight. This welterweight championship is brought to you by Celsius Live Fit. Sadabusi, proud representative of Sweden. Magomed Magomed Karamov, part of that distinguished and proud Dagestani fight lineage. He started his career and his training under the tutelage of Abdul Manap Nurmagomedov like so many did. He has relocated to ATT. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, Magomed, Magomed Karamov. We've seen it all from Maga. Precision striking, grinding wrestling performances. Incredible and opportunistic submission skill. A true mixed martial artist. He's got the boxing, the kickboxing, the jujitsu, the wrestling to carry him against the best in the world. Plagued by injuries in previous seasons. He's only lost to Ray Cooper the third inside of the Smart King. And as much as we talk about the change in the growth, Maga Millions is not impressed with Sadabusi's movement forward in the Smart King. Он ничем не отличился, он такой же боец, та же техника, ничего разносторонний я в нем не видел. Вот такой же Садибу, который был в 21 году. Он я собираю все пять раундов прижимать, доминировать его. Все время нападать, прессинг, под прессингом пять раундов держать. And in, and in the red corner, Sadabu C. Denzel taking his time, savoring the moment, chasing his second straight championship inside this BFL Smart Cage. We saw him start his BFL career as a middleweight. After the middleweight division was eliminated, he said, fine, I'll cut to 170. Despite the fact that he has no body fat, he's six feet three and well muscled, he said, I'll make the weight, and he's done so every time like a true professional. A world champion kickboxer. The formula was at one point simple. Get him to the ground, you have a chance to beat him. Sadabusi relocated everything, his life, his training camp. And he shored up the wrestling. Now, not so easy to take down Sadabusi. And somehow his striking with that wrestling improvement has gotten even more comfortable, even more fluid. We saw it with the spinning wheel kick knockout earlier in the year. The best version of Sadabu C manifesting itself at Extreme Couture. And there seems to be a theme in this fight. Maga's not impressed with what Sadabu has become, and Sadabu doesn't seem to think that Maga has grown in the two years since they last fought. So for this last two years, I believe that uh, it's been a very, very, very important time for me, especially last year. Started with uh, 
looking at all the holes that I had in my game, especially in the wrestling department, uh, being a little bit hesitant and getting into s some situations because of that. I am now feel comfortable, whatever. I'm feeling like a more complete fighter. Uh, to be honest, uh, and that's not a shot at him because he's always been a great fighter, but I haven't seen anything um, new in his game. Uh, if you look at me, I believe that most people would say that for the past two years, I would probably be the most improved fighter. Welterweight Championship, Tale of the Tape, brought to you by Celsius. Sadabusi is 36 years of age. Magomed, Magomed Karimov is 33. Sadabu is 6'3", two inches taller than Maga. Both men weighed in at the 170-pound limit, and you can see the height Translates to a massive reach advantage for Sada Busi, a full seven inches on the arms and five on the legs. All right, keys to victory for both of these fighters. For Sada Bu, it's about his long range weapons. He's tall, lanky for the division, has to use them well here to keep Magomed on the outside. Also, his takedown defense is gonna be critical to his success here, and his counter striking is gonna have to be on point. For Magomed, He's got to utilize those takedowns, bring that pressure, and keep that head moving to avoid those counter strikes from Sadabu. Andy Shepard, take it away. The following is a seven figure fight. Five rounds of action for the PFL Walter Weight Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He is a wrestling specialist and stands six feet one inches tall. He weighed officially at 170 pounds and in 39 fights has built a record of 33 wins and six losses. 22 victories coming by way of stoppage. Fighting out of Dagestan, Russia. He is the 2018 PFL welterweight champion. Magomed! Magomed Karimov! And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He's a kickboxing specialist and stands six feet three inches tall. He weighed in officially of 169 and three quarter pounds and has built an MMA record of 16 victories, six defeats, two draws and one no contest. Fighting out of Stockholm, Sweden. He is the 2022 PFL Welterweight Champion, the Swedish dancer, Sadabu C. Your referee and judge, Jaren Valev. All the way back, all the way back, all the way back. On my cue. Sadabu C in the blue. Magomed Magomed Karimov wait, wait, in the gray. Wait. Touch of the gloves and a brief embrace. The beginning of five potential five minute rounds. Sadabu in the southpaw stance. Trying to use that lead leg as a means to try to get to that clinch position. Now bringing that pressure. Magomed getting aggressive early here. Jason Jackson, the Bellator welterweight champion, newly minted, looking on with great interest. BFL purchased Bellator and promised us a champions versus champions card in 2024. Randy, a lot of people think this is where the fight will be decided. Can Magomed Magomed Karimov out-wrestle Sadabusi? Can he get him down to the ground and keep him there? Because that's how you keep yourself out of danger against Sadabusi. Yeah, interesting. Magomed looking to do some twisting. He's got that deep underhook. He's hanging his head a little bit on that side. Either a slide by or a foot sweep here. A twisting body lock is what I think he's going to try and set up.
Now, Sadhu's not allowing Magomed to get an angle on him. He's not allowing him to control those hips. Staying nice and comfortable there. He's the taller, longer fighter. That gives him a slight advantage from that chest to test position. Okay, let's work. Body lock here. There's the step oh, around. Here's the angle. There's the takedown. Good patience from Magomed there. Sadabu not in a great spot here at all. Magomed trying to take the back. Sadabu recognizing where he's at. Doing a good job of not letting Magomed get an anchor. Magomed trying to get one anchor in now, but Sadabu gets to his feet. Great job by Sadabu nice to get back to his feet. Nice hand fighting, beautiful underhook. That was beautiful. <clears throat> Not easy to do against a grappler like Magomed Magomed Karamov, but halfway through round number one, Sadabu C back to his feet. And here's where Magomed needs to be careful. These knees from the taller athlete, you can dig these right in. <clears throat> yeah, this is where Sadabu really should kind of disengage. He's got that arm on the inside of the, the forearm of Magomed with his left arm. Should try to create space and reset. Oh, oh. oh, another attempt at a hip toss. Gets the trip. Scrambled by Sadabu. Oh. Nice job. Landed a nice left hand as he was getting up as well. That surprised Magomed Karamov. You can see the contrasting styles here. Magomed jittery and always bouncing, always moving on his feet. Sadabu with this measured approach. Doesn't mind being flat-footed temporarily. Nice long left by Sadabu C. Magomed has to watch out for both of those lower limbs. Sadabu will throw the high kicks, the knees. He'll beat up the leg. Very comfortable kicking. But will he be so comfortable kicking against someone with the wrestling of Magomed Magomed Karam? That's a great question, Sean. And each time you're posted on one leg, you're throwing a kick, you're vulnerable. It's tough to sprawl, tough to counter those takedowns. So Sadabu's got to be selective at bringing those feet up. Stomping kick to the lead leg is a weapon that Magomed likes to use. And I think he likes to use it because it's oh, him and the right hand. Huge Another right one. hand. And then he tries it again and again. And now Sadabu C has to change levels and grab chest to chest. Yeah, and it's a good weapon to use, especially against someone who's as long as Sadabu C there. It's a little sabat kick he throws, trying to catch that shin or knee of Sadabu C. And that's what makes Magomed Karamov such a threat, is that you don't have to just worry about his wrestling. You got to watch out for his striking as well. A couple of nice right hands there. Perhaps the most significant strikes of the round for Magomed. Back to the corners they go. With the championship experience for both of these men, you know that they came into this ready for a full 25 minutes if necessary. All right, so here's Sadabu. Lands a nice left hand there. Magomed trying to exchange with him there. Kind of fainted. That lead leg stop landed a nice right hand that caught go, Sadabu by up. surprise. Check it up, please. Let's go, let's go. Tried to land another one. Not quite as hard as that first one, though. Let's go, let's go. Check it out. Let's go. Back in the Sadabu C, 2022 champ in the blue trunks in the southpaw stance. Magomed Magomed Karimov, 2018 welterweight champ in the gray. Sweden versus Dagestan. Oh, 
Ooh. Nasty, that stomping kick took the balance out from under Sadabusi. Sadabu scrambled well, got right back to his feet before Magomed cover him. I jammed that knee up briefly. Hopefully there's no damage to that leg. Dan Hardy, we're six minutes in. What do you think? I think that was an important first round for Sadabusi. I think he proved to Magomed Karimov that he has improved his game. His sub defense is there, his scrambling is there, and his takedown defense, of course, is far more measured this time around. I think the longer this fight goes, beautiful, but straight back to his feet, look at that. I think the longer this fight goes, the more Sadabusi is going to relax and the more discouraged Magomed Karimov is, is going to get. Getting him down to the floor and working submissions has got to be a key for Magomed Karimov, but he can't shy away from his striking. It's a nice twisting body lock attempt by Magomed Karimov. The second Sadabusi's knees touched the ground, he popped right back to his feet. Yeah, I don't think Maga's liking those knees down the middle from Sadabusi. Twisting body lock. Sadabu C gets it. He scrambles right away, creates distance. Oh. Nice knee up the middle by Sadabu. Beautiful straight right to the body from Maga. Now Sadabu attacking the body with the kicks. Keep it clean. Maga catches the leg, uses it for the takedown. Sadabu right back to his feet, not willing to concede anything. Yeah, this is going to be a big confidence builder for Sadabu C. Nice job getting inside, getting an underhook, and getting back chest to chest. We have seen Magomed get tired in the past. And this is going to be frustrating for him. Getting close to a lot of takedowns, having your opponent get right back to his feet. That's all work. That's all yeah. energy. Spend a lot of energy to take the guy down. To have him pop right back up can be just as demoralizing as being put back on the deck. Absolutely. And we've seen how patient Sadabusi can be. Even with that spinning wheel kick, he set it up, he tried it a couple of times, he didn't rush anything, and then finally dialed it in. Ian Parker, how did you bet this fight? Sean, I actually took Magomed, Magomed Karimov off the money line. He was minus 190 to start. The odds are now as high as minus 270 in his favor. You know, I know everyone's talking about Sandro C's improved takedown defense, but Magomed Karimov is the one landing the more powerful shots. I think that's going to give him confidence with the striking, which will then open up his takedowns. I think this fight's going to go very deep, very far, but once that fight gets to the floor later on, that's where he might take over. Right now, I have him up. If the round ends now, up 2-0. Thank you, Ian Parker. One minute left in this second round of Welterweight World Championship. One million dollars and the strap on the line. Maga tries to catch another kick. Maga continues to look for that left hook. Sadabu circling right into it. But I agree with Ian. I think Maga's landing the harder shot. Sadabu doing a great job of stopping the takedowns or getting back to his feet, but he's got to do more. He, start, he needs to start to get some more power onto his shots as we move into the later rounds. Well, you hear top-level fighters who train with Sadabu C talk about how good he is at making reads and solving puzzles. And the best way to keep him out of that mode is to make him defensive, to kick his legs, to punch him in the face, to attack the body. Interesting couple first rounds here. A little bloody nose. So you see Megamet Kiramov with the single leg. He's trying to find a way to run the pipe. 
and put Sadabu on the deck. Sadabu hits the deck and gets right back to his feet, not willing to concede the position and make Magomed Magomed Kirimov work for that takedown. Janie says round three to come. Sada Busi off the stool. Magomed Magomed Karimov in his gray trunks also ready to go. Third of a potential five. Sadabu now in the orthodox stance to start the round. He will switch frequently. Two welterweight champions here in the PFL. Oh. A little hesitation. He brought the leg up and then he whipped out the extension. Tiger catches a kick again. Rushes in after it. Sadabu starting to get more aggressive here. He's got to get some offense. Yes. Defeat defense is its own merit, it's its own reward. You got to defend him, the fight's over. But he's got to get some offense going. He's got to score. We're in the third round here. Oh, that hurt his body, looked like. Straight right to the body. And Sadabu back up. Now look at this. You don't see it. Oh, uh -oh. That's a guillotine attempt. He's got a good one too. It's tight. It's very tight. Very tight attempt here for Maga to Maga. Okay, there's a tag. Maga millions. Submission victory in round three. That's all it takes. Sadabu is leaning over a little bit too much and. Maga is so good with that front choke. I think that body shot hurt him. Yeah. And that's why he got desperation and had to shoot himself. Because he was getting that pressure after being hurt. And how about the callback to 2018? Five years ago, wow. Maga won his first PFL championship, his first $1 million, with that choke against Ray Cooper. And he just jumps on it. He seizes it so quickly. Sadabu doing everything he could to extricate his body from the control of Maga's hips and has to tap. If you ask Magomed Magomed Karimov how many fights he's got, but well, pro fights, this was his 40th pro fight. Wow. For a 33-year-old man, that's a lot of experience. If you talk to him about, well, what about amateur fights? <laughs> what about amateur fights, Maga? How many of those do you have? Well, no official tally, but his estimate is about 500. Yeah, okay, wow. And how many of those decent were amount. against Bear? Yeah, a decent amount. <laughs> Franco Cajunomic stats bundle. Maga, two takedowns. Wasn't able to mount any real serious offense after the takedown. Sadabu C got back to his feet, scrambled immediately. And then when Sadabu initiates a grappling exchange, ducks down to try and wrestle, Maga and Maga and Karimov makes it pay for it. Here's your AI score. All three rounds in favor of Bogdan Bogdan Karimov. Round two, extremely close. The only way to score a perfect 100 is, of course, to get a finish inside the round. Well, let's take a look at that body punch here from Maga. Right to the solar plexus. You see the arms kind of drop down. Sadabu takes a deep breath, trying to get out of there. Some nice lateral movement, but Maga chases him down, scoops up that guillotine choke. See the bend in the neck, taking away the posture, getting a lot of leverage on that neck, squeezes, and that's all she wrote for Sadabusi. 
And if we were to build a Mount Rushmore of PFL fighters right now, you have to talk about Magomed Magomed Karamov. He has more wins than anybody in PFL history. He's 15 and one inside the smart cage. Two-time welterweight champion now, obviously a one-time runner-up. His only loss at the hands of his rival, Ray Cooper, who he beat in season one and then lost to in season three. And you look at him smiling. And had a visa issue. Could have won it for a third time, you know, That's had right. he not run into that visa issue. So he has been so dominant in this division. I want to know what Jason Jackson thinks about that. <laughs> Andy Shepard makes it official. Ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen, a referee Jiren Valev called a halt to the action at one minute and 17 seconds of round number three. Declaring your winner via physical tap out to a guillotine and 2023 PFL welterweight world champion, Magomed, Magomed Kerimov! Maga million, Maga million. Two one million dollar checks. And another championship for the Dagestani contingent. He lives and trains in South Florida at American Top Team. Pete <laughs> Murray, BFL CEO with a $1 million check for MAGA. The last time he won a million dollars here in the PFL, he took some of that money and he built a school, a kindergarten for children in his hometown. Still operational, still going. Maybe a high school next. Dan Hardy is in the smart cage with your 2023 welterweight champion. And how about this face-off? Straight into the face-off, ladies and gentlemen. Magomed Magomed Karamov, 2023 PFL world champion, facing off against Jason Jackson, the Bellator champion. What a fight that is going to be in 2024. Not a lot of animosity right. between those two, but there will Let's be eventually. Let's have a few words with the newly crowned champ. Well, two newly crowned champions, right? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Magomed Magomed Karimov. Well, how does this first, first of all, how does this feel for you? Straight away facing off against another champion. Champion, <laughs> We've done amazing work, um, you know, thank you to my team and everybody, uh, it's been a long time coming. First of all, I'm very excited to be champion and now I have to face Bellator champion, so we have next step coming up, very exciting. Uh, Mr. Jackson, tell me about that performance, what impressed you about it? Beautiful performance and congratulations, I have a lot of respect for you, but come February, we're gonna knuckle up and get it. And PFL, thank you so much for having me here, and I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. Tell me what you think about this. Did you see his performance the other week? Very impressive. Yeah, I saw him yeah, so his fight, that was pretty impressive. I mean, I know him personally, he, he's an amazing fighter. And now that I have to face him in February, oh man, I cannot wait for that. So tell me about the body shot. You landed a body shot which seemed to hurt your opponent. And then straight away he went for a takedown and you clamped on that guillotine with a lot of confidence. Did you know you'd hurt him with the body shot? And did you know the guillotine would get the finish? Uh, 
Yeah, I think the body shot, I, I probably hit his liver, and I think that's where he slowed down a little bit, and all I had just to finish him, I already smelled blood in the water. And you like the idea of fighting a Bellator champion next year? Potentially two belts over your shoulders? Yeah, I see it uh, as a next step because I already have one belt and I'm gonna face the uh, Bellator champion that's doubling my money, doubling respect. I'm definitely looking forward to it. It's gonna be a great fight. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Magomed! Magomed Karimov! Maga takes home his second belt. And that woman right there wants a second belt of her own. This one would be in two different weight classes. Larissa Pacheco looking to become the first PFL two division champion. Larissa Pacheco! Foi uma realização de um sonho também. Bom, naquele momento eu só pensava em tudo que eu tinha passado, em tudo que eu tinha sofrido. Eu tirei uma tonelada das minhas costas, eu tirei toda aquela pressão e depois foi só alegria, né? Long before Larissa Pacheco beat the odds in the cage, she defined them in life. Pacheco grew up in the poor town of Marituba, Brazil, finding MMA thanks to a social project for underprivileged children. Pacheco blossomed quickly, and at just 20 years old, she entered the UFC. But losses followed to the much more experienced Jessica Andrade and Jermaine Durandamy. With almost nothing in her pockets, Pacheco then took a chance and moved to Rio, hoping to recover from a broken arm and continue chasing her dream. Tinham dias difíceis, tinham dias às vezes eu não consegui sair da ilha para poder treinar, para poder me locomover. Eu tinha ajuda de alguns amigos para poder comer, que foram coisas que me deixaram forte, que me ajudaram e me prepararam também para que eu chegasse no momento que eu estou hoje e voltasse aqui como campeã mundial. Pacheco's persistence has paid off, and it's not just that she's winning, it's how she's winning. Pacheco. Pacheco has seven first-round knockouts over the last three seasons, the most of any fighter, man or woman, in the league. Another right hand and another! Oh, big shot! The referee! Sounds like it goes to it off! Fabian faced with the decision of trying to give up her back, and that will be enough. I have a lot of energy. I think I'm a very young athlete. I only have 29 years old, and I still have five or six years to go. Pacheco and another now she can become the first two division champion in PFL history. Espero influenciar de alguma forma mulheres, crianças, é, pessoas a lutarem pelos seus objetivos. Eu tô aqui à base de muita luta e de nunca ter desistido daquilo que eu queria. There's Larissa Pacheco putting some final touches on a warm up. She'll make the walk, chasing her second VFL belt soon. There's Marina Moknakina, seven times Sport Sambo champion. Couldn't find any women to train with her because she's getting too difficult to handle. More on this fight with Dan Hardy. Thanks, Sean. Now, of course, Larissa Pacheco, a lethal striker with a great ground game. But the key in this fight for Moknakina might be the clinch. She's very good at destabilizing her opponents and forcing them to the floor. Even if they scramble back to their feet, it's a very exhaustive process. Watch this breakdown of how she utilizes the clinch to get this armbar finish. Here we are with Laybrock in the clinch position against Moknakina, using good head position to try and avoid getting taken down. Moknakina does a good job of dragging her along the fence here, forcing her to re-establish her foot position. As she steps across, Marina Moknakina is going to wrap around with her left leg, 
whilst at the same time pulling down with the left underhook and dragging her opponent to the canvas. A really clever takedown, taking the base away of her opponent and passing to side control straight away where she's able to start working for this armbar attack. As she steps off for the armbar, you can see Laybrock knows exactly what's coming. She knows her opponent is trying to isolate this arm and she does everything that she can to stop her. But Marina Moknatkina is an expert in this position and you can see perfectly the mechanics of the armbar. Driving down with her legs, driving down with her arms, but at the same time pushing up with her hips into the elbow of her opponent, bending her arm in the wrong direction and forcing the tap. Larissa Pacheco. Criminally left out of the conversation time and time again for who is the best female fighter on the planet. She wants to become undeniable. Marina Moknatkina saw the upset that Larissa pulled off against Kayla Harrison a year ago and says, I will do the same thing tonight. Pacheco and Moknatkina next. That's a nice looking Christmas tree in our nation's capital, right outside the anthem. Inside the anthem is where our smart cage is set up. And Takedown, our new official apparel partner. Shop the number one fight short in the world this Black Friday. Get up to 50% off the entire site when you scan to shop tonight. Brought to you by Takedown, brand new partner of the PFL. Catches Clay Collard, one half of the main event. Still to come later tonight, we've got a couple fights in the interim as he gets loose. He's a two-time semifinalist. This is his first trip to the championship bout. His opponent, Olivia Alvin Mercier, last year's champion. Still undefeated in the smart cage. It's only injury that has taken him out of previous seasons. He's healthy, he's ready to go. He's more of a finisher now than he's been at any point in his career. And he's talked repeatedly about potentially finishing his career with a championship tonight. Dennis Goldsoff also been plagued by issues that have kept him out of a championship. He was a semifinalist four times, but this is his first opportunity to earn a million dollars and a gold strap. Combat Sambo world champion multiple times. Six feet five inches tall, an absolute physical specimen. We'll see him against Hena Fajera coming up later. But first, women's featherweight business to attend to. Larissa Pacheco, the number one seed, has looked absolutely dominant. Even since making the cut, down to 145. Marina Moknatkina, always a formidable grappler, has shored up her striking in a way that few expected her to, earning the two seed and this championship bout. <laughs> 2023 Women's Featherweight World Championship is brought to you by Celsius. Five five-minute rounds between Larissa Pacheco and Marina Mokdakina. Making their way to the PFL Smart Cage, fighting out of the blue corner, Marina Mokdakina. Marina Mokdakina. Strong competitor with a Sambo background. Seven times sports Sambo champion. <laughs> In a rush to get into the smart cage, recently married UFC heavyweight Sergey Spivak. Fighting is the family business in that household, safe to say. She sees this championship opportunity as a reward, but she hasn't lost sight of what the million dollar prize might mean. 
Ну, это, конечно же, некий такой презент, за, опять-таки, за твои труды, потому что ты не меньше вкладывал в свою карьеру для того, чтобы оказаться именно здесь. У меня большая семья, то есть прям грандиозно, пока не думала о том, что куда их потрачу, но больше фокус на бое, но миллион долларов никогда не будет лишним в твоей жизни. In the red corner, Larissa Pacheco. <laughs> Larissa Pacheco, 26 pro fights, 22 career wins, still only 29 years of age. Perhaps the most explosive striker in women's mixed martial arts here in 2023. More first round finishes than any athlete in the PFL, male or female. Her goal is to become the first two division champion in this company's history. And to insert her name into the conversation for all of these super fights that are being speculated about after the PFL and Bellator merger. Last time out, Larissa Pacheco finished Elena Kolesnik in less than 30 seconds. He doesn't see this championship fight lasting long either. Bom, a minha previsão para essa próxima luta é no primeiro round. Eu acredito que ela seja, ela é mais dura do que a Elena. É, dá pra ver pela estrutura dela e pelo, pelas lutas que eu vi, ela aguenta bastante porrada no, no, na luta, mas eu acredito que ela ainda não encontrou uma mulher que bata que nem eu bato. Então, eu acredito que no primeiro round, não vou dar o tempo, mas acredito que no primeiro round essa luta acaba. The other tape for this featherweight championship is brought to you by Celsius. Larissa Pacheco, 29 years of age. Marina Malknakina is 35. Most of these women, five feet, six inches tall. Reach advantage on the arms goes to Larissa Pacheco. The opposite is true on the legs with Marina Malknakina seeing that measurement in her favor. All right, keys to victory here for Pacheco. She's got to be on point with her takedown defense, has to establish her boxing range and land those striking combinations, not just try to force one big shot. And for Maknakina, she has to feint her way in to try to hit those takedowns, have that forward pressure, see if she can back up Pacheco and stay composed if she finds herself in trouble in this fight. Andy Shepard, the voice of our smart kid. Ladies and gentlemen, the following is a seven-figure fight. Five rounds of action for the PFL Women's Featherweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. She is a Sambo specialist and stands five feet six inches tall. She weighed in officially at 144 and one half pounds and holds a record of 11 wins and three losses. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Marina Maknakina! And her opponent fighting out of the red corner. She's a jiu-jitsu specialist and stands five feet six inches tall. She weighed in officially at 145 pounds in 26 fights. She has earned a record of 22 victories and four defeats. 19 wins coming by way of stoppage. Fighting out of Maratuba, Brazil, she is the 2022 PFL Women's Lightweight Champion, Larissa Pacheco. Your referee in charge, Kevin Mulhall. Larissa Pacheco there in the purple trunks. Marina Moknakina will be in the gray. Pacheco, a fast starter to say the least. You ready? 
Safe. Touch of the gloves. Potentially five five minute rounds. As this fight opens, Pacheco a minus 1450 favorite. Biggest favorite on the card tonight. And Jake Paul stops by oh. as Larissa lands a right hand. Jake Paul, hardest hitting woman in the world right in front of you. Welcome to the show. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, let's see what Larissa can do if she can keep up that streak here in the first round. See, look at that. Woo! Keep firing. <laughs> as she always does. We see the hooks and the straight rights from Larissa Pacheco. Have you been impressed with your boxing when you've seen it previously? Yeah, you know, she, she has that, that striking, that, that uh, boxing skill that she brought over to MMA. So, ooh, the good head movement. Oh, good There's reaction. The kick attempt the well. kick. She's looking good, and she, she stuffed Marina's takedown there very early on. So smart to keep her standing in the first round. Marina needs to shoot here. Is Larissa's at that dog. At that dog. Oh, and the oh, forward pitch from Larissa. Oh, my goodness. She's Overhand right in the left hook. She's taking some big shots, but she stayed composed. She kept her feet moving. Well, we've seen Marina Malnakina. She's got a great chin. And she will continue to press even when exhausted. Another right hand from Larissa Pacheco, swung wild on the follow -up. Yeah, Larissa continues to set up that right hand and is landing it repeatedly. Just hit the top of the head of Marina there. Marina biting down and swinging back. Not necessarily the exchanges you want to get in, but she's game. She is, but like a lot of ladies who have fought Larissa Pacheco, when they get hit, it's like they are so surprised by the amount of power that Pacheco can create in the smart cage. Now Marina in on a grappling exchange, but again, Larissa Pacheco, you're not safe in grappling with her. She is also an excellent jujitsu specialist. She's got eight submissions to her record, 11 knockouts. Let's go, let's make something happen. Jake Paul, we Can talk about her, Larissa Pacheco being a Real complete mixed martial arts. It's only recently she, that she right, discovered that guillotine. crazy oh, power. She's got him in tight. She, guillotine. Hits will, her in. Will she finish? It looks, it looks locked in. Haven't seen that since Lyoto Machida and John Jones. That's that Brazilian jiu-jitsu right there. Oh. Shout out Rio. Shaco using that choke. Oh, nice roll into that knee bar. Here's a knee bar attempt. Oh, she's got it tight. She's got it. Oh, oh, no. She's got it tight. Rolling for this attempt. She's got to turn. She's got to turn away there. She's turning to the right to the right angle now. Just needs to turn her heel. She's just slipped that heel. Oh boy. Oh boy. What an attack by Marina wow. Magnakina. Incredible development here in this featherweight world championship. Oh. Marina Magnakina. Striking on the leg! Wow, how is she not finishing that? She's got to have now her she's got to, she's got to turn her knee away from her. Try to get her toes to face away from Marina Maknakina. It's not going to be enough to just keep pushing that arm away. She can re-attack again and again. Beautiful leg attack by Maknakina. She's trying to kick those hands off and roll her way out of it. Very, very tight knee bar. Now there she's out. Now turn. she turned her toes away from her. She's going to be out of this now. That was close. Larissa Pacheco nearly caught with that knee bar. Legs still not completely out of Marina Malkakina's control. And now she's escaped. He goes right back to her. Oh, 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 and now she's angry. That's the yep, problem. Yep. <laughs> you don't poke the bear now. Yeah. Larissa said it would be inside of one round. She's got 30 seconds to make good on that prediction. Jake, does she do it? Oh! Oh, oh my gosh, my goodness. Goodness. She's Eating catching, these punches. She's catching a bunch of those. Wow. Hammer wow. fits now from the top position. The Shaco is relentless with these strikes. She hooked on her shorts. Yep. Well, referee doesn't toes. see it. Referee doesn't see it. Now he does. 
Final few seconds of the round, and Marina Mokhnakina will survive the first frame. What a round. Wow. Marina, very slow to get back to her feet, and I wonder if there's any damage to that knee of Larissa Pacheco. She was in that for a while, guys. That had to have popped, because yeah. that was hyperextended for sure. And you see it often in women's mixed martial arts fights. The arm bars, the knee bars, they get a little more flexibility, a little more extension than their male counterparts might be able to survive. That might be what saved Larissa. Big overhand right, followed with the left hook. Another one-two combination. There's that overhand right again. There's the roll to the knee bar. Gets the feet across the hips, extends that knee, hands crossed, applying that hip pressure and hyperflexing that knee. Pacheco trying Second to fight down. that grip using her foot, trying to kick that lock Second off so down. she can turn her toe. But not gonna continues to adjust, trying to find the angle and the leverage. Pacheco trying to stand and get weight on it. And it was the ground and pound from Larissa Pacheco. Here's round number two. 145 pound women's world championship here in the PFL. Potentially a matchup with the best women in Bellator. And of course, one million dollars on the line. Jake's got likes this fight so much he's gloving up. <laughs> Get ready. I'm fired, up. <laughs> I'm fired up. Put me in, coach. <laughs> Hey, I don't, I don't know if it's gonna make it out of this round. Marina looks tired in the corner there, breathing it hard. So I think Larissa could step on the gas here, put some pressure, walk her down, and just let the hands go. I think she could end it. Good entry here from Marina. Head outside, trip and down. Larissa able to get back to her feet. Nice scramble there. And a nice knee, knee. Right to the midsection. Knee to the body that landed there. Very nice shot by Mathakana in a second effort to get her down. Forcing Pacheco to scramble. I mean, Marina's a good grappler. I mean, went the distance with Kayla. And Jake, you mentioned the fatigue setting in for Marina Mathakana. One thing about Larissa's explosive style, it, take, it drains that gas tank. If Marina can push her into deeper waters, how much does this fight change? Yeah, it looks like they're both kind of taking some time to breathe. And if Marina can clean up those shots and get her energy together and keep the fight off the off the feet, then she has a better chance of winning here, obviously. So they look like they're both kind of slowing this pace down. They really both went for it in the first round. And both defending the knee bar and trying to hold it in took a lot of energy from both ladies. Big news this week, Jake Paul. Bellator purchased by the PFL. You're one of the PFL's great partners. How excited are you about that news? Huge, huge. You know, we, we have so much momentum going for us right now, and, and momentum is one of the most powerful forces in the world, so. You know, big, big things are happening, big things to come, and it's just very, very exciting. And even now, the champions being able to face off against each other is absolutely huge. Ooh, nice, nice right hand right there. there. Now she ducked right into it. Uh, we saw you kit it up with the 205-pound uh, fight kit. Is that a preview of things to come, Jake Paul? Look, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I got, I got my gloves on and everything. I, I want an MMA fight. I'm not just... You know, I'm not just talking about it. I'm ready, so it could be a preview of something to come, but a lot of people are ducking me, you know. We, we tried to get Nate Diaz, but he didn't want all that all that smoke. He's making up excuses. Exchange a nice right hand here. And now Larissa And the ref Pacheco. needs to get out the way. Right. <laughs> oh, wow. Changing the takedown from Mokhnakina. Beautiful time. Beautiful double leg. Kyle Larissa coming forward. A little harder, level changed, and finished a beautiful double. Yeah, excellent level change and timing there by, by Marina. Let's see if she could posture up, try to separate, maybe attack the leg yet again. Arissa looking for an angle on an arm lock. 
It's worth noting that we saw Larissa Pacheco against Kayla Harrison, even winning rounds off her back after being taken down. She was very aggressive in yep. that fight, throwing up submission attempts, even striking from her back. Haven't seen that yet here in the second round of this 145-pound championship. Marina Maknotkin finding some success, at least with the takedown. Can she create meaningful offense? Referee needs to see more and stands them up. It looks like the right ear of Marina is bleeding there. Might be from a cauliflower explosion there. Blood running down the face of Marina Maknotkin of the Russian. Now living and training in Las Vegas at Syndicate. Much more measured approach by Larissa Pacheco in this round. Larissa is starting to force a little bit. She's not fainting her way in, and Marina is starting to time her with her right hand. Exactly right. She's caught her with two of those. Seems like maybe Marina hasn't quite yet earned the respect of the striking. But the grappling certainly as Pacheco is forced to address yet another takedown attempt to closing second to that round. Signs of fatigue from both women here. And look, Kenny Florian, if you were trying to create a game plan for beating Larissa Pacheco, a big portion of that would be taking her explosiveness and her gas tank down. Yeah, absolutely. There's a nice jab from Marina. Larissa not really moving her head too much, not fainting her way in. Here's a nice right hand from Marina Maknakina. Landed pretty heavy right on the jaw. Didn't really move Larissa Pacheco, though. But you don't want to take too many of those. Here's a beautifully time takedown there from Marina. Excellent level change. Went right underneath the punch of Pacheco and put her on her back. Dan Hardy, as we open round number three, did Marina Maknakina just win the second round? You know, it's an interesting fight, this, the way that it's playing out, because for me, Moknakina was intimidated in the opening seconds of this fight, and that gave Larissa Pacheco a lot of confidence. If you see her when she gets back to her stall at the end of the first round, she was taking some deep breaths, and she's now got the respect. She's now got to a lot of respect for Moknakina's staying power and ability to recover, even if she is on the back foot. Now Pacheco's starting to really take this fight a lot more seriously, and Moknakina's starting to grow in confidence a little bit. High stakes here for both of these women. One million dollars and a belt on the line. Monakina spins away into some trouble and then out of it. And even that small accomplishment, Randy, you don't get Larissa Pacheco moving backward very often, but Monakina was able to do so there. Larissa's got to be careful she doesn't charge into another double leg. Been a lot of forward pressure on Morena. Trying to get a read on a knee there, Larissa Pacheco anticipating another shot attempt from Marina. I don't think we've seen anybody make it out of the certainly the second round with Larissa Pacheco in two years. Oh, oh. That's what Marina needs to do. She needs to continue moving. Can't get caught in the pocket trading with someone like Pacheco. A couple of right hands from Pacheco, though. What a chin. What heart from Maknakina. I'd like to see Maknakina. Little level change like she's going to shoot again and then throw that right hand. Watch your fingers. Pacheco coming up on 100 strikes landed in this fight. And you can see a very high percentage as well. Almost time that knee. Yeah, that seemed to hit her in the ribs or in the chest there. That was a hard knee. Could have been worse. Could have landed right in the face. There's another hard right hand. For what it's worth, the odds have swung very slightly back towards Marina Magnakina. She's still a big underdog here, but not as big as the gap was when this fight opened.
Jake Paul, one thing that can really frustrate a pressure fighter like Larissa Pacheco is Guillotine. running. Guillotine attempt. Nice drop to get her out of it. Saw a little wobble from oh, Makakana in that last exchange. Yeah, yeah, Larissa needed to step over to her left and cut off the other side to make Marina go to her weak side, which then would also put her into the right hand. So Larissa just needed to step over. I don't know if her team is telling her that, but she's just pressuring from the right side, which wasn't very effective. Full mount there. here. Marisa looking to pass this guard. Yeah. Now Full into the mount, mount. position. And Pacheco is going to unleash a barrage from here once she let's lets go of those arms and postures up. Marina's going to have to try to shrimp up, get out of there with the quickness. Pacheco's got to clear her head. She's got a minute and 30 seconds now to go to work from the full mount. Nice high mount. Fence yeah. is a friend here. She can pick her shots. We go to the right hand. Might be in big trouble right here. And now she's got Marina Magnakina flattened out, but Magnakina builds the base. No quit in Marina Magnakina, even in the face of serious adversity. A lot of power on everything that Larissa Pacheco throws. a much tougher position for Larissa to land meaningful grounded mount. Now she's trying to get that face crank a little bit. Good hand fighting, but Muck not gonna. Goes in the two on one to keep control of Larissa's right hand so she can't build that anchor and squeeze. I mean, just taking this fight into the championship rounds is, is a huge moral victory against someone like Pacheco with her firepower. And Marina said, there's a lot of people out there that are underestimating me. She was absolutely right. Frank. We'll head to the stools and into the championship rounds. As Kenny mentioned, Larissa Pacheco's been here before. Right, left combination. Pacheco in the pocket, hunting down her opponent. Letting those hands go. Fight from the clinch. Big overhand right. Right on the money. There's the ground and pound from the full mount position. Trying to keep her opponent in position, Pacheco. Putting an exclamation point on it from the full back mount. Second down. Fourth round coming. Marina Moknakina trying to solve the puzzle that is Larissa Pacheco, who seeks a championship in a second weight class. She won it at 155 pounds last year, going for the 145 pound strap. She'd be the first PFL fighter to do so. Well, knocking it back on her bicycle. And it can be so frustrating for a pressure fighter like Larissa Pacheco to feel she's having to chase even any contact, even any engagement. Another nasty right hand. And she is able to freeze Marina Mock in his feet. Marisa being way more patient now, showing more feints. Nice little shot there from Marina, though. I think she understands now how strong the chin of Marina Magnakina is, how seriously she has to take the grappling. 
Nice toss there. But knocking it rolls all the way through. Triangle attempt. Dan Hardy. She's got it locked. Can she finish it? She's got to get the angle. This is about the closest she's been to finishing this fight so far on the ground, of course. It's a beautiful triangle setup, but Moknakina must have been in this position a thousand times. I mean, you know, Larissa Pacheco is dominating the space, and she's doing a really good job of that, but Moknakina is making it very oh. difficult for her, and every time she tangles with the legs, this is Marina's world. She is a very, very good leg lock specialist, and Pacheco cannot relax in these positions. Yeah, and her foot lock is even better than her knee bar, so this could spell trouble for Pacheco. Marina still very dangerous, now switching to a heel hook. Her knee is out, so there's no pressure on the knee at this standpoint. She could turn around and start to pound away with her left hand. She goes too far, she's gonna put that leg right back <laughs> into danger. Now bails out to her butt. Yeah, the knee is still out. There's not gonna be enough pressure on that knee at this standpoint. As Marina, Marina can switch to a cap slicer, now it's too late. Joining us again here, two minutes left in round number four. The pace has slowed some. Either of these women going to be able to pull off the finish? Yeah, Marina was close there. They were they were playing Twister out there for real, all tied up and everything. But I, I don't know. Like we're going to see who wants it more in these championship rounds. A million dollars on the line, and this is where that heart comes out. Ooh, good, good exchanges there. But. Um, this is where the, the heart comes out, like I said, and you'll see who wants it more. Nice right hand. Takedown attempt again. Well, not gonna, trying to stay heavy on this leg, but good sprawl. Counter wrestling here from Larissa Pacheco. Marina is a gangster. I mean, she is so tough. She has dealt with a lot of shots, had some ex a lot of very tough exchanges on the feet, on the ground. She has found a way to survive and still stay in this fight. Saw a little wobble there, but I think it was more from fatigue than yeah. it was from actually getting hit. Even though it was a hard punch. Yeah, it definitely looked like the fatigue wobble. Tough to hit a moving target, and she does not stop moving. Shaco stalks in, and Maknakina chases her back out with a combination attempt. Final few seconds of this fourth round, and to the final frame we go. Last round. Sem afogo, calma. Você tá cansada, ela tá também. Ela tá sentindo demais suas mãos. Joga aí. Pega. Give her the water. Give her the water. Sem dar mal e puxar de jeito. Don't, don't lay low. Go all the way. Got to land some big hands. Trust your hands. The last round. 50. Go in and out. Careful with her takedown. Fight! 
Malknakina in the gray and Pacheco in the purple for one last round. Dan Hardy, it's been Larissa Pacheco mounting most of the offense. Yeah, I mean, you know, she, she's pretty much dominating this fight. We've had some really good moments from Malknakina. She's able to threaten when it hits the floor and chase a few submissions, etc. And I think, you know, she's generally surprised Pacheco all the way through this fight. Certainly Larissa wasn't expecting to be here in the fifth round trying to fight off a takedown here from Maknakina, who looked pretty much broken in the first round to me, but has maintained her composure and her confidence throughout, in spite of the fact being pushed around. The moral victory, though, cannot outshine the fact that Larissa Pacheco is dominating this fight. Heavy kick to the low leg of Marina Moknakina. Jake Paul, last round, what do you expect to see? Yeah, Marina's got to go for it, you know? She's just got to make something happen if she, she wants to get this victory because I think Luis is probably up on all the scorecards. So if I was her team, I'd be telling her, go wild, just start going, oh. look for something. Ooh, yes. like, She's got to turn it up if she wants to get oh. The high kick Ooh. landed, then Marina caught it. Ooh. This woman has a granite vibe. Crazy. Goodness. <laughs> no. What does it wow. take to get Marina Lock knocking out of there? I mean, she's got a cinder block for her head because I, I don't think there's a whole lot of women in the world that can eat those shots. She's in a good position here. Past the leg, she's trying to set up an arm lock here. One of her best submissions. She's lost it now. Halfway through round number five, Marina Malknakina with her best chance, potentially on top of Larissa Pacheco. Can she pass the guard? Larissa doing a good job defensively off of her back. Now trying to set up a triangle. Let's go, stay busy. Inside of two minutes now, 145 pound women's world championship. Larissa Pacheco finds herself on the bottom here in round five, but the first four rounds belong to her. Can she survive here and win a second straight $1 million championship? I think Pacheco knows she's in the driver's seat here. She doesn't need to take any risks. She unlocks that guard, she might get leg locked. She has to be very careful in this position. Shaco does appear intense to ride this out, protecting herself on the bottom. Credit to Marina Malknotkina staying in this fight for 25 minutes. Yeah, I mean, she showed amazing heart tonight. That's a few chances herself to win this fight. Still fighting. Final 10 seconds of 25 full minutes. A grueling affair in the women's featherweight division. 
final bell. Larissa Pacheco, barring any surprises, will make PFL history as the first two division champion. Knocking up. So much toughness on display. You see, she had the edge in the takedowns, but was doubled up on strikes landed. The algorithm, the AI score, gives rounds one through four to Larissa Pacheco, round five belonging to Marina Mohnatkina. Take you through, through some replays here. But here's Larissa stepping into quarter mount, doing a good job at half guard, advancing her position ultimately into mount, landed some hard ground and pound there. There's a nice right hand from Pacheco up against the cage. Pacheco attack, attacking with the triangle. The right arm is between the legs of Pacheco, not allowing for that triangle to really get tight, but she did attack a decent foot lock, which later turned into a heel hook. Pacheco able to counter that. Again, Pacheco stalking Marina. Marina showing the world how tough she is. Just a, an amazing chin, amazing display of heart. I mean, chin to chin, and Marina eats it and takes her down to the cross. It's just amazing. Larissa Pacheco is from a poor town in Brazil. Marituba does not see a lot of opportunity. No. She found the sport of mixed martial arts through a program for underprivileged children. Is on the verge of winning her second title and her second $1 million prize. Amazing. Our experts think that Larissa Pacheco did enough. The official judges scorecards are with Andy Shepard. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges score of this bout 49 of 46 for your winner by unanimous decision and 2023 PFL Women's Featherweight Champion, Larissa Pacheco! The first PFL two division champion, Larissa Pacheco, a second belt hung around her shoulder. And another big check. Adding herself to the great list of two time champions. Kayla Harrison's won two. Ray Cooper the third one two, Lance Palmer one two, Magomed Magomed Karamov one two, Magomed Karamov one two, Natan Schultz one two. Larissa Pacheco is the only one of all those names who's done it in two different weight classes. Dan Hardy is with the champion. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with a two division champion. A two division champion. That is incredible. What, a, what an amazing achievement. How are you feeling right now? I can see you're a little emotional. Campeão de duas divisões. Que, que feito incrível. Como é que tá se sentindo agora? Bom, agora eu tô feliz. Tô realizada. Foi um ano intenso de trabalho para chegar aqui e me tornar duas vezes campeã da PFL. E primeira campeã em duas categorias diferentes. É, a Marina. Não é nada do que eu pensei, ela é muito mais, ela é uma guerreira, aguentou as minhas pancadas mais fortes. Do início ao fim eu coloquei pancadas para derrubar ela, eu não consegui. Ela é uma guerreira e é uma campeã também, independente disso daqui. Eu me sinto feliz, tão so fulfilled. Foi um ano muito longo, um processo muito longo, entre o último ano, o primeiro belt, esse ano, 
first two division champion here at the PFL. Marina's a whole lot more tougher than I thought. She's a champion in her own right. She took a lot more punches than I was expecting her to take, and honored to share the cage with her. I'm gonna leave you to go and enjoy this victory and enjoy that second belt that you added to your collection. Ladies and gentlemen, Larissa Pacheco. Larissa Pacheco makes history and still two more title fights on the card tonight. Dennis Goldsov, four-time semifinalist, his first opportunity for a PFL championship. I think I'm part of this organization. Самое ее основание. Первого сезона в PFL. В какой-то веке надо все-таки побеждать и доказывать, что наша школа лучше. Это было крайне обидно, так как э, сезон для меня складывался очень удачно, и в очередной раз у меня были хорошие шансы, но волей судьбы, по-другому не назвать, э, меня все время как-то, мой путь отводит меня от финала, от полуфинала, но я надеюсь в этот раз э, все поставить на свои места. Медленно драться у меня не получается особо, поэтому в любом случае буду использовать свои лучшие стороны, скорость, передвижение. I want to be a champion of this organization. And I think I will do it. The opponent for Dennis Goldsov is that man. They call him the Problema for a reason. Getting past his athleticism and explosiveness has been a big issue for PFL heavyweights. A gente foi ali no, no arpoador, é, na Academia dos Plins, então fizemos uns exercícios. Depois tive a oportunidade de fazer um pouquinho de basquete com meu filho, a gente sempre tem esses momentos de lazer. Samuel está é, aqui comigo hoje participando um pouquinho aí. Foram muitos, já são muitos anos de estrada, muitos anos trabalhando, buscando. There's the man they call the problem. Six feet eight inches of incredible athleticism. Minha altura sempre me favorece em todas as minhas lutas. E com certeza com o Dennis não vai ser diferente. Ele, ele também é um cara muito alto, é um cara longo, né? Um cara que tem grandes qualidades dentro do octagon. Já estou muito bem preparado para essa luta. 
tanto tecnicamente, fisicamente, psicologicamente, então estou forte aí nessa final. Jesus Pinedo in the Bud Light Celebration Room. First Peruvian champion in the world of major mixed martial arts. And only 27 years of age. He took, he took down the first belt tonight. Just for Men, take down Stray Grays and Beef Apache areas with Just for Men's new one day beard and brown color. Scan that QR code in your screen to learn more about the temporary gray fighter that stays put till you wash it out. Just for Men, the official beard color brand of the PFL. A heavyweight championship co-main event. Brought to you by Celsius. Dennis Goldsov and Haina Fajera. Smart Cage fighting out of the blue corner, Hinafera! He strikes an imposing figure, Hinafera. Fills up a room. 6'8", incredible reach, unbelievable athleticism, balance, speed, dexterity of the arms and legs. He's just a different physical specimen than we often see in the sport of mixed martial arts. We've driven the point home many times. If he had been born in the United States of America, MMA never would have seen this guy. He'd have been a Division I football player, probably a professional football player, or maybe a power forward in basketball. He's the tallest PFL fighter, and you can see a knockout specialist. Hannah has a lot of respect for Dennis Goldsoft's abilities, but doesn't believe that the Russian has enough to beat the problem. Então, o Denis é um, é um lutador alto, né? um, um lutador bem versátil ali, que varia bastante entre soco, chute, entrada de queda. É, mas eu me preparei muito bem para isso, a minha movimentação é o meu diferencial, né? a minha velocidade. Então, sou um pouco maior que ele ali, a minha envergadura é maior e eu vou usar bem isso. And in the red corner, Denis Goldsall! Earlier this season, Dennis Goldsov recorded the fastest finish in PFL heavyweight history. 18-second knockout of the hard-hitting Jorgen De Castro. He's got a jousting jab, a long, vicious right hand, and incredible grappling skills. 15 career knockouts, 11 career submission victories. He is a finisher, and this is his 40th professional mixed martial arts fight. Second most all-time finishes in the PFL. Combat Samba World Champion. Unbelievably experienced in the world of competitive martial arts. He's hoping that the fourth time is the charm for these title holds. For him, the belt actually means more than the million dollar check. Ну, в первую очередь, это наивысшая точка моей самореализации. Я привезу пояс в свою страну, в свой город, покажу своим детям, и, наверное, это будет одно из самых важных 
Ну, уже в четвертый заход я пытаюсь а, забрать пояс, поэтому на самом деле больше мысли а, действительно о титуле, чем о деньгах. Поэтому для, на, на, этот, на этот раз в этом случае уже деньги второстепенные стали. Six feet eight inches tall. He also weighed in at 261 pounds, near the limit of 265. You can see the height advantage translates to a significant reach advantage on the arms and on the legs for Hena Fajera. All right, keys to victory for Goldsoft. It's all about that jab, and that jab will lead into his excellent takedowns, and he also needs to utilize some excellent ground and pound if he is able to get Fajeda on his back. And for Fajeda, needs to use those long-range strikes, be aware of that cage. Sometimes he gets caught up with that thing behind him, and he also needs to get back to his feet if he does get taken down. Andy Shepard, the voice of the PFL Smart Cage. Ladies and gentlemen, the following seven-figure fight is our co Main event of the evening. Five rounds of action for the PFL Heavyweight World Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He is a jiu-jitsu and boxing specialist and stands six feet, eight inches tall. He weighed in officially at 261 and one quarter pounds and holds a record of 11 wins, three losses and two no contests. Nine wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting at the Porangatu, Brazil. Problema in the Florida. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He is a combat sambo specialist and stands six feet five inches tall. He weighed it officially at 244 and one half pounds. In 39 fights, has built a record of 32 victories and seven defeats. 26 wins coming by way of stoppage. Fighting out of St. Petersburg, Russia. Dennis Goldstone! Your referee in charge, Fernando Yamazaki. Dennis Goldsob is there in the blue trunks. Ina Ferreira in the gray. Touch of the gloves. And the largest fight in PFL history is underway. Had a banks that calf kick early. Randy, you know better than anyone. You have to respect every bit of power that these heavyweights possess. Yep, takes blood. You can't get out of position. You can't zig when you're supposed to zag. It literally only takes one shot from these guys. Fajeda doing a good job, of just doing some subtle things, trying to get Goldsoft to jump first. PFL recently purchased Bellator, promised us champion versus champion card. And that is the Bellator heavyweight champion, Ryan Bader. Ryan, welcome to the show. What's going on, guys? Happy to be here. Look, you're not undersized, but against two guys like this, you would give up yeah. some size. What do you think? Yeah, some big boys in there. Yeah, watching this fight here. Six eight. You know, uh, close off three dang big two, so. Looking forward to this fight, watching this fight, and then let's see the camp for some camp and uh, get it going. Nice twisting body lock by Dennis Goldsoft from a double underhook position to get Pereira, Pereira to the ground. Now Goldsoft looking to improve his position. Trying to pass all the way to the mount here. And Goldsoft really driving that shoulder into the jaw of Fajeda. Now Fajeda in a much better position. He decides to go over the head instead. Now attacking that left arm of Fajeda, looking for that Kimura. He's got the grip. 
Blood from the nose of <coughs> Goldsop. Hannah Fajeda, left arm in trouble here, Dennis Goldsop. Trying to crank that shoulder. Very difficult to finish like that from half guard. Can't get out and use your hips to crank that arm. Yes. His legs are preventing that. And we asked Conan Severa, the head coach at American Top Team, who's been working with Hannah Fajero, how you get ready for someone with the versatile skills of Dennis Goldsoff. What did you do to get Hannah Fajero ready? He said, I put him through hell. <laughs> And that's exactly what Dennis Goldsoff is trying to do right now, Ezekiel choke attempt. Thought about it briefly, nothing doing. Good job by Goldsoff to pummel that right underhook right back in to get control. And we've seen Fajeda in the past on the ground, he tends to get a little bit inefficient, starts to tire. So excellent strategy here from Goldsoft to get him down early. And to keep him busy on his back. Looking for that Ezekiel again. Ryan Bader, Bellator heavyweight champion, smothering performance so far from Goldsoft, and you see he keeps attempting this Ezekiel. Yeah, you don't see that very, very often, you know, he's controlling really well here. He's looking for submissions. You know, Henna's got to get to the wall, get to the cage, and stand up. He does right now. It's uh, Goldsoft's fight. Would this also be the Bader game plan against someone like Hanna Fajeda? You know, he's so big, and, uh, you know, you get wild, you he's long, you gotta get inside, and so it's kind of a game plan to be you know, get to the face with, uh, with some shots and, and come, you know, come with punches with those things, keep you guessing. Um, and yeah, take him down, wear him out, and, and uh, you know, get a little of that, uh, that zip off his punches. Goldsoft trying to advance position here, climbing through the middle, full mount. Yeah, Goldsoft really dominating on the ground right now, trying to set up that arm triangle. I also like to see him posture up, try to rain down some ground and pound. Final 10 seconds of this first round, the heavyweight world title bout. Dennis Goldsov on top of Hainan Fajera. Both men seeking their first belt and their first $1 million check here. Smothering round from Dennis Goldsoft, but it's him who's leaking all that blood. Dan Hardy, what's the message for Hena Ferreira in the corner right now if you're coaching? I would want a low stance out of him. I would want him to avoid the, the clinch in any way, shape or form he can. Build frames on the inside, use good head position. I mean, his frame is a problem for Goldsoft. So he was able to escape that Ezekiel choke just by extending his body and being too tall. But being on the floor is absolutely not the place for Henan for Hayden. He's done an incredible job of improving his grappling. It doesn't mean that his grappling is on the level of Dennis Goldsov. Round two here, 265 pound world championship. Goldsov in the blue, Hayna Fajeda in the gray. Nice right hand by Fajeda. Flip the over the ear of Dennis Goldsoff, and there's another. Oh, and another one. Oh, oh he's hurt. Oh, he's hurt. Knocks down big time. And the hammer fist will finish. Problema with the championship. When you have speed 
and power like that, you can end the fight in an instant, especially when you're a heavyweight like Fajeda. That's how you turn the tables. Unbelievable. We and you saw that. You saw him ratchet it up when he came out for the second round yep. after spending the whole first round on his back. You saw the determination, and he was willing to stand in the pocket and let his hands go, and it paid off. Randy, we talked about it in the first round. The margin for error with heavyweights is so minuscule. Slim and none. One right hand changed the whole fight for Hena Pajeda. Dennis Goldsov is an absolute monster of a heavyweight and still couldn't deal with the speed, the length, the power of that athletic specimen. There's a swing and a miss by Ferreira. Takedown attempt by Goldsov. And Ferreira frames out. There's the big overhand left. And another overhand left. And the third one hits him right in the neck and puts him on the deck. And then the hammer fist onslaught comes until the referee has seen enough. Big right hand right in the neck. Comes down on top and half guard. The hammer fist comes raining down. Mr. Yamasaki has seen enough. The fight is over. New world champion, Henan Ferreira. Yeah, that was a, a pair of nasty right hands. And, and we have to give credit, I think, to Fernando Yamasaki, who I, I thought did a good job stopping it. He did it at yeah. the right moment. He allowed Goldstop to try to defend himself and get back in this fight, but those hammer fists were just devastating. Ryan Bader, where's Ryan Bader? Bader, he turned the tide with one right hand and now a potential opponent for your near future. What do you think of Hayna Ferreira as a PFL world champ? Yeah, first off, congrats. You know, he's, uh, he's a huge guy. Very long. You look good in there. You know, I saw kind of some weaknesses the first round, but I'm missing to get back in the cage. And uh, it's, it's a logical next fight, champ versus champ. If it's not Hayna Ferreira, uh, don't worry, because we have another massive guy named Francis Ngannou. You could always take him on instead. Much safer. Much less challenge. Let's go. <laughs> Either or. We'll do it. Good to have Ryan Bader stop by. And look at Hayna Fajera. I think wow. it might just now be sinking in that he's a millionaire. Yeah. Look at that. A dominant first round for Dennis Goldsov after the takedown. Hena Fajera did what he needed to do to survive, avoid those submission attempts. He gets back to the feet where every round starts, and he earns himself a $1 million knockout finish. Cajunomic Stats Bundle, as always, presented by Geico. Look at that. Dennis Goldsov landed more strikes in this fight. Most of those were on the ground after the takedown. The game-changing power of Hena Fajera earns him his first championship. Let's make it official with Andy Shepard. At 26 seconds of round number two. Declaring your winner via TKO and 2023 PFL Heavyweight Champion of the World, Hena Ferreira! Puta campeão do mundo, pô! Good display of sportsmanship here between these two behemoths, Aina Fajera. You talk about improvement. You talk about why this format works, Kenny Florian. He came to the PFL, unlimited potential, but very flawed. Yep. Right? He had grappling problems. He needed to make a sincere change. He needed to relocate his training camp. He did that. He hit the reset button after a bad season. 
Gets the clean slate here in 2023, and look what just happened. After American Top Team and the camps and the grappling, and now Hayna Fajera is a millionaire. You can say what you want about the individuality of this sport. You walk those four steps up into that cage by yourself, but this is a team sport. You're only as good as the guys you're training with, the coaches you have. He said he had all the modalities, a nice big facility, a lot of great training partners, and good professional coaching. And, and that brought him a long way in one season. No question about it. I mean, MMA is too difficult of a sport for talent to be enough. He had a lot of it, but it needed to be molded. It needed to be guided. He made the right choice. American Top Team did a great job with Hannah Fajita. Speaking of talent, Dan Hardy, there he is. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with your 2023 heavyweight champion for the Celsius post-fight interview, Hennen Fajita. You're filled with emotion, my friend. You have a million dollar check. You have a gold belt around your waist. Can you think of a day in your life that's been as special as this? Cheio de emoção. Cinturão, cinturão em você. Milhão, um milhão de dólares aí no cheque. Existe algum outro dia na sua vida que você sentiu esse tipo de emoção? Primeiramente, quero agradecer a todo mundo pelas energias aí, por vibrar bastante aí na minha luta. Minha família ali, meus amigos, Vitão, Claudina, todo mundo. É, Anderson Manga que está aqui, meu empresário, meu pai, meu amigo. E muito feliz, cara. Eu pedi tanto a Deus para concretizar esse meu sonho. E trabalhei muito duro. E aqui estou, cheguei, sou prova viva que tudo que você quiser, você consegue. É só trabalhar duro, seu momento vai chegar. Eu quero agradecer a todos aqui por me apoiar, todos os meus amigos, família, coaches. Nada disso vai ser notado. I've worked my entire life for this. This goes to every single one of you out here. Believe in yourself, trust in your dreams. You can accomplish it all. You've achieved so much already in your, in your young mixed martial arts career, but we had the Bellator champion Ryan Bader watching, of course, the great Francis Ngannou as well. Lots of big possibilities in your future. What do you want next? Campeão do peso pesado do Bellator, Ryan Bader, estava assistindo a luta aqui ao vivo com a gente. Tem o Francis Ngannou na jogada também. O que você quer ir para o seu próximo passo? Eu sou o novo campeão. Ô, Francis, estou aqui, irmão. Estou te esperando. Vamos fazer essa luta. I'm the new PFL heavyweight champion. Francis, I'm here. I'm waiting for you. Let's make this fight happen. Wow, what a fight that's going to be, ladies and gentlemen. Your 2023 champion, Henan Fajera. Problema. For anybody in the world, whether it's Ryan Bader or Francis Ngannou or all the heavyweights in the 2024 season, that guy is going to be a big issue as he continues to grow with the skills he can earn and learn at American Top Team. Goodness gracious. That leaves us with one fight left on the night. Olivia Albert Messier, the 2022 PFL lightweight champion has talked about this potentially being one last ride into the smart cage. Will he remain undefeated in his PFL? I think career? this year it's. Uh, I think you know, I'm. I'm truly the best Olivia I ever was. He's undefeated inside the PFL smart cage since signing with this organization. I think I'm one of the best in the world right now. Beautiful little right uppercut that knocked out the mouth guard of Burgos. Oh, yeah, I'm really looking very confident on the feet. This is the best I've, I've seen him. I, I agree with that. Yeah, I think I was good last year, but I think this year it's, uh, it's something even better. And he waves it off! OAM to the championship! When I first saw Olivier, I remember I saw the passion in his eyes, and he's very dedicated and what he does. He's a hard worker on top of being extremely talented. I think Olivier is one of his biggest strengths is his capacity to adapt himself and to become the perfect nemesis to his opponent. Well, it's hard to become champion and it's even harder to stay champion. So now he's the champion and he's the target. Back up. Three. 
It's really exciting to fight someone like Clay, you know? I'm really looking forward to this one. For the last two years, I was seeing his fight, and he always did one of the best fights every year. Give me two more rounds of this! <laughs> yeah, I'm more tactical than him, and I think he's gonna be careful, or is he gonna be like the crazy Clay like he was in his last fight? I don't know. Big body kick there by Olivier. The season in PFL is the hardest thing I, I did in my uh, professional career. I do feel I'm gonna look back at this and I'm gonna be really proud of what I accomplished during uh, those uh, two last year. But it's gonna be the biggest achievement that uh, I did. So I'm ready for 25 minutes, that's for sure. I'm ready for five rounds, that's it. The Canadian gangster will face off against that man, Cassius Clay Collard. Main event fighter for a reason, always bringing the action. Seeking his first $1 million championship after two trips to the semifinals. I like to be that exciting fight. I don't fight safe. Oh! What a chin on collar, my goodness. I'm not Mr. Perfect. I'm the guy with all the odds stacked against me. Play collar, has got Hurricane straight hurt. I'm still gonna show up and I'm still gonna put on a banger. Collard, still gonna put on those exciting shows. Oh, nice left hook. I'm still gonna get these wins, you know? Right hand drop, Stevie Ray. Hurricane straight and Cassius Clay turn in an instant classic. And I feel like family's a big motivator for everybody, whether they it's just their spouse or if they have kids. You know, I, I feel like family is one of the main reasons everybody in the world does anything. You know? don't, don't we all do something for our family? You know, so, you know, losing one brother sucks. Losing two is even worse. To be able to, to fight through the depression of that and the grief and the loss, like, they don't make them like me. God, don't make him like me. And, and he did it because he knew I could handle it, I'm sure. I've missed sporting events. I've missed parent-teacher conferences. I've missed, you know, my baby doing something for the first time. I, I miss time away from my spouse. I, I miss a lot of family time because I load up in a car, I pack up for four days and I leave and I train. The first two years in PFL, my brother kept saying, you need to get back with Jason, you need to get back with Jason. You know, after I lost to Martinez, I, I decided my, my brother's been right and I, I needed to go and be with my coach and Jason Marlich. He's good! Yeah, he's good! Yeah. OAM. He can train with GSP. He can have the big gym and big fancy coach and whatever. It doesn't matter. My coach is better. You know, yeah, we get down and dirty over here, man. We're, <laughs> we're not fancy. Nasty left hands! Stevie Ray in serious trouble. The referee has seen it. Five minutes of Cassius Clay Collard, baby. Let's go. There's the watch party. Cassius Clay Collard has a huge supporting group. Uh, Utah, stand up. That's my home state, Randy. <laughs> And now, the main event, a lightweight world championship, brought to you by Celsius. Olivia Alba Messier, Cassius Clay Collins. Making their way to the PFL Smart Cage, fighting out of the blue corner, Clay Collins. Kenny Florian, I, I might tend to overstate things at times, but I've called this man the most exciting fighter 
in mixed martial arts because that's what he is. Name for me right now someone who's more consistently exciting, Kenny. It's hard, it's hard to do that. It's hard to do that. Clay Collar <laughs> just consistently puts on shows every single time he fights. He's must-see TV. He knows no other way. I mean, he only knows how to fight exciting. He brings it every single time. Sometimes at his own demise. Right, yeah. Which, a matchup like this, it, it might be to his detriment to fight the way we always see him fight, to wade right. in and throw caution to the wind because OAM can make you pay for that. But this man, 11 career knockouts, took on the world of boxing during the pandemic and had a ton of success, was snatching the undefeated records away from prospects. He is willing to rise to any challenge. Feels like it's his destiny to take home a million dollar championship tonight. You know, OAM, his opponent, has hinted at the possibility of retirement after this season. And Clay Collard, he's he's very supportive. He wants to help with that decision. <laughs> How kind. A reason to retire. I don't want him to go out on a win. Um, you know, I, I, there is a difference between me and him. I love this shit. I live for this shit. You know what I'm saying? Every, every step of the way from training camp to everything, I just, I, I, I'm, I'm in love with it. And, and I don't think that he is, you know? So, yeah, I, I, wanna, I wanna give him a reason, you know? I've already sent one guy out the door this year. Why not make it two? <laughs> In the red corner, Olivier Aubin Lucier. He didn't choose the gangster life, the gangster life chose him. <laughs> Olivier Aubin Messier is an absolute monster of a lightweight. How does that guy make 155? That is unbelievable. It's really, really crazy. I mean, you stand next to this guy, and he's every bit as big as Impica Sunganai, who won a world title at 205 earlier in the evening. And look, they're built the exact same. Somehow, this man is 50 pounds lighter. Last year's champion, the only thing that has taken him out of contention for championships in the past has been injury. He's on a nine-fight win streak, undefeated in the smart cage. Came up under one of the all-time greats in mixed martial arts, George St. Pierre, looking to go back to back. And he has hinted at the possibility of riding off into the sunset with a win here. Although the Bellator purchase, I think, might have changed some things. The Canadian gangster has a reputation for being cerebral inside the cage. His fight IQ and skills, they've led him to those nine straight victories. A 10th win will make him a back-to-back -back PFL champion and add him to the list of the all-time greats in this organization. You have to be smart, you know, you have to understand your strength, you have to understand your weakness, and uh, you have to use your strength. Like, MMA is so tough, it's so rough, that you, you try to prove something, you know, you try to prove something to everybody else, you try to prove something to yourself, and you shouldn't do that in MMA, you know, you, uh, you should uh, really, like, play your game, and that's what I understood, I think, in, uh, at the end of uh, my career. Here's your tale of the tape brought to you by Celsius. OAM is 34 years age, making him four years older than Cassius Clay Collard. Collard is the taller fighter at six feet even. Both men weighed in at the lightweight limit of 155 pounds. The longer arms belong to Clay Collard, the longer legs belong to the Canadian gangster. All right, keys to victory for OAM. About his leg kicks, his takedowns, and he needs to control the pace here and control the chaos. That is Clay Collard. And for Collard, he needs to look for those body shots. He needs to move his feet in this fight. Can't get pinned up against, pinned up against the cage. And he needs to utilize that takedown defense.
One more time, the voice of the smart cage, Andy Shep. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's contests are sanctioned by the DC Combat Sports Commission and Deputy Commissioner Eskip Brown presiding. Washington, DC. The following seven figure fight is our main event of the evening. And the world is watching. Five rounds of action for the PFL Lightweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He is a striking specialist and stands six feet tall. He weighed in officially at 154 and three quarter pounds. Across his 35 fight career, he has earned a record of 24 wins, 10 losses, and one no contest. 14 wins coming by way of stoppage. Fighting out of Burley, Idaho. Cassius And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He is a BJJ specialist and stands five feet ten inches tall. He weighed in officially at 154 and three quarter pounds and holds a professional record of 20 victories and five defeats. Fighting out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada, he is the 2022 PFL lightweight champion, the Canadian gangster, Olivier Aubin-Mercier. Your referee in charge, Mario Yamazaki. You're a test club going now, let's do this. Final instructions from your referee, Cassius Clay Collard in the gray. The Canadian gangster, Olivia Alvin Massier, 2022 champ in the red. Our main event is underway, five potential five minute rounds and one million dollars on the line. Both of these fighters talked about those calf kicks being part of the strategy. Clay Collard opens the action. Yeah, Clay's trying to attack that lead leg, doing a good job so far. Just has to be careful to not leave his head in that center line. Nice head movement by Collard. Finishing that combination with another kick and then tries to start one with the sec. Man, he is staying very busy here against OAM. Clash of the shins, open stances, that'll happen. Already putting in some work. It looked like OAM actually came into the cage with his legs like pre-beat up, already redness on the thighs <laughs> and the calf, almost as if he had tried to get used to it backstage. I'm not sure if that's something you get used to. Yeah. Well, you know how it is, Randy, the old wrestlers that before they get on the mat, they'd slap everywhere just to get the blood flowing. Just to get the blood going. Oh, sharp right hand there from Collard. This time he misses with the calf kick to finish. Body kick there from OAM. Takedown attempt. Has Collard down to a hip. And now on the back. Nice job by Collar to get back to his feet. Trying to dig that elbow in to get that underhook. Oh, oh, he up, drives Collard right down to his head. Almost looked like Collard was trying to roll with it and they couldn't get through. Watch your fence. Don't grab the fence. Don't grab the fence. Olivier drives Collard down to a knee. Now on the back again. And immediately goes to that body triangle. This is one of his best positions. Plays in trouble here. Pushes that elbow up. Get the arm off his neck. Body lock still on for the Canadian gangster. Trying to soften up Clay's guard with those punches. See if he can winnow his arm in underneath the neck. 
away. I'm trying to go to that half Nelson to try to break the base down of Collard. The fence is going to prevent him from stretching Collard out and getting him flat. He's running to the fence himself. Yeah, he's right now, he's just really trying to drive the knee down so he can kind of somersault a little bit. Now there's a much better position for Olivier. He's, ma he's making Collard carry all his weight. Softening him up, biding his time, hoping to find a way to expose his neck. Inside of two minutes now left in this first round. Collar trying to work back to his feet. Uh, we talked about this Canadian He's backpack. Get out. He's very close to getting out, and the Canadian backpack came up in the fighters' conversations. Collar said that. Obviously, we saw Obama Mercier in this position a lot with Shane Burgos. Excellent escape there by Collar. He got his head and hips a little bit higher than OAM. Collar cages nice up well. Nice. Gets the leg lock. Right into 50-50. See if he attacks a heel hook here. He's going to use it to try and create a scramble and get out. Well, he can't. He's got that base leg. Olivia is picking up that leg off the mat, so it's going to be tough for him to get up. Now he's in a much better position. There he goes. Scramble. Except he gives up the back. Once again, Olivier Aldamese floats to Cassius Clay Collard's back, drags him back down to the mat, and slaps on the figure four body lock with his legs. Clay Collard trying to find anything to create some offense. It's OAM on his back. We will head to round two in this world championship bout of 155 pounds. Here's a nice two, one combination there. Two, three, I should say, from Collard. Got off to a nice fast start. Olivier then started to get it done with his grappling. Now, again, as far as damage goes, Clay was landing more on the feet. Olivier didn't really land a whole lot with his grounded pound. Really, it was more positionally dominant than it was as far as damage-wise, Clay had a good opportunity for 50-50 to kind of attack that leg, decide to turn his back. Never a good idea against Olivier Aubert-Mercier. All right, second round, you ready? You ready? Red, Let's go, Clay come on. In the gray, start of round two. So I'll play over emphasize that sprawl does not want to find himself underneath OAM again in this round. Oh, nice high kick there by OAM. And we've seen his striking paying dividends all year. Big finishes. Nice right hand by last Collard. year with a check hook. There's the body work that we've come to recognize from Clay Collard. More work on that lead leg. And another entry from OAM. Nice oh, look at this. I think that leg, I think that he may have a dead foot on that lead leg. He kind of stepped wrong there, guys. Yeah, he's having a hard time moving. Not sure if Collard mentions it. OAM. That lead right leg. Having some problems early. Nice job framing out by Collard. Nice deep underhook by Oba Mercier. Collard trying to find a way out of there. 
Orban keeping him corralled. Pollard really wailing away at that body, trying to slow Olivia Obed Messier down. Dan Hardy, Clay Collard is trying to get himself off of this smart cage. What's going to be the key? You know, he's playing the long game. He knows he's got 25 minutes and he's investing well in damage. We've seen him go to that lead leg and we can see the bruising on that now. He's also working well to the body. Look, he has to stay out of danger on the ground, but he has to accept the fact that he might get taken down and he might have to defend submissions. If he can keep scrambling back to his feet and keep investing the body and legs, it might open up the headshot. One thing to watch out for, Olivier Alba Mercier is looking for that left kick to the body and head, something that Clay Collard's got to be aware of. And again, Alba Mercier just finds ways to steal minutes. He's stealing minutes in the first round, he's stealing minutes in this round. And now he's in the mount with Clay Collard pinned up against the smart cage barrier. Oh, did a great job of getting his back to the fence to follow up, just so good at getting that body triangle. So many different instances. Now going right back, power hand. That. Yeah. Again, he's resting his head on the fence. He's not gonna be able to stretch Clay out with the barrier right in front of him. He's gotta change the angle. Trying to stand up now. And that's what that power half does. It just compromises your posture. You don't have to really flatten them out necessarily as long as you prevent them from getting up. He's achieved exactly what he wants to do now. And that is a lot of weight to carry. Mirror image of what we saw toward the end of round number one. OAM with the body lock. Hand fighting, trying to get an arm under the chin of Clay Collard. Collard staying safe here. Clay doing a good job of tucking that chin so far. He's pushing up on the elbow, fighting hands, controlling that wrist. And he's turned to the right side to get this body lock off, but it's still very tight for OAM. Final 10 seconds of this second round. And round two will end just like round number one did. Third frame to come. All right, so we've seen it two rounds in a row. The strategy is clear. You, you can see the bruising on this leg of OAM right down here. Look at this. I mean, you know, there's a lot of damage in this leg, and you can see how it folds in there. Look at his ankle, how it twisted there. And OAM, as he jogs back, there's clear damage to that leg that's probably been compromised by those kicks. Now, that body triangle is going to save him, but it's also going to put some strain on that foot as well. We're going to see how that uh, leg holds up. He's got it raised up on the stool right now with ice on it, but that certainly won't fix it for the next 15 minutes. And that's another effect when you when you destroy that calf. It affects the nerve. You can't really place your foot properly. And then if you're not placing your foot properly, you can affect the knee right after that. I think that's what happened there. Third of a potential five. Let's go, come on. Great collar right back to the center. Trying to bank some body work. Sharp. Trying to find a way to get AOM to the fence. 
and stop his movement and ability to escape his onslaught of punches. Clay does not want to end up on the ground again, especially not this early in the round. Now, Olivier's leg is absolutely compromised, guys. It's amazing he's even able to change levels and shoot, frankly. Yeah. Nice oh, shot. Nice hook over the oh, top. Nice there. deep double. Nice deep double. Pollard's got a cross face and find a way to get him up chest to chest. Oh, yeah, I'm showing a lot of heart here. Pollard doing some great, great work with those overhooks, Randy. Absolutely. Great job by OAM dumping Pollard back over his own leg. Very tight body lock. Just careful the mount. There it is. Not able to escape. And once once he again, got that body triangle, he's going to end up in that same situation if he's not careful. Now he's trying to go to deep half. Let's see if he can he's go, out to go the back out the back door. door. Exactly. Yeah. Use that single. He's got out. it. And he's out. Beautifully nice done. Back to his feet. Play collar, but not out of trouble yet because OAM with this constant pressure and a toss. Jeez. Nice whip over from the double overhook position. That's a rare one. You don't see that one very often. He's so powerful there. He is a judo black belt. Pollard now in on that crackdown. Mercier now really turning it more into a crucifix. Ray Collard's wife sitting front row, watching on. Again with the power half by Oba Mercier. And Clay pop out of there. It looks like he's starting to back out of there. Yeah, he's got a limp. Got a that limp, arm lift that yeah. arm out. Might get it out. He's close. He's close. Oh, he split him. He's got him in a splatle here. Olivia Albert Messier just tying up the left leg and the right arm of Clay Collard. Yep, and, and Collard could dump him. The Peterson there rolling through. Yeah. He's got the inside on that position. Yeah, Pollard may end up on top here if he can get his arm clear. Yeah, if he can turn his hips toward the feet, that's there what he's go. doing here. There he's going to come out. He's got to get his head out now. He's got a limp arm. Look that arm out. Post on that knee and strip that arm out of there. There he goes. Much better position now. Pollard right in front of his own corner, being had the scenario talked through by Rad Martinez, his wrestling coach. And make no mistake about it, this is a pace that favors Clay Collard right now. Trying to damage those feet some more, stomping on those toes. Old school MMA right there. Now Clay with the shoulder and head pressure. Knee up the center from OAM. Clay is just relentless, man. They're both relentless. Yeah. <laughs> Clay does not want to give OAM any rest. He's staying very busy. Has attacked the body, the legs, the feet. Yes, everything he can. Does Collard need to pull himself out of this and get some distance from it. I think if he, if he could clear that underhook, he'd have a chance to rip some shots through there, use his shoulders, use that head position to rip some punches through there to both the body and the head. Now he's free. See if he can punch his way out. Ripping the body there. Oh, man, those shots. Back to the center of the smart cage for the final 10 seconds of this third round. Body kick and a three-piece from Collard. OEM is not moving nearly as well at the no. end of that round. Into the championship rounds we go.
One million dollars on the line. And the mobility potentially sapping itself from the right leg of Olivia Alban Messier. Cut off that tank toy take down. It's run down by Gavard. Yeah, Clean. when you take Foot them down, work. you don't need to go for anything crazy. Just, hold, just keep him on his back and strike him. You don't have to go for any crazy uh, sub. Footwork, time a takedown. Time it. Tu rentres tout la bagarre. Arrête. Footwork, footwork, footwork. Rentre dans ses jambes. Il rentre à under, under, under. He's rushing just straight forward, so you can easily circle out. But I need your hands up. You might try spinning shit too, so just keep your hands up. Kind of a tough fight to score. Obama yeah. Messier's controlled the position a lot, right. but Collard's land the damaging blows, sure. Yep. And, the, and the activity has been from Collard's side as well. And I wouldn't leave it to the judges to get a full understanding on the grappling. Lord have mercy. Randy Couture, Sean O'Connell, Kenny Florian, Dan Hardy here for some telestration. Greta right, Komodo in the crowd, building. Ready? Our bidding ready? expert, Jonathan go, Coach, and Ian Parker as well. Fourth round. Cut him off. More body work from Collard. Look for him to go back to that leg. Boy, OAM has had a lot of trouble moving. Yeah, he sure OAM is. He's trying to bank his own leg kicks. Right hand landed there on the counter from Clay Collard. Nice Superman. Superman. Yeah, when, when, when OAM is kicking, he's having trouble stabilizing on that right lead leg. Collard is able to circle out of the pressure. Nice the spinning stuff. Big oh, double, yeah. big double. Good, Good strong. Strong by Collard. He's got to get his knee off the mat. Stuff that head, get his knee off the mat. And again, right in front of his own corner. His wrestling coach, Rav Martinez, said the exact same thing you did, man, to get that leg back. Collard's starting to take over the fight here. Slowly but surely, stuffing the takedowns, trade positions, controlling the exchanges now. He's yet to go back to any offense on that lead leg. Yep. He's got it hurt, but hasn't kicked it again this entire round. Ian Parker, the duck, watching. How'd you bet this fight? Uh, Sean, we went over three and a half rounds, so we're about 50 seconds away. But for Clay Collard, he's got to separate right now. Randy's right. That lead leg of OAM is completely damaged. The body work's getting there. And for the long game, if Collard could separate, he can finish this fight in the next round. I think Clay Collard could pull it off. He's got to slip that underhook, shorten it, and, and take a half step back and try and let his hands go. OEM's using that wizard, that overhook, to keep him in that range. And he will try and step across for another throw if Collard keeps that underhook buried. There, he's got the head position. He's got to let him go. Oh, right hand backs up OAM. Scooping up the hut from the rear hand of Collard. Oh, that time OAM kicked the leg out from under Collard. And nice slip and rip there by Collard. OAM with two minutes to try and secure this takedown. Position, trying to find a way to get his arms in there, there he goes. to frame out, continuing to rip the body. Yeah, I mean, his priority should be to circle away from the cage yeah, first, some then space. at least go to the body, but he's going to the body first. He wants to put pain on o OAM first, and he should be thinking about position a little bit more here. Uh, he doesn't. A leopard cannot change its spots, Kenny Florian. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, as Randy Couture knows, I mean, Randy had a second uh, guy in there with him at all times. It's called the fence, and that's what's happening here. He's sandwiching him yeah. up against the fence. Yep. It's tough to move there, right? Yeah, that barrier is, is limiting his ability to be effective in this position. 
And now he's got his arm over his back. He should be wizarding that near side or underhooking that far side and pulling OAM up chest to chest and then trying to trade places with him to get off of that fence. Just say that. If you touch the, if you touch the, the fence, I'm going to take the point. Go. Warning about grabbing the fence there. And in a fight this close, you certainly don't want to see a point taken away. I can't help but think what might happen if Collar is able to earn separation and get back to work on that. I mean, he's winning this round. He's winning this round, and he's going to win this round. I mean, there's not much time Let's left. Oh, oh, OEM's oh, hanging, on the, hanging on the leg, but not doing anything with it. Yamasaki separates him. Go, let's go. Collard stalking. OAM on the retreat for the final 10 seconds of this round. One last leg kick to close it out, and we will see a fifth and final round. Clear win for you on that one. I want to know how you guys have this fight scored. He's tired, he's hurt. Yeah, tough on. one to score. Yeah, he can't shoot the arm. Yeah. And I think you're right. Yeah. 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 You need to stop it. You need to stop it. Definitely. Depend on who wins it's this last and fifth and final round. Yeah, and it's going to be a huge gut check for both men, but especially for OAM, who really is fighting with one leg at this at this standpoint. Punches and punches. Go. Everything you got. This is it, Clay. Five more minutes. Five more minutes. Everything Jason Merlick has been judges a instrumental in getting you. Clay Collard to this He's point in 2023. Make him take Just it. said, I want your back right. off the cage. Do not put your back on the cage. A fifth and potential deciding final round. Dan, you're the only one who didn't weigh in. How's this being scored right now? I, I agree. I think this may well be two, uh, you know, two apiece. There you go. Final but this round. is you ready? round. Ready? This, the go. fifth go. round is where he thrives, especially given oh. the amount of damage. Oh. oh! That stunned OAM. No question stunned about it. Right hand, and immediately OAM gets to wrestling and is able to secure the takedown. Ten seconds wow. in, he's on the back. Wow. Fifteen seconds into the round. If this is the deciding round, this is not where Clay Collard wants to be for four and a half minutes. Winner of this takes home a million dollar check. OAM and a shiny is, gold belt. OAM's very high, but with that body triangle, it's gonna be hard to shake him off there. He's got the power half yep. and the body triangle. Clay's gonna do his best. Shake the monkey out of the tree. Oh, now he's going into that. Stretch. Yep, might be going for that Suliev stretch. He's locked it up kind of like a cradle at this at this standpoint. Not a whole lot of pain on the back of the hamstring of Collard at this standpoint, but if he straightens it out, it could be a problem. Collard teeing off on the hanging head of OAM from one of the strangest positions. And you wonder what was told to OAM in the corner. If he feels like he's ahead on the scorecards, he might try and just coast and try and cling his way to a victory here. We saw him with some success against Shane Burgos this way. You neutralize the exciting fighter, and you get yourself a million-dollar victory. But we don't know how the judges scored those first rounds. back to the power half. And he's got to stay busy with that ground and pound. Try to get his right shoulder down to the mat. 
Doesn't want to turn away. If he can flatten his own shoulders to the mat, create that space, he can peel OAM off, but easier said than done with this body lock on. Two minutes left to work. Clay's got to get his head to the mat here. Try to turn and face. He's trying to dip out just a little bit. There you go. Continues to turn away, though. That just allows Olivier to follow him. OEM is just a problem from this position. Brawler trying to climb the fence here. OEM won't allow it. It's like a barnacle. Yeah, that's better position there for Clay. He's trying to get his head and hips a little bit higher. Putting a lot of pressure on that foot of OAM as yep. well by pushing off the fence. You know, it's starting to unwind there. Close, very, very close. Toes hanging on. Uh-oh, that's starting to go underneath the chin. Switching to the other side and the other foot. Back to that power half. In, heavy on the back with Cassius Clay collared. And this is how you take away the exciting fighting style of someone like Clay Collard. You cling, you grind, you turn it into a slog. Olivia Albert Messier steals round five and perhaps the fight for a lightweight championship. We go to the judges' scorecards. Main event to cap it all off in the richest night in mixed martial arts. Huge news this week. As the PFL purchased Bellator and set up a future card of Bellator champions versus PFL champions. Cajunomic Stats Bundle brought to you by Geico. You can see the five takedowns for OAM. 129 strikes landed for Clay Collard. We'll see how the judges scored this one when we return. Yeah, 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 yeah. PFL. A million ways, I only need one. A million moments, I only need one. No fear on my body, no, I don't feel none. No fear on my body, no, I don't feel none. My swagger is different, don't stop till I'm done. Just look at my eyes, you'll see I'm the one. A million reasons, I only need one. A million reasons, I only need one. one. Yeah, yeah, I'ma put in the work every day. Work every day. Welcome back. Final fight of the night, the main event in the books. AI score gives four rounds to Olivia Alba Messier and one to Clay Collard. The experts split on this one. Randy says Clay Collard 
with the more impactful strikes should get the win. Kenny giving the nod to OAM. The official judges have final say as Ian Parker's bet did cash over three and a half. This one goes to a decision. The official scorecards. We go to Andy Shepard. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges score this bout 49 of 46 for your winner by unanimous decision and 2023 PFL lightweight world champion Olivier Mercier. OAM back-to-back -back championships and now 10 and 0 inside of the smart cage. Unbelievable. And the question becomes, does he ride off into the sunset? Like all the cool kids do, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> or because there's now another avenue for him for big money fight, for high level fight, potentially a Bellator champion awaiting him at 155 pounds. Does he stick around? He talked very openly about what a grind it is to go through these seasons and to do it as many times as he did, to deal with injuries like he did, and finally, Last year, he cashes in and does it again this season. Is it enough for OAM? Maybe we'll find out when he speaks with Dan Hardy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with your 2023 PFL lightweight champion. That was a hell of a scrap, my friend. You've got some marks on your face. It looks like you've got a sore knee, but the gold belt and the million dollars will make it feel a little bit better, right? Yeah, I do hope so. I do hope so. But before... Back to back, Tabarna! <laughs> Tell me about what, what that process was like for you. I mean, I know it was exhausting the first time. To come back and do it a second time, I mean, how did you muster the motivation? Yeah, I mean, the first time was, was hell. But I knew what it was going to be this year, and I, I worked differently, you know? I was uh, not hurt all freaking season. I was training every day. I mean, some stuff happened in my life during that, uh, that season, good stuff. And uh, it made me think that maybe the last time you, you see me, you know? And uh, I'm gonna, je vais parler un petit peu en français. Ils peuvent le garder leur anglais, eux autres. Mais, <laughs> mais merci à tout le monde d'être venu. Merci à tout le monde qui écoute le combat. <laughs> Qui fait le combat à la maison. Euh, je suis fatigué. Je suis vraiment fatigué. Je pense que ça va être une dernière fois que vous allez me voir. Fait que c'est difficile pour moi de vous dire ça, mais je pense que c'est fini. Je pense que j'ai besoin d'un gros repos, du moins pour les prochaines années. J'aimerais ça remercier mes coachs, mes partenaires d'entraînement, les personnes que j'aime, ma blonde, ma fille, mes parents. Je m'ennuie. Je de vous voir. Merci à tout le monde d'avoir été là. Thank you, PFL, for believing in me. You were the only one who believed in me. And look where I am right now. I start in, at the bottom in PFL, and I did three main events this year. And that's all because of, uh, of them. And congrats on signing all those fighters from Bellator. I think PFL is the future. Thank you so much. We have to know. We have to know. You said maybe. You said maybe. I don't think we're going to see you in the season next year. This is an exhausting process, as we know. But what is next for you? What does 2024 look like for the double champ? Uh, sand in between my toe, I would say. <laughs> I'm going to take a break. and I'm gonna, I want to pass time with my family, you know. <laughs> Two years ago, I told my, my little girl that it was the last summer I was going to work. Uh, I worked this, this year and I almost didn't see, see her the, this summer, so I think I need to pass some time with my family. You know? I think you've earned that time, my friend. I think you've earned that time. Whatever the future holds for Olivier Bar Mercier, we're all fans in this building. Everybody watching around the world at home have been inspired by your journey. Congratulations, my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2023 lightweight champion of the world, Olivier Omar Mercier. OAM.
goes back to back Pavel Mack, as he says. <laughs> And if that's it in the PFL Smart Cage, he did it flawlessly. 10 and 0 as all the champions from tonight will line up with their belts. Top three strikes beans, the fastest strikes tonight brought to you by Redcon 1. Impa Kasunganai on his way to a light heavyweight championship, 24 miles an hour. Larissa Pacheco, first two division champion, 24 miles an hour. And Hayna Fajeda dispatched Dennis Goldsov, maybe with that 23 mile an hour fastball. Your Bud Light finish of the night came in the second round of a heavyweight championship. The right hand of Hainan Fajeda. The beginning of the end for Dennis Goldsov, who comes up just shy yet again. And the Selly, Bud Light Selly celebration of the night. How about this? Magomed Magomed Karimov, five years removed from his first PFL title, comes back and takes home a second belt with a submission victory over Sada Busi. Thanks to our incredible crew. Thanks to all these champions. Pete Murray, Don Davis, the incredible leadership of the Professional Fighters League have given us another fantastic season. And the future is so incredibly bright with the acquisition of Bellator, the combination of these two rosters. And coming in 2024, a champions versus champions card. Lives were changed tonight. Blon Brunson with his Successful PFL debut. Kayla Harrison back to her winning ways. Impaka Sunganai is a millionaire after sleeping in his car not so long ago. Thank you to everyone who's been part of this absolutely marvelous season of Professional Fighters League action. The true sports format works in mixed martial arts. We hit the reset button after this. We'll see you again next year, and we'll see you December 8th for PFL Europe.